Well, a very good morning and welcome to Six Ways Stadium, Worcester. It's a little bit chilly here today and uh, we've got an absolutely exciting day of rugby. Four games in the RFU Schools Cup semi-finals. We're in the Vars today. Uh, two in the under 15s and two in the under 18s. Tomorrow we've got three games in the cup semi finals, so seven across the two days. It's going to be an absolute cracking weekend of schoolboy rugby. Uh, Charlie Beckett is on commentary with me today. Charlie, you know this competition well from your days. Uh, what do you think it's going to be going through some of the players' uh, emotions and heads before they come out onto the pitch today? Morning Scott, morning everyone. Um, I think there'll be a huge mixture of excitement and massive nerves. Um, for these lads, what, they're 14, 15 years old, I imagine it's probably the biggest day in their rugby career so far. Playing at a great stadium like this and a great pitch like this, it's probably, uh, probably the first time they've done it. So a massive mix of excitement and nerves, I expect. And Six Ways is a, a great stadium, really, to have this sort of... Uh competition it's quite intimate and quite close and we're up on our perch here right above the pitch and it is really a great venue isn't it to host this uh, schools cup semi-finals weekend yeah i think it's perfect isn't it i think it's a it's a huge achievement for these teams to uh, to have reached this stage of the competition i think the reward of playing in an elite premiership stadium like this is exactly what they deserve it uh, it gives the credibility and the standards of the competition that it, it it deserves and a day these lads will definitely remember for the rest of their lives i'm sure uh, regardless of the result well, our first game coming up in semi-final, one of the under-15s, Vars, Sandbach taking on Hitchin Boys School. And, uh, Charlie, you remember playing Sandbach yourself when you were at school. What sort of a challenge did they bring to the game? Yeah, grew up playing at Merchant Tears and Crosby. We had many, many a battle uh, against Sandbach in that Lancashire-Cheshire rivalry. Uh, Sandbach, in my day, they're always they're a very proud school, normally fairly physical, big pack. So it'll be interesting to see. And it, it's, it's, I won't lie to you, Scott, it's been a while since I was at school, mate. That, that, that's a good 10, 10, 12, 15 years ago now. So it'll be interesting to see if they're still playing in the same ilk as I remember from, uh, from my school days. Well, plenty of rugby to come. It's obviously... Uh a hectic time of year with an eyes head towards uh, the end of the season and business end of the season and uh, we're in March now the calendar looking towards spring and uh, it's still quite wintry in the air today isn't it I hope to see a, a little bit of sunshine later on maybe temperatures up to nine degrees here in Worcester uh, it's a bit blustery as well but not too bad at the moment we'll see how that progresses throughout the day so great 4G surface here at six ways kickoff between Sandbach School under 15s and Hitchin Boys School under 15s in this first VAR semi-finals coming up in just a minute for you. Well, the teams for both of these two, Sandbach uh, perhaps uh, a couple of changes as is the case, they uh, certainly issue out the teams early in the week. You'll see uh, Jack Collett scrum half wearing number nine uh, three substitutes on the bench for them as well their captain James Babikas on the outside centre channel will certainly be looking to use Boyce and Cunningham on the wings in a bit of space Hitchin then well, their captain, Reese Cairns, at number eight for them. Uh, Harry Visick at scrum half with fly half Elliot Orton, the vice captain who will wear 22 playing at number 10. Uh, Elijah Ray French will wear 24 and play on the left wing. And Matthias Davies will wear 11 and play on the right wing as well. So keep an eye out for Hitchin in this game. Well, the subs, uh, only three from each team, uh, different numbers, a uh, bit of a change as well in terms of the replacements. You'll see for Sandbach, they've got uh, some travelling reserves there, number 19 to 22. Adam Riley and Lincoln Carruthers are the forwards replacements for them, and Harry Oakes wearing number 25 will be the backs replacement. It's George Turner, Jamie Timms and Jack Steady at the finishers for Hitchin today. Well, the atmosphere slowly building. It is a massive day for both teams. A chance to play at Twickenham in the final on offer. And it all comes down to the next 60 minutes of action, 30 minutes each way. 
It's great to see quite early on a Saturday morning as well, Charlie. Plenty of friends and family and travelling school colleagues in the stands as well. Yeah, I had a walk down there earlier and um, down the gangway and I don't think I've ever seen a group of lads happier to be in school uniform on a Saturday than the Sandbatch lads in the crowd watching all their matching uh, uniform and ties. So it's great to see that they've uh, brought, the, brought the lads down to support their, for their schoolmates and uh, they'll be hoping to cheer them on to a win, I'm sure. Well, here they come. Add on to the pitch. Last minute hurdles and plenty of cheers. It's a big day for the parents, isn't it? A lot of running about and driving and travelling to games and support. It often goes uh, unthanked and unsupported, but uh, the parents and teachers in the crowd here today will certainly be enjoying this moment as much as the players. Yeah, I don't think I realised I'm, I'm not a parent, but until my uh, my siblings started playing and you watch them, it's almost more nerve-wracking watching than it is playing. So these parents, these teachers, they've sacrificed a lot for today. Uh, so I think they'll obviously mainly be hoping their boys enjoy themselves, but obviously come out on the, uh, the winning side. Well, in the green and red, Sambach Hitchin playing in the uh, navy blue with uh, gold hoops lying. About to get underway here at six ways. Sambach with the kickoff. Well, Sambach playing from right to left. Harry Beach with the ball in hand for the kickoff. Big moment for him. Six ways in full voice early on this Saturday March morning. And well taken straight from the off by Hitchin. Visick with the box straight down the throat of Ben Long who has a bit of space out wide and unselfishly gives it to Beach and Beach with the grubber through. Hitchin just wrapping this one up. Big nudge straight down the throat of Cunningham who spills and it's back with Ben Long bit of aerial ping pong and it's been spilled by Elliot, uh, Elijah Ray French and unfortunately for Hitchin, Sambach will get the ball inside the, 20, uh, inside the 40. Interesting to see both sides going to a fairly strong kicking game straight away. You might think with these lads always being 14, 15, they'd be pretty keen to run the ball but both being fairly disciplined and looking to play territory. Um, be interesting to see if Sambach can launch some sort of first meaningful attack from this scrum. Well, let's see what they've got in the armoury. The first scrum, always a, a good contest. and You never quite know, do you, at this age, what the opposition are bringing. Everybody developed at such a rate at this age, even from September to now. and Huge levels of growth in these young players as well. And that is a huge, huge scrum from Sambach. Beach gives it away to Verbicas. Now Lee having a run and just trying to weave his way through. Penalty, Hitchin. It's an absolutely textbook turnover there. He's uh, he's trapped the ball brilliantly, attacked the ball, and it's a great holding on penalty. One uh, one for Hitchin boys there. Brilliant turnover. Well, Orton nudging that one into the corner, just getting into the Sandbach. 22 for the first time. You might be about to see me get very excited about a rolling mall for the first time today, Scott. One thing we'll learn over the four games today, I'm sure, is I love a rolling mall. Being a second row forward, it's one of my favourite things. It's uh, it's quite beautiful, isn't it, when it's done nicely? You don't get to see it that often. And uh, difficult skill as well, isn't it? Quite underappreciated, and that's well taken. Khan's the captain. Brilliant mall defence from Sambach. 
spilled onto the deck. Sambach just snaffling it, and here they go, striding forward. Rie, I think that is with picking up the loose ball. Just bundling their way through the shoulders, and now Beach off his left boot again. It's going to fall to Elijah Ray French, and uh, here they go. Back with Sam Batch, and it's been lost. Well, despite that early kicking battle, the players seem to have just settled in the last couple of minutes. It's been a um, bit of a very mature start from both teams, I think. They uh, need a team trying to overplay, trying to attack when they get the chance. Um, I've been very uh, impressed with the physicality and defence both sides. I don't think we've seen a missed tackle yet with uh, some big strike runs from both sides. The tackling has been low, it's been hard, it's been, uh, it's been very effective and that, that's what we want to see. Well, good field position right on the five metre line on halfway. Hitchin and uh, their scrum half Harry Visick with the ball, managed to get it away, skimming along the deck and finally picked up by Halmer. Intercept though, and here they go, and it might be for Vikas, the captain, to open the scoring here at six ways. What a start by Sambach. And that is an opportunist try that gets them on the scoreboard first in this game. Yeah, I think it comes from great pressure from Jack Collett uh, onto... Um, Reese Cairns, uh, sorry, not Reese Cairns, onto Harry Visick at nine, meant the pass was spilled, and then great line speed from for Visick takes the intercept and uh, straight under the posts. He was looking, wasn't he? Wasn't sure who was coming after him. But a great job to get that over the line, and it's now over to Harry Beach to extend their lead. It's nice to see Beach conform into the stereotype of. Uh, the 10 wearing bright boots and his bright pink boots here. Yeah, they do stand out. It's a bit of a contrast between that green and red kick though, isn't it? It's uh, not the sort of thing you might be seen out on a Saturday night with, but uh, it works on the rugby field. You're talking to a man who wears strictly only black boots as well, so it's not really in my remit, but he slotted that one straight through, hasn't he? It was a great strike. No issues at all there from Harry Beach, and it's a captain's score, that. Just what you want. Get the scoreboard ticking over early on. Well, Orton with his first restart and well collected in the end by Norton Taylor. Whistle has gone and it's been knocked on by Sambach. Happens so often, doesn't it? You see a side at all levels of rugby, including senior rugby, men's and women's, score a try, and then we talk about a lot uh, when we, when I play, when we play amateur, try and compound that with a positive straight off it. But you see a lot, an error straight from the kickoff, and now a great response from Hitch and a great kickoff, and now they've got a great attacking position to launch from the scrum. Visick. That's a great set at the scrum. Does well to get that away to Orton through the middle now, Halmer charging forward, been spilled and it's back with Sambach and I think that is Cunningham that's come away with the ball it's through the middle now, it's Nolan penalty to Hitchin taken quickly and Visick looking to move the ball wide, they have a bit of space on the far touchline into the hands of Ray French just into the 22 now Spill ball off Norton Taylor. It's been lost forward again, another unforced error, and it's back with Sambach this time. I think Elliot Orton's feeling the effects of a monster hit there. I didn't see who it was from Sambach, but a huge hit in defence. Um, but another great turnover on the floor for Hitchin. That's two in the first, what, ten minutes or so. Um, two holding on penalties for Great Jackal, so we'll see if they, uh, they target that throughout the game. Well, we've already seen Sambach with an opportunistic try from halfway, and they're pinned deep into their 22 here with the scrum. 
opt to go blind and it's with Rie. Bundling forward penalty to Hitchin though. Not releasing Sam Bromley and Visick trying to go on his own that scrum half muscling his way forward. Popping around the fringes here, they can sense the space, can't they? And Orton out to Halmer. Intercept once again and the boot into space and it's going to be Sambach charging after this one. Orton's done well to collect it under a lot of pressure and that is a great chase from Connolly. Bees around a honeypot at the moment. Now can they get into the wide channels, through the hands, into Matthias Davis's great tackle coming in from Jack Collett. Sabri still going now for Hitchin. Orton flying off the line there was uh, Rie. That line's from Rie there, saving a possible try, I think, stopping the pass. Still keeping it live, Hitchin doing well to mobilise the ball and good ruck speed at the moment. Out into the wide channels finally with Ray French skipping forward. This is dynamic stuff from Hitchin, isn't it? Sabri again. Good tackle. Sandbach being a bit of a menace. They're broken through with Cairns and the captain. Oh, he thought he might be under the posts, but not this time. No, I think he's just as a Sambach counter up there. I think he's just coming the side and use his hands in the rock. It's unfortunate. I think if he goes a second or two earlier, I think that's legal. But the counter rook from Sambach meant the rook moved. He's in the size, and you unfortunately can't do that. There was some ag aggressive counter rocking from Sambach, wasn't that? Really piled the bodies in. Yeah, bo both teams seem to be attacking um, attacking the defensive breakdown pretty hard, whether that's jackling or counter-rucking, so you've got to be wary and on your metal when, when rucking over, because there's competition there in both ways. Byron's Batoni at hook of a sandbatch today, first line-out ball, and through the hands of the backs now, charging up the middle, Lee that time. Lovely hands from Starkey, the prop forward. A bit flat at the moment from Sandbach. They're managing to get it wide and they have the numbers over that ball from Simpson Leach just being spilled. They still might be on here. Just uh, couldn't get the ball wide quick enough, could they? Penalty advantage though. And it seems, Charlie, that penalty advantage just seems to be getting longer and longer I was having this conversation the other day Scott um, I don't think I've seen one ended he's missed touch here though so I'll let you let you take over because it's just been wild this so far Matthias Davis keeping it infield at the moment and great breakdown support by Norton Taylor Orton good nudge but it's going to go straight down the throat of Ben Long and he has acres of space decides to straighten this one up though double chop tackle Norton Taylor flying around the park at the moment for Hitchin, getting the tackles in. Beach up the middle for Sambach, change of direction this time. Collected. That's unfortunate, that's very unlucky. It's bounced off him as he's charged it down, his, his uh, teammates picked it up in front, that is offside, but it's a harsh one. That I think if, if I'd been ref, I would have been tempted if that was an accidental offside. It's just reaction to pick the ball up there, that's unfortunate. Babikas, the try scorer, the captain, using his right boot to send that one into touch this time. It's interesting to see at the line-out, obviously at this age, um, they are allowed to lift in the line-out. We saw Hitchin earlier stay on the floor, um, but it, Sandbach, their first line-out, used a, used a lift, as you see in senior rugby, so it'll be interesting to see if they do here again. But Tony... Well, it wasn't straight, didn't look it, the referees let it go. Still charging forward, Rie. 
been spilled and it looked as if Hitchin might snaffle that one up and it has gone forward this time. Hitchin get the ball back. That was a great tackle from uh, Leo Rainbow there. Um, George Rie, he's a big ball carrier for Sandbach. They've used him a few times off shortened line outs, but uh, he managed to dominate him and strip the ball there. Great tackle. Well, it was nice stuff, wasn't it? Been a great contest so far in these opening 13 minutes, almost at the close of the first quarter. Sandbach leading from that uh, early opportunist try and very well scored try from James for Vickas, their captain. Well, first collapsed uh, scrum. They're still charging Rainbow down the five metre channel, still going forward. It's taking three or four to stop him, and he's done really well to make 30 or 40 metres there. Soft hands to Zach Scott. Orton out the back, Halmer. Halmer with the outside skim into the hands of Davies and Davies has some space down the right wing and Matthias Davies is going to score for Hitchin. And that is superbly worked by the Hitchin boys. It's a brilliant, brilliant finish but it's all made by the brilliant outside step from Halmer. It's, uh, we'll see the replay in a set, there seems to be numbers on. He kicks, as you said, an outside step, makes the two on two or two on one, and then ec excellent pass to put, a, put his winger away to score. He just drifted, didn't he? Look at that, wonderful work. Matthias Davis still had a lot of ground to cover to get into the corner, and he did really well to finish that off. I fall asleep at night and dream of being able to do an outside step like that. I've never done anything like that. I can only run straight. So that's a, it's a brilliant bit of skill. It's, it's reminiscent of Brian O'Driscoll in the outside channel. Just how he'd make a two-on-two -two into a two-on-one with such ease. A brilliant, brilliant bit of skill. And then he's got him five and maybe seven points and definitely got him back in this game. You're right. It was textbook O'Driscoll, wasn't it? Well, Elliot Orton, the vice-captain at fly half wearing number 22, for Hitchin Boys School, a chance to level the score at six ways. And that is a wonderful nudge off the tee. Seven all here in the RFU Vars semi final. That's not an easy kick for anyone, let alone a 14, 15 year old boy. So that's huge. Come, come full time, that could have a massive, massive effect on this game, these, those two points. Brilliant dummy runners in front there, hold the defence and gives Hammer the chance to make the outside break. Hammer is a, a number 12 and this is perhaps an issue England have had recently but he drew two or three men there just to give Davis the space and hitch him back with it. Rhys Carnes the captain with the ball in hand. Orton, bit of a banana kick, bouncing over the head of Alex Boyce and Boyce kicks it back. Good kick chase as well from the left wing but it is still with Hitchin and Visick, Visick charging down the corner, oh that looked a touch high. They still have it, no scrum half so it's going to be, be the forwards that deal with this. And uh, they're getting the penalty, time is off. And unfortunately for Sambach, they are down to 14. A yellow card for that high tackle. Yeah, it, it wasn't a particularly malicious or dangerous high tackle, but I think it was a bit of a desperate one as he's trying to save the try. Uh, he just gets him around the collar and um, I think more the location of the pitch rather than the, the uh, ferocity of the high tackle is why that's been a yellow card. It was a great break from Harry Visick. Come on, first mole try of the day here, Scott. We're going to have our first mole try. I can feel it. Well, just uh, a bit of a chat between the hitching forwards, all packed in together. Straight off the top. Look at that round. Zach Scott comes. Zach Scott charging. Zach Scott scores. The only thing I love more than the mole try is a mole trick play try. They've faked the mole, they've gone for the back peel, all the forwards for Sandbach commit to the mole, the space is there, and it's a brilliant finish from Zach Scott, the hooker. 
Well, that was NFL set play textbook stuff, wasn't it? Look at that wrap around. One, two, three. Sambach couldn't stop him. Zach Scott isn't stopped. And Hitchin take the lead for the first time in this game. To be fair to Sam Bromley for Sambach, he actually reads it brilliantly. He's there for the tackle. It's just the absolute pace and ferocity that Zach Scott's carrying with. There's not many, many uh, people of this age who think he would have been able to make the tackle there. He was determined to get over that line. And from five metres out, no one's stopping him. Orton for a second conversion, it just drifts to the left of the uprights and it is Hitchin that lead 12 points to 7 in this first Vars semi-final. It's amazing what one try can do isn't it to change a game. Not two or three minutes ago Hitchin were behind and Sam Batcher on the attack and one turnover, one break, a quick try and then one, one makes two and suddenly they're in the lead and look to be in the ascendancy. That shot just showed what pace Zach Scott came round the corner at. You just cannot stop it when it's coming round at you that quick. Interesting to see how Sambach obviously managed their time down to 14 men as well. It's not just now it'll affect them. Come the last five, ten minutes of the game, that this extra effort it takes to play with one man down is going to affect their, uh, their fitness and fatigue at the end. It was a, a long kick from the restart and the chase wasn't the best from Sam Batch. and look at the field position that Hitchin are in now they've closed up the field one of those intangible things in sports Scott is, is momentum and it's all with Hitchin right now it's, uh, I've been on the pitch and when you, when you lose momentum when you feel it against you there's, there's not much you can do really so Sam Batch, they're lucky they've got the ball back now because it looks a dangerous attack there from Hitchin they've just got to try and go back to their basics keep the ball a little bit try and get some field position and try and wrestle some momentum back from Hitchin because if they're not careful this could, this could be another one or two tries while they're down to 14 and then it's a long way to come back They looked so full of energy in the opening minutes, didn't they, Sam Batch? And going to have to come up with a bit of magic ahead of half-time here. Still ten minutes to play. The try-scoring captain, Vivekas, hacking forward. Wow, what a swirling run from uh, Harwood. And Harwood still going. Into the 20 new now, Hitchin. They've got numbers over and they've got some space down the 15-metre channel. Zach Scott, the try store is still going. It's Ray French. Cutting back inside. Now with Norton Taylor, who's got through a lot of work in this game. Through the hands. Rainbow arcing forward into the five now. Can they get it out wide? Orton back with Davis. The pass just uh, not quite accurate enough. Tried to cut out too many players, I think, in a short amount of time. Still going, and I think Visic now looking to release the backs. It's flat. Can they get some pace onto it here? Zach Scott, the hooker, sitting out in the wide channels, and it's gone forward. And Sambach finally can breathe a sigh of relief. I think the ref might have seen a knock-on from Sambach in the tackle, actually, which is which is tough. You make you make the turnover, but it's actually still hitching ball. We're making a triple sub here, Scott, which you don't see often. A triple sub for Hitchin. Well, I think that is their whole bench as well. <laughs> so uh, one of the players coming off, I think Louis Norton Taylor, who's had a great game at four for Hitchin. So George Turner, Jamie Timms and Jack Steady onto the field of play. And the cavalry come marching in. We've got Leo, this is what I love about scoreboard rugby, Leo Rainbow has been doing brilliantly at 13. He's now swapped to number eight. These are the sort of things you don't get this too often in senior rugby, but with only 18 to squad, these boys are going to be able to play more than one position. And they opt to go blind and Rainbow with the big Ben. Rainbow with the step as well. Visic gets the ball back. The scrum half trying to find some space in the five metre channel. Again Rainbow, an animal since he's gone to eight. Keeping infield momentarily but finally bundled out by Sambach. 
huge part of this game here, I feel. I think if Sandbach can get out of this, this bit of pressure without conceding a try, that'd be a massive win for them. And on the flip side, Hitchin need to capitalise on this pressure, this field position, and while they're, while they're a man up. Maybe, maybe that's why there was a triple sub, a little bit of energy, uh, a little bit of impotence onto the pitch. And now, uh, Leo Rainbow with the shortened line out, shuffling back to 13. Sambach done well to take that under pressure on their own line, and that's a great set and a great drive. Just what you want to see is a, a number 10. You don't want to be pinned back to the edge of the pitch. Well, they're just having a nice hug in the pitch now. I'm not sure what you technically call that, but it is hitching to get the ball. That's a huge throw of hitching there. So, ball not playable from the mall. Side who take it in, lose the ball. It'll be a scrum now to Hitchin. Um, it's a, you, you saw the pros and cons of Mullen to exit there. They made they made a good 10, 15 metres to, to exit from, but you've got to look after the ball. As we see, Leo Butler coming back on the pitch, end of his simbin. Obviously, not a full 10 minutes uh, at this age. So, hopefully, he can, he'll be he'll be desperate to make amends for uh, for that error earlier. Visick, fast ball out to Halmer. Halmer with the shuffle step again. Halmer straightening up and he's still going. Three men to try and bring him down. Harwood in there. Sambach trying to hold him up on the line. All about the muscle and a big arm wrestle. And Sambach have been well rewarded. And that is just what they needed. Yeah, it's huge. Um, great defence from Sambach, but the speed of that pass from Visek was something to behold. The, that was very impressive. Off his left hand as well. That made the, uh, made the attack there. It put a hitch on the front foot straight away, and Sambach were, uh, were having to make their tackles before they'd even got off the line, all because of the speed of pass there from the scrum half. It was another strong run from Curtis Halmer, wasn't it? Had a good game so far, a lot of direct running, good footwork as well. Yeah, I've been very impressed with both hitching centres so far. Chance now for Sambach to give a go. Ooh. There was a bit of trick play there. Collett running the opposite direction. It's a brave side to play a trick play on their own five metre line. You've got, you've got to applaud it. You've got to applaud the bravery. Big box, a bit of a vertical spiral as well, and it's taken off. High foot in the air there. Cairns was brave to rise for Hitchin. Hammer collects it finally. Lost forward though. We're going to come back for the scrum to Sambach, just on the edge of their 22. An, an interesting area to try and box kick there in the middle of the pitch. You'll see normally sides try and box kick from around the 15 metre line on each side because you've only got one, one major side to worry about the chase. You put two or three in the channel and the rest can chase on the open side. Uh, maybe a little bit of panic from Sambach, a bit desperate to get out of their 22. So kicking from not the, uh, not the optimal area there, but uh, they've got away with it. They've got the ball to the scrum now and they'll look to exit again, I imagine. Now they look to go wide, call it into the five metre channel. Here comes the gas from Cunningham. Well tackled into touch. Well wrapped by Tristram Harwood. That's a great tackle from Harwood because I think Cunningham looks like he's got some pace on the outside. It's the first time we've seen him really, and I think if the Bremis missed tackle there, it might have been the last we saw of him before he was over the try line, Cunningham. So a brilliant, brilliant tackle. Edging towards half time here. Orton to Halmer, and Halmer's got some time on the ball, and it's Harwood again. He's got good footwork. Davies, the try scorer, slows things down and straightens back up. Norton Taylor back on the field for Hitchin. It's very lateral at the moment. Looking to get it out into the 15 metre channel, carving up Steady. Steady's going to go through. Steady in the leggings, under the post for Hitchin. And that is a well read play by Hitchin. Well, there was nothing slow and steady about that, was there, from, from the young man? 
He, it was all, as you said, all a bit lateral. He hit a line, went hard and square, ran a nice, hard, fast line, and uh, the Sandbach's defence that was drifting with the hitch and attack couldn't do anything about it. And when you've drifted as an attacking line for so long and the defence is drifting as well, he just cut back across ever so slightly and just found a gaping hole in that Sandbach's defence. Yeah, it's a great step off his left foot and then he breaks two or three tackles. He's, he's a big rangy runner and once he gets going there's no stopping him. I, um, you could feel that coming though, couldn't you, Rhys? Even though Sambach got the ball back and their chances to exit, they didn't take them and, and to be honest you could feel that coming for a while there. Yeah, well deserved try and another conversion for Elliot Orton. I've been impressed with Orton. He, um, to be fair to him, he's taken a few whacks from some of the Sandbach forwards, especially uh, a trick from my playbook that hit the 10, whether he's got the ball or if he's just passed it, but uh, every time he's got back up and he moves the ball well for this dangerous, uh, dangerous hitching back line. Well, it's a big compliment as a fly half, isn't it? If you're getting smashed uh, by the back row of the second rows, you're doing something right. Yeah, but you're quite slow if I can get hold of you though. I think the tens I get hold of a little bit, they're more concerned the fact that I've managed to get to them with, uh, with my lack of pace rather than what I'll do to them if I do get them. What have Sandbach got to do then to get back and try and level the scores? Because they are 19 points to seven down. We're not even in at half time yet. So there's plenty of, of game left in this one. Yeah, as you say, there's plenty of game left. I think they've got to just calm down. Like we've seen here, they've just chased that a bit, a counter rook from the side. It's a penalty that's going to give Hitchin a more field position and more ball. I think they just need to calm down a little, go back to their basics, go back what served them well in the first 10 minutes and got them in the lead. Just look after the ball, play some phases and be a bit more direct. I think these young men are just panicking a little bit now that they're 12 points down. There's, there's lots of rugby play, played in this game yet. We've seen how quickly it can change. So if I was the Hitchin, uh, sorry, if I was a Sandbach coach, Sandbach captain, I'd say calm down, let, let's get back to basics. Let's do what we've done well, what puts in the lead. Um, there's plenty of time, this is not, this is not a uh, game that we need to chase yet. George Turner at hooker for Hitchin now, number 20, the pass from Orton just wayward, but they've done well to get into the hands of Harwood and he's got some wheels. Good tackle coming in from Cunningham. Rainbow with the Bosch on Starkey. I think Sandbach have got to work on being a bit wider in defence. Hitchin are um, aiming to go round them a lot here. They're just getting sucked in, aren't they? And they're not just 15 or 5 metres, there's 25 metres of space out wide. I, I, I've been there as a forward as well. You get so worried about because Hitchin have got these big strike runners, you don't want them to go through you, that you get tighter and tighter. But then if they move the ball, there's all the space for them to go around. As we've seen with tries in the wider channels already, they've got a dangerous back three who've got plenty of pace. So I think uh, the defensive line just needs to talk to each other a bit more and mind each other of spacings. Um, the, the, the general rule is if you can touch the person next to you, you're too close. So get your spacings, get a little bit wider in defence. Good set from Sandbach to change the direction. To Boyce and Boyce cutting back inside using the footwork and it's gone forward and it's back with Hitchin. Halmer was uh, looking the wrong way for the pass from Cairns. Uh, that's another breakdown turnover takes into half time. I've been massively impressed with Hitchin and how they've, uh, how they've jackaled at defensive breakdowns. The first uh, five or six minutes, Hitchin were definitely not on top but they've really grown in this first half, haven't they? And they go into the interval 19 points to seven in front after three very good tries. Well, still 30 minutes left to play, a short interlude here, but a great first half and a great opening to uh, VAR's semi-finals day here at Six Way Stadium. Yeah, massively impressive uh, 30 minutes rugby so far. I think that the standard and quality of the rugby has, uh, has been hugely impressive from both sides. Uh, as I said, lots of very ferocious and physical tackles coming in. Well, this is the uh, first try that got the scoreboard ticking over. It was Sambach that did so, and their captain, James Vabikas, with the intercept and striking his way through the middle under the post. And that meant a lot, and it was a, a fiery opening to the game. See that because their spaces are wider in defence there, they could go and put that pressure on, they could put that line to they've got the intercept. As they've got tighter later in the half, they can't do that, and it's um, letting Hitchin get on the front foot. 
snatched that out of the air, didn't he? Good fend as well on Orton and for Bickass. You're not going to stop him with that much field in front of him. Uh, it's a brilliant finish. I think we probably didn't realise live at the time. It's a great take. And then the ball transfer straight to the fend is brilliant. Well, this the response from Hitchin, and they really started to grow after this point. It was a lovely O'Driscoll-style shuffle step from Curtis Hammer out into the hands of Matthias Davies and pinned his ears back. Was not going to be stopped from that far out. A lot of work to do and a great finish from the right wing. Yeah, it was a brilliant, brilliant try, as you said. The step and then the finish is lovely. And actually, the kick after that was almost the most impressive thing. He's out on the five metre there and he slotted it straight through the sticks. The second try to put Hitchin in front for the first try in this game and it was uh, a thing of beauty, wasn't it? Yeah, you're going to struggle to find a try but enjoy more than this today. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is my favourite try of the day. I was excited to see them all and then we saw a back peel trick play. It's a, it's a clever play design from, I imagine, the Hitchin coach and executed perfectly by his players and a brilliant, brilliant finish by Zach Scott coming around that corner like an absolute freight train. You'll see here how the mall, the fake mall, sucks these sandbatch players in. And once they're sucked in, committing to the mall, they're never getting back. We'll watch there, all them in, and then we get the space there. It's a brilliant, brilliant play design. Zach Scott got his tail feathers up after that because he was the assistant for Jack Steady as Steady cut back against the grain and carved all the way through behind the posts. And he's only been on the pitch for a matter of seconds really it was a great try just again showing the sort of wheels that Hitchin have got out wide yeah brilliant impact straight off the bench as we said it was all a bit lateral from Hitchin steady saw the angle to cut came back against the grain and that's it's one of the hardest tackles in rugby when you're drifting outside of that in defence to have to slam on the brakes and come back he almost you almost get turned around the post like a goalkeeper in, rugby, uh, in football sorry it's it's a very very hard way to make a tackle and even if you do it's going to be passive but uh, he ran with enough power and strength to break the tackle and score a brilliant try that's really put Hitchin in control of this game going in I think if I was Sambach I think I'd actually be relieved half time's come when it has because they can hopefully re regather resettle themselves and um, try try and throw a punch back metaphorically here because they're they're on the ropes well if you're wondering what is happening with the uh, photos well the next game that is up the second semi-final of the under 15s vars those two teams are getting their photos on the pitch at half time so uh, you'll spot that throughout the day as well Well, second half about to get underway here at Six Ways. It is blustery, it's quite cool today. 
little bit of a longer half time these lads will be used to I imagine so it'll be interesting if any of them have got a bit cold or seized up at all at half time and how they react to that was a good five six seven minutes where normally they'll have a two minute turnaround and one thing you also get for players that aren't quite familiar on these 4G pitches, a lot of cramping as you get towards the end, you're used to the softer pitches and uh, sometimes that can play into effect as well. Absolutely, I I'm not a huge fan of playing on them, I know I always feel a bit sore the next day, so we'll see how these lads go in the game. Well, what a carving break, here they come and Sambach storming through with Connor Lee and gets the offload away to Vibikas, the captain. Harry Beach just cleaning things up and that was a great break to get the second half underway. Penalty to hitch in. Well, Sandbach couldn't get it out, could they? Now another breakdown penalty for Hitchin, but that that break and a bit of bit of front football, that's exactly the sort of start to the half Sandbach you need. While they haven't actually got any points out of it or or too much field position, that'll just get their tails up a little bit, a little bit of confidence that they're still in this game, they still can do what they need to to score two tries to be back in the lead. Well, the kick didn't quite get the distance, but. Hitchin will have a line out just inside the Sandbach half. We can't quite see them, but you certainly can on camera. There is a lot of supporters here already for an 11 o'clock Saturday morning kickoff. Someone's brought a drum, which is always good. We, uh, we enjoy a good drum in the crowd, so uh, it's great to see uh, parents, um, friends getting behind the school so well. This is just uh, reading the quick line from Sam Bromley. Well, change of hands once again. Sam Batch rewarded with a penalty of their own this time. He's consistently putting brilliant pressure on the back of that line out, Bromley. And um, as long as his defensive line come with him, it's exactly what we need. If he, if he goes by himself and creates a dog leg in the line, then it could be dangerous. But that, that, uh, that turnover is off the back of his brilliant defensive pressure. And that was an unbelievable kick as well from James Vickas. Straight into the 22. Maybe we're going to get that driving more. We can only hope. We can only hope, Scott. But uh, as I said, this is a huge start for the half for Sandbach. Exactly what they needed to uh, get a foothold back in this game. Well, it is Cairns for Hitchin that's come away with it. The line out not quite finding the mark. And Visick out to Orton and just manages to get the kick over the top of the defence. Well, Sambach has some numbers and space over on this near touchline, carving through. This could be a great break from Connor Lee, eventually tackled by Reese Cairns. Butler, who got a yellow card in that first half, making some metres here. Bromley. Sambach have loads of numbers on the far touchline. If they can just get it away and put it through the hands. Well, it's gone to ground, but they still might have chance to get it away here. Oaks on the field and cutting back inside. Beach. It's a good period of play from Sambach. Looking controlled and they get the penalty. Taken quickly. Collett. Can't quite find his way through. Sambach still going, putting the pressures on round the fringes. Trying to muscle their way through with Bromley and Butler. Inches away. And finally, Sambach get over for the try. I think we've seen Sambach's way back into this game there, just a bit of ball control, a bit of territory, and they played, what, 10, 15 phases there to get their try? There's not, not many defences at any level of the game can survive that long, they had penalty advantage as well, and it's a great finish on the pick and drive here, stays nice and low, and from a metre out, it doesn't matter how good a defender you are, if you stay that low, you can't get under the ball and stop that try being scored. Well, Lucas Beach with the try. We love a second row try around here. Don't get enough of them in the game. So uh, it, it's just reward for some great hard work he's doing all day, Beach. He's done a lot of, lot of breakdown work, a lot of tackling, a lot of carrying in the hard yards. He had two carries in that attack before he scored. So it's just, uh, just desserts, just rewards for, uh, for great work there from him.
and in comparison to the first half where there are a lot of unforced errors just by keeping the ball that ball retention is so important they managed to get them back close to the lead from Hitchin and Harry Beach just calling over a bit of support to keep the ball on the tee Interesting ball support for the tee there, as in, um, who did he call over? Who is that running back? It's Sam that Bromley. Sam Bromley managed to go on the side that he was going to strike the ball and not put his hand on it. Uh, it's an interesting technique, but it's, it, it worked. The ball was a great strike and just drifted to the left of the post, I think, but um, maybe not textbook there. I don't know how Lucas Beach managed to get that ball under the fence, but it was a really great finish. Well deserved score and Leo Rainbow for Hitchin now. Bissick still pressing the short side. Grubber through. Harwood after this and Collett does well to cover. Still charging. The box. Uh, well, it's loose, but it's come back to Sambach. Rio. Sambach. Just uh, edging their way forward, much to the applause of the crowd, and Bromley taking it in. That could be a great steal at the breakdown, and that is a huge bit of work from Ben McClurg. Brilliant turnover. We saw the ball attacked it quickly, and they're off. That's about the fourth quick tap we've seen from Hitchin. Orton grubbering it through. Call it again, cleaning up the mess at the back. The Sandbach scrum half doing such a good job, and they have got the penalty from his good work. I love the intent to go quick with the quick tap, but I'm, I'm not sure that ultimately then going to kick it. They may as well have kicked from the penalty, kicked it out, and um, used their line out, which has been a good weapon for them so far. A oh, really good kick to clear the line, wasn't it, from Sambach, that? Great kick, mate, great moves. It's just a brilliant game, this, Scott, isn't it? I'm enjoying this immensely. It's such good fun. They seem to be enjoying it out there as well. It's a good contest. It's a bit cold, it's blustery, isn't it? But the game is being played with such a high tempo and great spirit as well. Yeah, the score currently 12 points to 19. Zach Scott on the break once again. Lovely, lovely box. The bounce on that, exceptional. And I think that is 50-22 from Harry Beach. That's a game changer. That's an unbelievable kick. Obviously a new law brought in this year. If you kick the ball from your own half and it bounces out in the opposition 22, you get you get the throw into the line out. And that that is an unbelievable kick. To box it from there, it's dribbled out about six metres out. This that, that could be a seven point kick that if they execute here. I mean that is Maverick stuff, isn't it? Harry Beach the fly half, just stepping in at scrum half momentarily and well this is huge, isn't it? Trick play, it's a trick play not quite as effective as the first half trick play that well almost came back for Carruthers on this near side charging forward once again Butler through the legs this time wow we've got Carlos Spencer on the pitch this is huge Connolly had to run backwards finally managed to get players behind the ball and pick and go just trying to edge forward and suck in those hitching defenders brilliant defense from hitching already driving them back 20 25 meters lee with the charge again it's there for hitching but sambach just picking it up first time beach who scored the most recent try and it is hitching to get it well despite all that great work What a period of play that was. Oh, we'll just catch our breath after that, why don't we? Brilliant. We had the 50-22 into a line-out trick play into a brilliant defensive set from Hitchin there. You think that play started six metres out. We're now about 30 metres out. So that's a 24-metre gain 
from uh, Hitchin Boys there. A brilliant, brilliant defensive effort. Well, Hitchin have uh, ridden the wave quite well here, haven't they? Still leading 19 points to 12. Free kick to Hitchin, though. Huge scrum from Sambach, but I believe at under 15's age you're only allowed to push one and a half metres in the scrum, so ref will have told the lads to stop and they won't, won't have, which it's tough, you're on top, you're going for it, it's tough to be able to stop there, but uh, unfortunately for Sambach they don't get the reward for that, uh, that Donald's a great shot there, really great tackle. Sambach haven't quite managed to get the turnover, so it is still Hitchin's ball and Visick trying to find Orton who's in the pocket to clear and it's going to go straight down the throat of Sam Batch and out the back door pass has gone forward I think the referee spotted it so we're going to come back for a hitching ball well this is good fun isn't it oh it's brilliant That's, I love the the uh, the expanse and the daring of George Rie there it's, it's a tough tough skill to offer at the back like that if if it goes doesn't go forward they're making good meters on the edge maybe going to score a try just unfortunately it just drifts forward but I love I love the daring and the, the bravery because at 15 you should be trying things I don't I don't want to see these lads worried about what might happen go for it what's the worst that can happen is a scrum so you love to see that from the uh, Sandbach captain there he's not the Sandbach captain I made that up sorry everyone <laughs> the people's captain will call him the people's captain George Rie the people's captain. Well, we're going to come for a uh, Maurice get scrum. Uh, George Turner for Hitchin just taking a bit of a battering in that scrum. Shakes his head a little bit and uh, I think he's ready to go for round two. If I was the sandbatch hooker here, I'd, I'd risk and take a strike at the opposition ball because they're so dominant at the scrum that he can take his foot off the ground. I still think they'll have dominance. So I'd, as this ball comes in from um, from uh, from Hitchin, I would have a strike. And sandbatch have come away with it. Perfect. George Rie sneaking down the blind. Great work by Collett at scrum half. Huge hit coming in from Rainbow as well flying up off the line and it is Hitchin that get the ball back that all comes from the line speed and dominant tackle from Leo Rainbow there again massively impressive he gets off the line hard puts his man to ground because he's tackling behind the gain line Sambachi's support players their clearers are beyond the ball gives the chance for the turnover before they can get in there it's all, it all comes from that line speed and dominant shot so a brilliant brilliant piece of defensive work there from young Rainbow and just a bit of time for a water break as well. I love the uh, bag for life on there as well. It's just a, uh, it's very 21st century. Yes, I feel like it might be a panic of, we haven't got big enough water carriers, what can we put them in? Bag for life. And it looks like from my, uh, from my vantage point that the head coach of Hitchin does his shopping at Sainsbury's. That they seem to be the bag for life of choice. You know what, I've seen players rock up to games with their kit in bags for life as well. Uh, um, I absolutely love it. Very eco-friendly. I always forget mine at the supermarket. I get there and I feel so guilty. So now I finally started putting them in my car. They now live in my car. I've learned at the age of 26, five, they must live in the car. Well, I'm a bit older than you and I still haven't done that. <laughs> it's probably a good tip. Keep your bags for life in the boot. It's educational here at, uh, at um, Six Ways today. Not just rugby, just tips for life. That's a great kick. Hitching now. This is their first real attacking off during the second half, isn't it? They've... Um, that momentum we spoke about in the first half, it's really been with Sam Batch in the, uh, the 13 minutes we've had of this uh, second half so far. So let's see if Hitchy can strike back. We've not actually seen in the uh, third quarter here, Hitchin get into the Sam Batch 22 and they might be able to here with a driving mall. Uh, I think the referee said they've broken away and come back to a mall, broken away, made a new mall and then gone back into their old ones. So that's an accidental offside, unfortunately, of Hitchin there. It's, uh, there's lots of quite niche and detailed rules around mauling that, to be honest, in my experience, refs sometimes ref and sometimes don't, uh, without sounding too slanderous towards the referees of this great game. Uh, and unfortunately for Hitchin there, they've been caught out on one of them. So a, uh, a good bit of defence from Sandbach and uh, not a lucky escape, but they'll be, they'll be pleased that uh, Hitchin couldn't mount an attack from that line out. collapsed on this near side. Now, 
Ben McClurg for Hitchin just not quite finding his footing I don't think uh, interesting that Zach Scott has gone to flanker as well we saw him with a great score in that first half been very very mobile since then you get that a lot don't you hookers that can play across the back row Sean Fritz probably the most famous of them changed the game changed how hookers play the game did Mr Brits what an offload that is and you was that another between the legs from Beach I think it was I think it was and it might be the forward in me I'm not sure it was needed it didn't go to hand it broke down the attack Mabikas cutting through and straightening things up that was a really important line because it was a bit fractious oh big hit coming in Leo Rainbow has put himself through a lot of work today and offside from Sandbach well that was a bit of a needless error yeah he just timed his run all wrong and then the ref shouted to tell him he was offside and he just hasn't listened that's a, it's a bit of a coach killer there for Sandbach because that's a good exit and now they're probably going to end up five or ten metres out from their own line defending the line out well discussion between uh, vice captain and captain Orton I think was just questioning whether or not he should go for the post with a penalty but the spiral into touch first time in this half that Hitchin have made it into the Sandbach 22 I think if that penalty had been maybe a more kickable one I would have taken the three get um, two scores ahead again but I think that's a very tough kick in these conditions from that distance so I think going to the corner was the right option here plus we might get to see a driving wall we might Scott and we all know that that, that will excite me Interesting to see uh, Visic is in the line out here for uh, for Hitchin. We said they might do it again and they have done Zach Scott. And so it was uh, a flying tackle from Bromley that brought him down. Learned their lesson the first time there, Sam Batch. Weren't going to get caught twice on that uh, back peel. Harwood. Can't quite find the break. Wrapped up and finally they go to ground. That was important. They didn't have much time left to do so. Orton with the grubber again they just need to keep the ball in hand don't they they've given it away a few times in this half knock on from Sandbach though it's tough that for Orton because there's a lot of backfield space and if, if he threads that grubber through and hitch him win the race and collect it it's seven points undoubted but it's the big risk reward question that you put the boot to ball you don't know especially on a 4G pitch how it's going to bounce there it comes off on the Sandbach legs and they're actually looking to get the ball back hitch and so it's a tough one because if that, go, if that comes off, it's a try scoring off Junzi with the way Sambat are defending their backfield. But um, it's a tough skill to master. And um, like, as you said, Scott, with, with the, the situation of the game, maybe just a few more phases of ball in hand and putting the pressure on Sambach might have been the wiser option as um, they haven't had to sustain much pressure this half. And they've just lacked the possession as well to do so, haven't they? And I think kicking it away is, would be an easy score for them, but they just need to be patient. I'm just waiting while uh, Zach Scott gets some treatment as well on the field. Bit of cramp, I think, from that last dart. Yeah, and that's that cramp you were speaking about earlier, uh, Scott. Of um, They won't have played on many fields like this, and it does take an effect on your lower limbs, your hamstrings, your calves. Uh, they, do, they do seize up a little bit on this harder surface. So um, hopefully it's nothing more serious than that, just a bit of cramp. Have a good stretch, and we'll be back in the game. I think we've seen the unusual move of Lucas Beach from second row to tight head prop, if I'm not mistaken. The head tape, I think that is the giveaway for the try scorer there. He's made. You often see second rows move backwards in the scrum during a game, but not forwards often. Well, you never know, do you? He could end up in the front row. Stranger things have happened. I did a season in the front row that I'd rather forget. When I was about 20, we had the, with the wise move. Well, not so wise to move me to tight prof. I was very quickly back in the back five. It's not fun up there. I don't know how those boys do it. Well. Bit of fatigue perhaps settling in. This has been a very high tempo game. This this last 10 minutes was so finely poised, Scott. I, um, this still very much could go either way. Well, I was just about to say, I wonder if it 
was all level what would happen at full time and the sun just shining down on us here at six ways we did say we were expecting to see some more blue skies today it's not made it any warmer in this com box though has it no it is blustery up here we've shut the door but uh, there's no windows or walls on this house so yeah very chilly indeed Carving through Halma. There's that step again. Out wide through the hands. Stepping. Davies, the try scorer from the first half. Can't quite find that space this time. Rainbow does well to roll out of that tackle and make a metre. They've got plenty of numbers. Harwood, big hit coming in. Huge tackle from Connolly. Now through the hands, Terrell Gooden. Well, the kick is high and it's into some space and it's going to bounce and bobble and it's a foot race. It has gone into touch and uh, Elijah Ray French just marshalling that one out. I think Hitchin might be glad that that um, went out when it did because I think uh, Sandbach, if that had gone another 10 metres, would probably win the foot race of that and if they collected that, it could have been a try. So, great kick, just unfortunately it bounced out the way it did. Well, we're just waiting for uh, Tristram Harwood, who I think might have had a bit of a knock. So pause in play, again you're getting a bit of cramp and uh, tight muscles coming in from the impact of this firm pitch. I think we might be about to see Leo Rainbow who started the game at 13, then went to number 8. I think he might be moving back to full back now or into the centres. All a shuffle, great to see though isn't it? Dynamic players. Yeah, and at this age, the more positions they can play, the better. It's just rather than making them a second row or a centre, make them rugby players. You want to see them developing all their skills in different positions. It's brilliant to see for these rugby players' development. Another line-out play. The kick. Well, that's not gone to plan. The Vikas with the fend. Lovely one-handed outside offload and carving through the middle. Connolly, great offload. Wow, that was special. How on earth did he get that away? Some brilliant handling there in the whole attack, but especially that last offload and pick-up. Bromley on the attack. Done a great job today in defence. So much just need to be patient here, I think. Like they scored that first try of this half. They just need to be patient. All the ball through the hands to Riley and couldn't quite catch a hold of that well this was a, a good pass was facing the wrong way but it couldn't quite find its mark and the game just fizzling down slightly here we might be in for a big final five minutes though yeah a huge huge last push here for, for both sides I think Sambachi start to get not not desperate but they know that they've got to score in the next three or four minutes give themselves a chance of winning this in regular time where Hitch and No actually another score would probably be the final nail in the coffin for Sambach. So huge passage of play in the next few minutes. Well oh, that was a big scrum from Sambach, wasn't it? We've got the second row enforcer, Lucas Beach in there. Well now he's moved back into the second row, so Again, Val Sambach had risk going for a strike on the opposition ball here. There's, you're dominating the scrum, you can only push a metre and a half. Get that foot up hooker, have a strike, see if you can hook it back your side. And they've done it again. Rie with the fend and barging his way through. Bullying a china shot down the five metre channel. Call it having a go himself.
this time Butler he got a yellow card in that first half but has worked hard in this second 30. Sambach making loads of yards after contact brilliant leg drive not accepting the tackle. Sabri with the rip and it's spilled but well collected again Sambach just trying to find something in a bit of space and there's a hole through the middle Connolly charging stepping can't quite find his way through on the five metre line now the forwards are there, they're ready for the arm wrestle. Patient at the breakdown. Now they look to move. Trucking this one forward, edging closer to those posts, edging closer to that try. Again, no need to rush the sandbag here. There's all the time in the world in this game left, more than five minutes. Important they get this ball over the line. This is the best chance they'll probably have again. Lee once again. They're trying to find the space wide, but it is Hitchin that get the penalty. And that is a great defensive effort. Great defence and a huge turnover. We've said it all day. Hitchin have been brilliant at that jackal. They've been attacking the ball on the floor. And they've only given one penalty away for getting it wrong. So their discipline there has been excellent. And that, at this stage of a game, five metres out, that could, in five minutes' time, be the sort of defensive effort that gets you to the final. Well, the clearance just outside their own 22 less than five minutes to play here at six ways in this first rfu under 15 vars semi-final a change zach scott coming back on scored that wonderful set piece try in the first half they're gonna have to try and play this they i've got too much time on the clock to just try and be passive and run it down it's it's not going to happen for them in that way. No, you can't play for four minutes, zigzag and finish this game. So you'd think they'll probably exit and you'd expect Sandbach to get the ball back. So they will have another shot to try and level this up. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Orton, again with another clearance kick, gets some good metres on that, straight down the throat of Ben Long. Riley on the right wing now. Colin just setting this up. Sambach still pinning Hitchin in their own half. Rie getting muscle back and it might be a steal here for Hitchin. Not quite this time. Work rate of Yusuf Sabri, the tight for Hitchin there. The big man in the last five minutes making two tackles in a row. Well, it's with Visic now. Great Sonny Bill offload into the hands of McClurg. Now Hitchin are on the attack. They've got numbers over on this right wing. Halmer charging through. Halmer still going. And it's going to be a great score for Curtis Halmer. And that will surely secure the win for Hitchin Boys School here at Six Ways. Brilliant try. It all came from... Sambach, they obviously know they've got to try and score that try to get themselves back level, maybe forcing it a little bit. Great defence from Hitchin wins the ball back, and then they, they identified the overlap on the short side, and then maybe Hammond could have passed, but he backs himself, takes on the defender, finishes it brilliantly, comes under the post. You'd think now, bar a miracle, that's probably going to send Hitchin to the final. Well, fair play to Sambach as well, charging through to hustle at the death. Well, that is a massive, massive try for Curtis Halmer. Probably the most important of his young career so far because that has more than likely secured a place at Twickenham for Hitchin. They've been very impressive, that centre partnership. I know Rainbow has gone into the back row at times, but Howen and Rainbow, I think, in, uh, in those centres of Hitchin, um, they've been very impressive today. Their physicality, their, their handling, their defence, all of it's been exceptional. It's good cohesion between them, isn't it? Nice balance, and that is another conversion for Elliot Orton. Well, we'll take a look at it again because it was worth it. The head on shot storming through, Sambach left in his wake. It's a brilliant shot, that isn't it? You wouldn't want to have to stop that man running towards you. It's a, he's a powerful runner, and as I say, maybe he could have passed it, but he knows what he's good at. He backs himself to take it on and slides with the post for the seven points that will probably, you'd think, send Hitchin Boys School to the National Vars final.
Well, we are just waiting because off the end of the field, Sambach have uh, a player receiving some treatment. But I do think they have 15 on the field. And they're just confirming the switch around. So I've been very impressed with Scott. It's Rhys Cairns, the captain for Hitchin. He's been very vocal all day. Big day for him and his school. He's led brilliantly. He's led by example, but you hear him now just telling the lads it's not done yet. There's still three or four minutes left, he believes. So really rallying his troops. It's been very impressive. Rainbow with the uncharacteristic error and it's great kick chase from Sambach really that put the pressure on. As I said in the first half, I okay, I've just been saying don't switch off an error after a try. It happens so often and depending on how long there is left, like our clock showing red, but clearly we're not as we carry on playing. Sambach score a quick try here. They could maybe give themselves a chance, but I do think the time might just be just be uh, running away from them unfortunately for the Sambach boys. Big shove, change of direction again. George Rie charging forward. He might be able to get over just a good tackle, five metres short. Still the momentum with Sambach. Lateral once again, beach this time. We're going to come back for the original penalty. I think Rie just taking a bit of a knock. Muscling their way over. This is a great defence from Hitchin. Still with Sambach, peeling round this short side. Again, a huge hit coming in. Wow, where did that come from? Visit. Great from the diminutive scrum half, but they might be over in the corner, and it's going to be the captain, Babikas, for Sambach once again darting over and they maybe think there might be enough time for another they can't rush this kick though this kick's hugely important it's a tough one as well it's out towards the five meter line it's a big big kick this year i'll be hugely hugely impressed if babisak manages to get this through the post it'd be a great kick well that was uh, great patience wasn't it from Sambach but what about the defence from Hitchin sending them back on their own line it never happens but huge performance on their own line yeah brilliant from Hitchin and actually in the grand scheme of things the fact they forced them to score wide could have a huge part to play here well that is going to be short and not accurate enough 17-26 to Hitchin. Hitchin need to kick this ball as deep as they can here. Make Sambach have to come 80, 90 metres to score a try. They had so many numbers as they went over for that score. For Bickass was not going to pass it. Orton is going to land on the 22 and bouncing and it's well taken. The captain... Reese Cairns did well to collect it, but it's stolen once again. Sambach, they've got him quite high there, I think. Penalty. Just taking his quick tap a little too far from the mark. There's the rest brought him back. The big ass with the kick. It's a brilliant kick. It's made about 30, 40 metres there, and suddenly Sambach in attacking position again. Sambach looking to move this one. Brilliant take that. It's a hard skill going off the line. That was a great oh, take. They fumbled that though. And it's again with Hitchin. Joe Waite. Now with Gooden. 
was frantic at the end. Riley trying to pick up the spilled ball. Sandbach just teeing up the box kick. Got some good distance on that. Interesting choice to kick the ball away at this point in the game. Needing to score tries. I think I would have been tempted to keep hold the ball there. What about that kick chase though? And I think Sandbach might get this. They've got it on the floor. Well, surely Hitchin were going to be guilty of holding on there because they definitely didn't. The ball's a lock on box. Oh, almost been knocked off his chair as the Hitchin boys celebrate their win. But the, a life flash before our eyes there, as I believe Zach Scott has absolutely volleyed the ball right to Scott's head. I tell you what, I'm like Spider Man because it was coming towards me and I completely dodged it. Does that mean I get to keep the match ball? I, I, I'd say you've deserved that match ball there, Scott, but <laughs> I can't quite believe what's just happened there. But back to the rugby while Scott <laughs> regathers his so life's flash before his eyes. What a win for Hitchin, boys. Well, yeah, brilliant result, and what a great game of rugby. Just brilliant. The uh, initiative, the effort, the grit, the tempo, and the quality as well. It was just high quality, and these are young men out on the pitch learning their trade as they go, and it's a, a great experience. You've got to feel for every single member of that Sandbach school team, though. They, they've given their all. You can see them looking pretty distraught on the pitch, but they've got nothing to be downhearted about except for the result. Those boys gave absolutely everything they've got. They were a credit to their families, their schools, and just didn't, couldn't quite get the result on the day as we see the, we see the tries here again. Well, this is the first one, uh, James for Bickass. But it was a, a great opening try for him. Hitching boys' school into the national under 15 vars final at twickenham this the uh, opening try once again a great dart from him played really well all game didn't he yeah he was he was very good and at this point it was all sandbacks they've been on top but then they were about to see this, this hitching drive just brought them back in the game. Then the sim bid and momentum shift was huge. And probably, I'd say, those 10 minutes before half time probably in the end have been what, uh, what secured the game for hitching that 10 minutes of dominance. Well, the Halmer shuffle out to Matthias Davies, darting his way over. The pick of the day, your favourite? Yeah, this is my favourite. It might not be the best, but it's my favourite. A line out trick play. Brilliant finish from uh, from the hooker, from young Zach Scott, and just uh, this is a huge momentum shift. They went bang bang with two tries, didn't they? Out of nowhere, hitching, and once they took that lead, they didn't really look like losing it again all game. This uh, another great score, but from Jack Steady this time, cutting against the runner traffic and putting hitching. Well clear at half time. It was a, an important score, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a great finish. And like I said, they, they had huge momentum, huge dominance going into half time. They had to capitalise on it, and they did with that that second try just before the break. And we said at half time, it probably the break came at the right time for Sandbach. As we see here, they came back and they got themselves back in the game. Well, this is the. Uh final try, the one that confirmed Hitchin will be on the bus to Twickenham from Curtis Hammer who had a wonderful game didn't he? Yeah that centre partnership, Howard and Rainbow, they, they'll be tough for any team to deal with in this competition, whoever wins our second semi they will have watched that and know that there's a lot of danger there. I actually think what won Hitchin the game was their dominance at defensive breakdown, the number of turnovers at pivotal, pivotal moments to either stop Sandbach attacks or to, um, to launch a Hitchin attack of their own was huge. That the final score from James Verbickas, the captain, two for him today, three for Sandbach all in, wasn't quite enough but they played very well in a spirited effort. Yeah, especially you feel for the big ass. He was brilliant all day. For him to be on the losing side almost feels cruel. But unfortunately, sport is at times. There has to be winners and losers. Um, but a brilliant, brilliant game, Ruben. If we, if we get three more games of that quality, we are in for a great day here at Six Ways. Well, 
Uh, next game coming up in uh, around about 15 minutes time. It's the second under 15 Vars semi-final. Langley Park School taking on Torquay Boys Grammar School. Uh, we'll be back with that very shortly.
Welcome back everyone to under 15 VAR semi-finals day here at Six Ways, a brilliant first game there. And now we've got Langley Park versus Torquay Boys, it's a tough act to follow that first game but um, hopefully we'll have just as high quality rugby and it's myself Charlie Beckett and Scott Eburn taking you through the game again as the ref blows for kick off and here we go. Well it was a, a cracker of a first game. And Well, Langley Park taking on Torquay Boys Grammar School to join Hitchin in the final at Twickenham. Well, here comes the lightning quick feet storming through and away they go. Nelson Martin might be able to go the length here. Can he? Yes he can. Well that is a huge try. My word, that is something else. Yeah, some, uh, a lightning start to the game there. We just all catch our breath as we settled in. A brilliant strike play from the line out. Um, a searing run and great, great finish from Martin there. And um, I think he could be a problem all day for Torquay. If he keeps carrying the ball like that, he'll be hard to stop. Leon Nelson Martin has already, inside the opening two minutes, got a name for himself. That was electric. Bobbing and weaving. Great start to this second under 15 Vars final, semi final. It was a quick start from Torquay before that as well. They made a break down this near touchline where he got tackled into touch. But if the tackle hadn't been made, I think he was through to score. So it, it seems we've got two teams with 
some serious attacking prowess who want to keep the ball in hand, want to play rugby and I think we could be in front of the cracker here Scott, a second, a second of the day, I, I said just as you were, um, as we were settling in that it'd be a hard act to follow that first game but um, the way this one started I think they will be. Well interestingly we've got number seven Ryan Jones taking the conversion and he has absolutely leathered that between the sticks. We love to see a forward kicking. That's uh, the sort of thing we love to see. You don't see many of them but it was a brilliant conversion and well I said in the last game we had to catch our breath. It's been taken away straight away again here. Let's see uh, how Torquay can react to that fast start from Langley. He did so well to finish that try, Nelson Martin. Well, that hasn't gone 10 for Torquay. And uh, you may well notice that there are no numbers on the back of the Torquay boys' shirts. They have letters, traditional style. Uh, I don't think it's quite the typical lettering convention that Leicester Tigers well known for. Yeah, I came through the Les Tags Academy and we wore uh, we wore letters rather than numbers on the back of our shirts. It was always very cool, but ours were um, one was A, two was B, etc. Torquay have not gone with that, so I'd, I'd be interested to find out how they've decided who wears what uh, what letter, but um, thankfully we've got these written down on our sheets here, so hopefully they won't cause too much confusion for you and I in the comms box. Well, it's a scrum on halfway to Langley. Switch of play from Langley early here from the scrum as they come down the short side in this attacking threat. Well, here they go. Conway cutting through, needs some support. Iwowo giving him that. Now Langley looking to use it. The pass back up with. Tucky Conway Titiwowo Big breakdown Clay Heights coming the side but the ferocity with which I can't see from here who that was uh, from this far away but the ferocity with which he cleared that breakdown was huge just got to obviously come over the ball and through the gate as uh, the referees will call it and unfortunately came the side there Tell you what, Scott, of the four under 15 sides you've seen so far, Langley Park look the physically biggest, don't they? I think you can see in the way they're carrying, they're trying to make take advantage of that. They're, they're a little bit bigger than their Torquay uh, counterparts here, and they're, they're running onto the ball hard and making game line with every carry. It can definitely make a, a big difference at this age group, can't it? It's uh, quite an imposing position to be in when you've got players that are, you know, six foot, six foot three sort of thing. It's a, it's a big match winner potentially as well through the middle Merch the number eight taking it up Holroyd here comes the break through Ryder that time Bo Ryder Gilbert going through Great defence from Langley Park there's Torquay just got a little bit of momentum, got on the front foot, we're getting over the gain line, but a, a great tackle forcing the offload, um, sorry, forcing the knock on. Every time we're gonna say Bo Ryder in this game, I'm definitely gonna think of Flo Ryder, the rapper. That's already gone in my head, and I think that's gonna be something I have to wrestle with this whole game. It's uh it's a strong name, isn't it, Bo Ryder? And the drum is back out in force. Something's telling me, and I don't know what it is, that Langham Park aren't going to look to exit here. They might be looking to play a phase or two before putting boot to ball. Watch me be completely wrong now, but uh, the way they've started, I think these boys are here to play some attacking rugby. So, um, as I said at the start, I think we're in for an exciting game. Well, they were in this sort of position when Leon Nelson Martin got the ball and skipped through half the team and darted three quarters of the pitch. So, it's certainly something they've got in their locker room. Well, I was completely wrong. It's a good exit as well. 
bouncing just inside their own half. Be interesting to see after this fast start now if the game settled that settles down a little into a more uh, stereotypical pace of back and forth, or if we just we're foot on the throttle and 100 miles an hour all game. I think we'll find out in the next few minutes what sort of tempo this game will take. Off the top, Amoya now into the hands of Fred Horn. Looks lively. Back with Langley. Ryan Jones there, look for the turnover as any good seven will, but you've just got to listen to the ref, whether you think he's right or wrong, as soon as he calls breakdown, hands away, you've got to stop Jacqueline because that's given an easy 10, 15 metres of uh, territory there to Torquay to march up the field and again they'll look to launch an attack. Since, since the Langley try, it's been all Torquay, they've, they've had all the ball, they've had all the pressure, so they'll be wanting to capitalise on this. Good take off the top. Torquay with the dummy runner now with Ryder to Nichols out wide once again big shunting run from Fred Horn Amoria to McNally Amoria still moving through the hands and out they go Harvey darting, cutting back inside, just skips past Iwoho. McNally. Good patience from Torquay at the moment, still with the ball in hand and they come blind. Might be a bit isolated here though. It's a spilled ball. Now they might be away with this one. Hillier Taylor into the Torquay half now. A good attack from Torquay there. Good patient. They move the ball from width to width. I think something that they could do which will really improve their attack is both. They look like they've got some real danger at wide with Horn and Harvey on the wings. You see, when both of them made their breaks, they both carried the ball on the inside hand close to the fence. Now, there's two issues with that. First of all, obviously it's close to the fence. They can target for maybe a turnover. But if you've got that ball on your inside hand, you can't hand off. You can't get that fend out. So if they get the ball, for example, you're going on the right wing with Harvey. If he's got that in the right hand, he can use his left to fend and try and get those defenders away because they both have made good one-on-one -on -one tackles. On them. If they can get that fend out, it might give them a chance to break a tackle and go and score because they look dangerous on both wings. Amoria putting in at the scrum. Now they come into the hands of Horn and Horn wrestling with Jaden Quashi. Going to be a good battle between those two today, I'm sure. Charging up through Gilbert, Henry Gilbert, the second row with F on his back. Oh, lovely pass, just uh, skimming to Harvey. Good footwork. Well, there's once a, a great phrase about William Ryder, the Fijian Rugby Sevens player, that he could step five people in a telephone box, and very similar about you and Harvey there. Yeah, not the biggest player on the pitch, but he's looked dangerous the two or three times he's had the ball. Be interesting here, you'll think Langley will go, go, to, uh, go to the corner, probably going to end up about 25, 30 metres out. Now, you won't hear me say this often, but probably too far for a mall. You know, great kicks, they're going to be the 22, but after the way Nelson Martin went through on that first line-out play, we haven't seen him ball in hand since. I'd be looking to run a similar move and try and get him in space. If he, he's a big ball carrier, looks hard to stop. If you can get a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him, I feel like he's going to go through. So, be interesting to see if they try to get the ball back in Leon Nelson Martin's hands here. Well, it's uh, very, very chilly here at Six Ways today. If you uh, were with us for our opening game, Hitchin got a great win, convincing win in the end against Sam Batch, and they head to Twickenham for the National Schools and the 15 Vars final. And it is one of these two teams, Langley Park or Torquay, that will join them.
Just another, we see a back peel, a little bit like the Hitchin play early, um, earlier in the day that they scored off, a little bit further out, it's off a three-man line out, and unfortunately, again, they were going to make good gain line off it, it's, it's a good play, but just spilled it in contact, unfortunately. Now, Torquay will look to exit and get themselves back up this pitch and try and get some field position again. Well, that pass just going wayward, oof. Dipped on by uh, Ryder. This is a horrible place to be now. It's about as hard as it gets to exit from the middle of the pitch on your own line. The stress with these uh, short end goal areas as well is a woe who collects this and a woe who hitches, steps back inside. Half a tackle and brings him down from Nichols. Nelson Martin still going. Some player so strong. Now the crossfield kick coming in. Almost collected. They had three Langley Park shirts waiting underneath it. Torquay just riding that one out. Brilliant, brilliant identification of space from the uh, Langley Park 10. Killian Tukey there. He's seen that the crossfield kick option is on now. It's one thing seeing it, it's another to, uh, to execute the skill. It's a brilliant kick and then it just unfortunately for Langley hasn't quite gone to hand. But that, that's brilliant, brilliant work for the fly half to see that space and execute the kick like that. Maria. Well, that's going to be picked up as he knocked it on. He's got it over the line. That is lost forward, unfortunately, from McCormack. That's so unfortunate. It's a brilliant charge down, which obviously is legal. You can charge the ball down, it can go forward from the kick, and then the replay here. I think we'll see that as it bounces, he tries to gather it, he knocks it on again. So, charge down is legal there. That knock on there, unfortunately. That's, that's so unlucky for the young man. It's a great charge now. If he gathers it, it's seven points. But uh, Torquay is struggling to exit here. They've had two chances and not got, away, got out either. They'll be looking hoping that third time's the charm for them now. Well, they might be able to hear it's a low kick, really, down the throat of Joe Conway. And he runs horizontal, runs backwards, and he's well tackled in the end. Two Torquay shirts bringing him down. Good defence from Torquay. It has been knocked forward off a red shirt. And Langley will get a scrum just inside the opposition's half. See the old adage, is it's, it's a, you will have heard coaches all over the world saying it. A ch kick is as good as its chase. And that wasn't the best kick from Torquay there, but you watched them. They worked harder than Langley. They won the chase back and actually were unfortunate not to get a turnover from the resulting tackle and what wasn't a great kick, not a great exit, has put them up to halfway which is when we talk about where you want to get to from an exit, if you can get halfway and over that's, that's brilliant, that's like A star sort of stuff so great chase and just, just from working hard there from Torquay has got them into a good field position now. Well there is a substitution in the front row for Langley Park, I think it's Conor Ryan that's made his way off but the Substitute is going to be wearing the exact same shirt, so no idea who that is. If his mum and dad are watching at home, we are sorry that we can't identify your son because we, o we only have Connor Ryan down the three, and one thing we know is that isn't Connor Ryan on the pitch in the three shirt anymore. Yep, unfortunately, this is how it goes sometimes, but it's all good fun. Scrum on halfway then, Langley Park. That's a good push from Torquay, but the loop coming back to Tukey and his grubber into the corner and really interesting how in comparison to the four teams in this under 15 Vars how they've approached the game and this is a very controlled approach to the match from Langley Park so far. It is and it's our second 50-22 of the game. Now I, I won't lie I thought that scrum was in the uh, Torquay half and it was taken back by Langley which would have meant it was a Langley Borsler but Referee and assistant uh, have seemed to think that started in the uh, Langley half. So our second 50-22 of the game, and we're seeing that's a great way to get field position for these teams.
great ball off the top. Now to McCormack. Took here around the back again. It's been knocked on and Torquay will get the ball back. Well, despite that electric opening to the game, it's been slightly fractious, hasn't it? Yeah, I think we've seen a few more handling errors than we saw in our first semi-final. Um, I think, obviously, probably these lads seeing the first semi-final happen, the nerves probably build a little more. And then after that first start, that wild start with the uh, with the Nelson try, it's just become a little bit bitty, this game, a little bit scrappy, and as both teams settle in and we get into the arm wrestle of uh, the middle third of the pitch. Jacob Amoria with the, the letter A on his back playing scrum half for Torquay Boys Grammar School today. Again, another kick into touch and away they go. Brilliant kick. They, they've learned from the few failed exits they had earlier and that's two in a row now, brilliantly getting them up to halfway. That's, uh, that'll make the coaches very happy because that's what you want to get to. And uh, let's see what Langley Park can, uh, can fire back with. They, uh, they obviously knocked on from their last line out attack. So let's see how this one goes. Well, already uh, a couple of replacements coming on. I think we're seeing Glyn Jones move on to the right wing. Uh, Ewan Harvey will move to fullback, and I think Ben Adams has come off wearing the letter D for Torquay. I thought he was a second row running on Glyn Jones, the height of him. He's a tall chap, isn't he? Break around the fringes, lovely dart from Donnelly. Uh, it was lost for though, and. Well, that is a shame because it was a nice break from uh, Alex Donnelly. We seem to just be going set piece to set piece at the moment. There's no, we're struggling to get a bit of flow into this game. I'd say handling errors and uh, knock-ons of the like. Torquay will be hoping they can just keep ball in hand for a number of phases here because I think if either side can string five, six, seven phases together, they'll they'll find some holes in the opposition defence. But at the moment, the first two, three phases of defence is so strong that it's it's forcing the errors. Now Torquay with the break to Horn, cutting back inside and keeps nice and low, drives his head forward to Gilbert. Good handling, Fred Horn popping up in the midfield this time. Leon Nelson Martin now with the ball in hand. Another fend, another fend, boshing one off. Just spills the ball in contact and hacks it forward. That's a brilliant tackle from Fred Horn. It's a brave tackle as well. Um, Nelson Martin had a full head of steam. He had five, five, ten metres of running in him. As you see the replay here, he's coming round. He's running hard, and Fred, that's a that's a great shot from Fred Horn. Like, that's a brave tackle because I think if if he doesn't make that, we could be looking at another breakaway try. So that's that's a huge tackle from the winger for Torquay. I mean, technically, it was very brave because he just stood there in front of him like a vertical speed bump, didn't he? Oh yeah, I think if you're you're watching, and you think of a tackle technique, it's probably not textbook. Uh, it's probably not the safest, but sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes you've just got to get the job done and he's done a brilliant job there. Thankfully, most importantly, he's OK and he's come out of it all right. Well, it's another scrum to Torquay. Trying to find a foothold in this game. They've had possession, not quite managed to make the most of it yet and haven't got into that red zone, into the 22, which they need to do. There's only seven points on the board so far and we're... Already a quarter of the way through the game. Henry Murch with the charge. Skips through one and another big Fen coming in. Sam on Simmons Quashy. off the base. The speed off the base like Simmons for the Lions. Now they look to go wide. They've got the numbers over if they can put it through their hands. To Harvey on the outside. He's got Jones. The space just sucked up by the defence. They're being patient at the moment. Coming through this time. Fred Horn again. Looking to move it out wide. Can they get it to Horn in the pink scrum out? Away he goes into the corner and what a try for Torquay. Yeah, well worked try there from Torquay. I said a few minutes ago if either side could probably play five, six, seven phases, they'd they'd stretch the defence and you see they've gone coast to coast there from one touchline to the other and back, move the ball brilliantly. And he's looked lively, hasn't he, on this wing, Fred Horn, his pink scrum hat. You've got to be quick to back up a pink scrum hat on the wing, and he is. 
Well, they just about got the numbers. It was one pass, two pass into the hands of their speed man. And look at him go, does really well to beat the cover defence. The timing of that last pass actually makes the try. It's, uh, Bo, it's Ryder. Bo Ryder, great name. Bo Ryder just draws the defender in enough that he can't quite get there. And I say, Horn's got that ball on the inside hand again there. If he's got it in the outside, he can fend and maybe make the finish a little bit easier. But it's a brilliant finish nonetheless. Gets around the outside and goes in the corner. A big kick coming here. But um, Chalky very, very much back in this game after a quick start from Langley Park. Holroyd with the conversion attempt is not successful. Well, just like that, despite the promising start from Langley Park, Torquay have uh, shown a good period of play and they're back into this game. Seven points five down. This is the try from Fred Horn in the corner. The more I watch it, the more impressed I am with Bo Ryder's timing with his pass there. Just long enough that the defender has to bite on him, but soon enough that the defender can't affect his pass. It's a, it's a brilliant timing and it's one of those skills that you practice a million times over, execute your two-on-ones, but doing it under pressure, it's a whole, whole different kettle of fish. A really, really important finish from Fred Horn. On the bounce, it's gone forward. Again, score a try. You've got to feel the ball off your kickoff. I know a lot of teams talk about the seven points, five points don't really count until you've exited. And we see here Langley Park, an error off the kickoff from Torquay, and now they're straight back into the 22. And we're looking to some use, use some of these destructive strike runners off the back of this scrum. Well, if you're eating your alphabet soup, that was probably a good shot. The backs of the Torquay boys into the scrum. Langley Ball and Alex Donnelly with the put-in. What a shot though from Torquay, putting the pressure on. Yeah, Torquay looks to be the dominant set piece at scrum time. I can see their front row look very amped up and ready to go again. They want a scrum, they want a scrum here again. I spoke in the last game about the dominant scrum of Sandbach, maybe risk it on the opposition's ball, go for a strike. If I was Torquay, I'd be thinking of doing the same. Well, we said it looked as if that Langley Park may well have slightly bigger pack but uh, Torquay so far showing all the muscle in the scrum there they go again well they've done well just to stop after the drive for one and a half meters really good play Tom Freeman on the loose head side here for Torquay is being very destructive um, nope it's not Tom Freeman because I've just seen he's got a W on his back it's Oisin Malone, sorry, off the bench. I did not realise they made that change. He's being very destructive on this loose head side. Uh, Langley, tight head, Alex Hilliard, no, Connor Ryan, sorry. Connor Ryan strung to deal with him. He looks like a big, strong boy. So, again, let's see if they can get the ball back on this scrum. That, that metre and a half might save Langley here. Oh, well done. They've got it away this time. Good break. Ryan Jones coming away with it. I think they're trying to hold him up and this is very interesting play from Torquay. Very intelligent play and they have got that ball back. This Torquay pack is quite literally wrestling their side back into the game. I think as this game develops I think it might become a bit of a bit of a story of this Torquay pack against the Langley Park backline. This Langley Park backline, they look big, they look athletic, they look dangerous, but at the moment, their pack just can't get them the ball. Torquay are all over them up front. I think we've got another change on it. Scrum half for Torquay. It is the letter I for Indigo, Dylan Brown. So it looks like he's got number one on his back, but I, I did think that for a second. forward again straight down the throat of Joe Conway who puts a boot on it himself and that was an interesting bounce because it just went outside the Torquay try line here they go into some space this is Glyn Jones on the break for them hacked through Try to keep it in Langley and I get a sense that the wind is going straight into the face of Torquay here because their kicking all day has been very flat and uh, about five foot in the air. Yeah and that'll have a huge effect on the game even if 
at half time if you can go in within a score within 10 points down with this sort of wind in your face you feel like you've done well so Langley will know that and they'll know in the next five minutes four minutes they need to get some points on the board and make the most of this wind because otherwise it's very much an uphill battle running into that wind second half when you're uh, when you're behind good platform here for Langley off the line out no uh, lifting but a big driving mall coming in bit of momentum behind them well Torquay penalised they thought they'd stolen it but not this time again we're just struggling to get much float we're going for posts sorry I was mid-sense that has surprised me we are on the five metre line about 39 metres from uh, from the trial line this is a am I Scott if I say this is a 50 metre kick am I over exaggerating probably just slightly you know more 40 40 45 sort of range I would guess um, I think he's managed to nudge it forward about a metre as well good tactical choice um, from the mark but if they have got the wind on the backs and this is teed off what we just said nicely about Torquay kicking into the wind because I do think they've got quite a nice tailwind behind them Langley Park well all I'd say is when I'm captaining at Ampton the men's championship if my kicker came to me and said I fancy this Charlie I'd back him but I'd look at it and go it'd be a good kick so I'd be very impressed if this goes over it's a good distance Killian Tucky. well it wasn't a good strike was it acted it a bit again the kick back into space and Glyn Jones is going to come away with this well that has worked out very nicely for Torquay Torquay effectively have the ball now where the kick was taken from that's been a, uh, a wild 60 seconds or so there <laughs> absolutely wild I think Glyn Jones could have backed himself to get under that ball before the bounce then and he could have been well away but just a slight hesitation I think Grubber across the pitch Conway now out to Nelson Martin the ball in one hand almost with a lovely offload he's dangerous isn't he in those outside channels well that is I think half time well Langley Park leads seven points to five against Torquay Boys Grammar School here at six ways in the second RFU National Schools under 15 Vars semi-final and uh, only two tries in it it's been a cagey game hasn't it at times we've thought that Langley might just break away but let's take a look at those highlights Charlie yeah well we started like an absolute freight train and started a million miles an hour with um, a breakaway try for Leon Nelson Martin at this point it looked like Langley were going to have a, it all their way this half. It was a very quick try there. He went about 70 metres. Um, but then they didn't really get the ball in his hands again. It's a great finish. He's a dangerous strike runner. But I so said, we didn't really see him again until the last play of that half, did we? No, unfortunately, they've just not managed to get the ball in the right spaces to him. And that last break right at the end, it just showed what he can do as well. I'm sure the game will break up as we get into the second 30. This, though, uh, a lovely and well-worked try from Torquay. What about this pass from Bo Ryder, hey? Out to Fred Horn, who's got some real wheels. Sliding his way into the corner. Yeah, it was, as I said, on commentary at the time, the, the timing of the pass from Bo Ryder, that's what it's all about. He gets moved from nice and early, takes that outside arc, squares up on the last defender, and just as he has to bite on him, bang, puts the ball in Fred Horn's hands, who does the rest, and he's, as you can see, very, very happy in the corner. Well, that is it from the first half here Langley Park School 7 Torquay Boys 5 we'll be back with the 7.30 in just a few moment time
Second half about to get underway. Quick change. Here they go then. Under the blue sky and bright sunshine. It's still cold and blustery here in Worcester at six ways. We have Torquay playing from left to right in the red and with letters on their backs and Langley Park in the uh, maroon and white from right to left and here comes their flyer Jaden Quashy skipping through good footwork still going might get up to halfway here we didn't see any of Quash in the first half but just from that you can see how quick he is there's some serious gas out there on this pitch on both sides out wide into the hands of Jones and Jones has done some good work <laughs> penalty to Torquay well you can already sense at the start of this second half there's a bit more energy out there isn't there yeah I think teams probably settled in that cagey first half and I think they're probably frustrated how that first half went neither side have played the fluent rugby they want to so probably from a little bit of confidence if anything that they've not played brilliantly either side they're both from the game they can get out there and express themselves a little more this second 30 Koshi taking it well moved from the right wing to full back and he's got a massive boot well taken though from Harvey and Harvey not the biggest player but got good footwork good wheels and does well to skip out of that Jones I heard that collision up here the physicality of these lads they may only be 14 15 but they're putting some shots in the clattering hit wasn't it Quashy again it's like a fullback's dream isn't it broken play open space Still skipping, maybe should have just given that ball because they had three men over. Out the back to Tuki, and you now sense that uh, Langley Parker kicking into a bit of a breeze as well. Great nudge from Torquay. That's a huge kick. This is a tough place now to exit from Langley Park into the wind. I'm amazed the amount of kicking that's been in this game as well. Well collected all. Torquay might have just found themselves in some space, but it's been lost forward again. Second time we've seen a charge down. If it goes to hand, it's probably seven points. The, the bounce of rugby ball is always unpredictable, but especially off these artificial pitches. But um, I agree with Scott, in both games we've seen, these, these, these are 15-year-old like, teenage lads. They're all happy to kick and play the play the percentages, aren't they? They're a lot more disciplined than I was as a teenager. Yeah, it just goes to show, doesn't it? The, the quality of coaching, the level of training and just their understanding clearly of the game and how to manipulate space and control the pitch. And both of these two teams happy at the moment. Referee just counting the numbers. It is confusing with these rotations, isn't it? I think it's very easy for these lads to not know who they're coming on, who they're coming off for. So, good work from the man in the middle there, checking that Langley only had 15. Of course, the RFU uh, at the sort of forefront, really, of sport for, for young athletes and grassroots, making sure they get a minimum game requirement, which is why typically in these younger age groups now you'll see players go off in the first quarter, bring somebody on for the middle half, and then back on again for the final quarter again. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Because you don't want to turn players away from it because they only get five minutes or something at the end of the game. We need people playing this game. We need young boys, young girls getting involved with rugby. So everyone knows the best one is being out there in the middle and playing. You don't just want to train and not play, so great work there. 
Big scrum again from Torquay. What a great skip from Donnelly. Good scrum half, keeping things moving. Marcus Cato in to clear that one out. Charge up this time from Jaden Day Tutu. Cato again. He's like a little wrecking ball, Cato. Not the tallest on the pitch, but he's he's throwing himself about and he always runs onto the ball with real ferocity. And it, he's obviously a bit smaller than some of the other players. I'm sure he will certainly grow, but maybe why Turkey have perhaps got a few more kilograms in the scrum, which certainly pays dividends, doesn't it? A little bit of a cagey start to the second half as well, carried on like the first ended. Um, I think this is going to be a tight game the whole way through, I think the, the players can sense that, so the nerves might come in a little bit earlier than they did in, in the first game we saw, because you get 10 points ahead in this game, I think you might struggle to, uh, to get that lead back, so I think both teams know any score, any try is huge, and maybe that's why we saw the penalty, maybe that's why we saw them go for goal earlier. You see the wind on the ball at the line out there through the middle. Again, Ryan Jones seems to be everywhere, kicking off the tee as well. Charge up this time. Took it. They couldn't quite get on the end of that. Again, another well-placed crossfield kick, in all fairness. They've certainly identified that crossfield as a real weapon for them, haven't they, They've got some tall outside backs, the likes of Nelson Martin, the likes of Iwowu. They, these boys are physically imposing, so they're probably taller than the counterparts in the outside channel. So even if it is a one-on-one, -on -one, they're backing themselves to get the ball. I think if they keep putting the ball there with that space, they will get one eventually. They just haven't quite got the bounce of the ball really yet. We've spoken about this game being cagey. What, what would the message be from the coaches or the captain for, for you at Amtill if you want to try and up the tempo and bring in some pace? I think in a game as cagey as this, you've got to just go. Oh, well, get Jaden Quashy. Quashy stepping inside now, just can't quite get away. Jones is there to offer support. Been lost forward and it's back with Torquay. Quashie just taking a bit of a battering, I think, there. Yeah, I think they unfortunately offside for knock on there. And as I said, to get the tempo up, if you've got a Jaden Quashie, get the ball in his hands. But unfortunately, we don't have a Jaden Quashie at Amtil. So um, I think the more, when it's cagey, the more you force it, almost the harder you try to make something happen, the less likely it is. So if we just go back to basics, I was in this scenario now, what would you do at this line out? Play one of your plays, one of your ones that you know in your sleep. Just get the ball in hand and get a little bit of rhythm because we saw only at one point in this game of either side strung five, six, seven phases and they've scored a try. So I just look to keep ball in hand, find a little bit of rhythm, just get into my patterns, get into my play and try and get, try and string little wins together, put back a positive up with another positive. It's very difficult as well to change a strong, slow tide to something that's short and fast because the game just doesn't want to turn, does it? Like you see there, Torquay caught behind the game. There was also almost an deception for Ryan Jones there. Just need to try and put positives together. We talk a lot in the teams I played in. One positive, two positive, three positive. Just put them together, positive after positive. Huge hit coming in. Charlie McCormack. Brown. Replacement scrum half for Torquay, can't find his way through. Well, they're going to need something of magic to get through here. The kick again to Quashi, that is not what you want if you're a Torquay defender. Half break through the tackle, he's held up at the moment. Oh dear, that is intelligent play from Torquay, not what Langley Park won. It's the second time we've seen that, isn't it, from uh, Torquay. I'd say that's something that they've obviously been coached to try those choke tackles, if you don't know what I mean by choke tackle, hold the player up, as he takes contact, don't let him get to floor, because if you hold him up and he can't get to floor, it's a maul that isn't going anywhere, as you see here with Torquay, you get the ball from the scrums, so we've seen them do that brilliantly twice, but I've got to say Scott, I think they're playing with fire, quick kicking to Jaden Kosh like that, I don't know how many more times they can kick him the ball right down his throat before he breaks that line and goes under the post, because he is looking dangerous on the counter attack. It's, it's not a great option for Langley, is it? I mean, they've got their own speedsters. 
you and Harvey and Fred Horn and they just want to try and give it to them and see what they can do Brown Jones through the middle the tall figure playing in the backs for Torquay and change of possession once again Langley have gotten it back and it is great great defence brilliant turnover from Brian Jones I said at the end of the first time found that probably one hitching the game um, and it's a brilliant turnover from uh, from the seven there not sure he'll back himself to go for post from here though Ryan Jones is I think is he throwing in at the line out as well I'm sure I've seen him do that standing in at scrum heart kicking for the corner kicking off the tee flying off the back of the line outs defensively he's an absolute menace at the moment he's absolutely nailed that he's got every inch out of that kick as well that's just dribbled over the touchline into the wind from the middle of the pitch making 15 meters like that that's a great game his timing at the breakdown as well one arm in the end there just putting the pressure on and that's all you need to do because they've got the penalty I'm going to say it again, from this line out I'd be looking to get the ball in Leon Nelson Martin's hands. If he saw what he could do in the first minute from broken play, when he comes from deep on a good angle, he is a hard man to stop. So if I was if I was Langley, I'd be looking to get the ball in his hands and get him running at pace here. At the set, driving more. Brian Jones at the back, Torquay throwing the bodies in now and have just about slowed this one down. It's a great maul, they've, they've, they've taken about, oh it's a great maul, sorry it got even better as I was speaking there, they've made it all the way to the 22, that's a good 20 metre gain from that maul there for Langley. But if they've got their eyes up, Jones probably could have been at the try line and here they go, out wide, McCormack cutting in on his own, opts not to give it to Nelson Martin. De Tutu now cutting through with the leggings on. Interesting tactic. Torquay seems to be going for that choke tackle all the time, don't they? Yeah, and they're getting good pay out of it now. The turnover comes actually on the floor. There's a knock on the floor as the ball carrier got himself there. But you see, as soon as one man goes in, there's two, three there straight away from Torquay holding him up. And as an attacker, it's the worst feeling when you feel yourself picked up and manhandled like that and you can't get the floor. It is a hideous feeling. But it comes to the risks if you can get the ball away and you've sucked three defenders in, going for that choke tackle, then there's got to be space elsewhere. Back with Torquay, Dylan Brown at scrum half, just on the edge of the 22. Nice position to be in, plenty of space on this pitch at six ways as well. And they come for the kick, it's going to go over the head of Simeon Iwowu. And Simeon Iwowu stepping off his right, can he pin his ears back? Good tackle coming in. Well he had a bit of space. I thought he might just be able to go all the way. When he stepped there, it was a brilliant step off his right foot back to the outside. I thought he was gone down here right in front of us. We had a great view of it. I thought he was gone. I didn't quite catch who made the cover tackle, but it was a brilliant one because to say it's try saving is an understatement. And it's a finely poised game, this. And as I said earlier, one try could win it. So that is a huge moment in the game for Torquay. Here they come, Brown kicking it again, big spiral off his left boot, where's that been all game? Look at the bounce on that, 50-22 imminently and it is, wow, huge 50-22. You won't see one as good as that in the Premiership I don't think. You will not see a better kick than that all weekend, whether you're watching Men's Premiership, Men's Championship, Women's Premiership, whether you're watching the Six Nations next week. He's gone almost from inside his own 22 to about 10 metres out and we're going to get the replay here. It is inside his own 22. It's a 22-22. That is literally one of the most mind-blowing kicks I think you will ever see, and all from a 14, 15-year-old boy. Glyn Jones, take a bow. Let's see if Torquay can capitalise on that moment of magic there. That's, that's maybe the most special moment we've seen today. That's, that's one of the greatest kicks I've ever seen, genuinely. I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless because it, it was even better on replay mind-blowing and they have got the penalty as well inside the 22 and that is where the 50-22 rule comes in so good the, the law of 50-22 it is marvellous genius really
So they got the penalty there for illegally bringing the mall down. If I was talking, I'd go to the corner and mall again. They're not, they're going to tap and play, but I would have taken another mall. But I am a little biased Merch. towards malls. To not, not keep it in his hands. He's got three or four in front of him. All red shirts around the ball. Picking and going and Malone, who's had a great half since he's been on. And that is a try. Torquay bundling their way over. And the man that gets the try, Ocean Malone. He's very happy, isn't he, Ocean Malone? He's a big, strong boy. And when he got you shook, you could see when he went to go for that pick and go from five metres out, the players around him got excited. They knew that was try time. He's a big boy. He's got W on his back. He's got the red scrum hat. He saw the space. Look at the number of Langley Park shirts in front of him. Absolute bulldozer to get over. It's a great finish, great leg drive, and that momentum swing, that's huge now to Torquay. Um, but it all comes from that 50-22. Glyn Jones, that was, I'm, I'm going to be talking about that for ages. I'll be telling people, I was watching Schoolboy Rugby the other day, doing his commentary, and it was the greatest kick I've ever seen. A 22-22, that has set up that try. And like you said, Scott, that's the beauty of this new law. You get rewarded for good kicking like that. Last year, that would have been a line, it would have still been a great kick, but a line out to Langley there. Instead, line out to Torquay, penalty, try. I almost want to put that on my own showreel. Because it was that good. Kick off the tee. Through the uprights, that was Josh Knott. And Josh Knott gets the conversion. And for the first time in this game, Torquay are in front. In 30 years' time, Glyn Jones' kids were going, Dad, you did not do that at six ways. And he's going to dig out the footage and show them. Massive, massive Glyn Jones fans here in the commentary box. Give we're me not, a, give we're me not allowed to have favourites, but if we did, it would be Glyn Jones right now. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of a tight spiral kick. Here they go again, Torquay. Into the final quarter now. Still lots of rugby left to play. Langley Park, who are, have got so many killer threats across the pitch. Just need to get the ball in hand a bit more, don't they? Yeah, they just need to not panic. Nothing's changed for Langley. Just because they're now five points down, just keep playing. They haven't had much ball this half. Get the ball, get some territory. You've got the attacking weapons to go and score the points to win this game. They need a bit of structure and a bit of... Uh, well, more of a platform, don't they? They just haven't controlled possession enough. Yeah, they need that platform to get those strike runners on the ball. I'm talking the Quashies, the Nelson Martins, the Iwowos of this world. These boys are hard to put down. We've seen through the game. When they've had the ball in hand, Torquay have struggled to deal with them. So they've just got to find that platform, whether it's set piece, whether it's scrum, whether it's this line-up we're about to watch, or whether it's broken play. They need to get the ball in those lads' hands. Well, Langley here with a line out on the 22. And discussions, I'm sure, would have been had about what to do. We've not seen them lift in this uh, match yet, but they've set up a couple of nice driving moors with Brian Jones just teeing himself up at the back. Here it comes again. Good set. Great body height. Look how low Langley Park are. That makes them hard to stop. Tokyo doing a good job. They've had to commit numbers to do it. Great ball out wide. Loop around. Into the hands of Nelson Martin for the first time in this second half. 17 minutes to get him the ball. Just couldn't quite get his timing, so he couldn't run on to that. Koshi juggling it a bit. To a Wowo. He's on his own and. Langley Park almost losing possession, but they do get the penalty. It's Henry Gilbert that's penalised. Torquay's discipline let them down a little bit here. They're, they're looking quite comfortable in defence. Langley Park made no, no, uh, no ground there. They tackled those big strike runs I was talking about. But they're a little bit eager to get the ball back. It's just cost them. And now Langley, of course, it's that man, Ryan Jones, kicking them to the corner. And I imagine they'll try and set up that dangerous mall again here and try and put themselves in a position to score a try. Fascinating game this, Scott. It's a lot different to that first game we watched, but it's equally as fascinating as we go into the last 12, 13 minutes. You wouldn't want to call it, which is our job, unfortunately. 
literally our job to come here and call it. It is, uh, it's like chess, isn't it? I'm almost hanging out of the commentary box here to get there. In the one corner, we can't see fully. I feel like I need to be strapped in. I'm not sure health and safety enjoy the position I'm in currently, but this is what I'll do to watch malls. Well, I'm staying well inside the commentary box so I don't get hit by the ball because I almost did at the end of that first game. Here they go. Here is that driving ball. Ryan Jones peeling off around the fringes. Just added a bit of tempo and slowly but surely this game has found some tempo. McCormack couldn't get the ball away. Nelson coming in. Great clear out from the outside centre. Ten Whoa. Brilliant. The height he got for that clear out was outstanding. Been spilled. It's picked up and Torquay have it. They have numbers on that far touch line. Big boot. Straight into touch, and that is a great way to clear your line. Great defence from Torquay there. We saw with the first try for Sandbach in the first game what line speed can do and spill the ball, and that's exactly what they've done there. Great spacings gives them a chance to go and get these Langley attackers and um, just putting that pressure on. And it doesn't matter how good you are when you're under pressure, when you're rushed, you're going to spill the ball. must be frustrating for the outside backs in this game they've had opportunities but just not enough because it's so fractious and frantic and combative it's a it's a tough old game out there my lack of pace is one reason but the other reason I couldn't be an outside back is I just have to be involved they have, they have to watch a lot don't they it must yeah. be infuriating good ball out from Donnelly here it comes Nelson Martin He's already got one in this game. Great cover tackle from Fred Horn. Again, Fred Horn on Nelson, Ryan Nelson Martin. He saved a try, but we've said it all game. Get it in that man's hands. He is dangerous. It's only the second time in this second half that he's had the ball. Now they look to move it wide. McCormack. Whoa, just needed to drift out wide and get into the five meter channel there. So McCormack kept his hands on the ball. It was lost forward in the end. And a good period of play and a good attack from Torquay comes to the end. Yeah, the, the game just burst into life again, didn't it? Out of nowhere, both teams there. See, we see the replay here. It's a great tackle. And actually, it's an equally great tackle here because you can't see on your screen. If he breaks that tackle there, who is that? If he breaks his tackle, Henry Merch, he's off. He's off. There is no one in backfield. So we almost saw two try saving tackles in five seconds there. Brilliant from both sides, but. I just feel there's another try in this game. I don't think we're done yet. Into the final 10 minutes. Jacob Amoya back on for the last section of this game at scrum half. I think the Langley Park side heard me say Torquay were on top at scrum and their front row have taken some insult to that. That was a huge shove at the scrum from Langley Park there. It's our dynamo Marcus Cato at hooker for Langley Park. Don't tell front rowers their scrum's not going well. They will take it personally. The, um, I don't know what's what set a fire under Langley Park, but that was a huge shove. Let's see if they can do it again now. Good shove. Torquay. Oh, Glyn Jones gets the spiral on it, doesn't connect as well, but Fred Horn has the ball, cuts inside, gets the offload away, here comes Josh Knott. Wow, that must have been millimetres away from being flat. That is directly in line with me, I'm sure we'll see a replay, but oh, the eye, it looked, it looked flat to me, Scott. Well, on first glance, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. Oh, on the replay, I'm struggling to see that that's forward as well. That's a big call. Now, the ref's a lot closer than we are. I'm sure he had a better view, but that is a huge call because that, that looked like a try if that had been allowed to go. Well, the pass was straight down the barrel of that gun, and I didn't even glance at it thinking it was anything but legal. Well, again, another Glyn Jones kick. Again, another Fred Horn break. Torquay edging their way closer to the final against Hitchin at Twickenham. Langley Park chasing. McCormack doing well to slide in and collect that loose ball. Great counter-ruck. Oh, 
they've just come in the side now they've got a little bit here I thought it was a great counter rug but the refs just seen one of the players come in the side and after a lot of pressure from the talkie defence Langley Park will clear the lines here Langley again Fred uh, Ryan Jones taking the quick tap but then they kick it anyway what's the point when they've got the space and they've got the ball Iwowo ooh, collects it and runs into touch maybe a little bit of inexperience maybe a little bit of naivety and the pressure the pressure will do funny things we explained in the first game if you're gonna kick you may as well do it from the penalty because if it goes out you get the ball whereas as we see here that ball's dribbled out and it's now a talky ball um, if this is this is a tense last five or ten now Scott if there is a team you've seen play all year that didn't need to kick in this game it was probably probably Langley Park because they have good kicking Ryan Jones could kick anything but they've got such speed and such back attack that they don't need it. That Glyn Jones left boot again. Is this an... Oh, the bounce I'm doing. But that's ball in hand with um, Nelson Martin and the ball in the boot of Glyn Jones are the two most dangerous things on this pitch. Fred Horn has absolutely pickpocketed Quashy there. That was another great Fred Horn tackle. He's been very, very impressed with young Fred Horn on that left wing. Very solid player. Having the game of his life. Now Torquay come. Charging forward. Merch with the break. Carried well all day, Merch. Into the hands of Harvey. Steps back inside a woe. Does well to tackle him. Ryan Nelson Mark with a brilliant turnover in the wide channel there. Great in attack and in defence. Just what you need. It's been a, a thread in both games, these under-15 semi-finals. Both teams have attacked the defensive breakdown hard, whether that's Jacqueline, whether that's Carroll. They obviously do a lot of work, and it's credit to the coaches, because we haven't seen many penalties given away as well. They've, they've chosen their moments well, and they've been very good at it. And I don't think there's been a single easy rock for either side in either game. Well, Langley Park, we know they can go from deep. Just the way they're setting up this line, you get a sense that perhaps they're going to try and run this. Reset scrum coming. Yeah, if, if they are kicking, it's a very good fake they're doing because the 12-13 uh, are set deep. They're not set to chase the kick, they're set to run. And the drums just building the tension here at six ways. Sun has started to shine down on us. I think you could probably describe this game as one for the purists, but we are set up in the final four minutes here with an absolute blockbuster finish. This is what you want from semi-final rugby. It's been a very good second 30, hasn't it? Yeah, very, very good. A big improvement on the first. Now some mind charging through with the bend. Here he goes. Puts it into one hand, back into two, back into one, off his right foot. The legs will be tightening up, but he's still going. The offload just needed to come. Of course, of course it's Fred Horn who's made the try saving tackle on Nelson Martin. It has been the story of the day. A great battle between those two players. Now they look to move it wide. McCormack through the hands to Jackson. Awoo, Awoo carving in. Awoo is going to go through for a score. And Langley Park have levelled it with three minutes to play. And the conversion is going to be oh so important here at Six Ways. This is going to be the biggest kick of young Ryan Jones' life, I imagine. But what, what a break from Ryan, um, Leon Nelson Martin. Sorry, I called him Ryan earlier, getting very excited, getting mixed up with Ryan Jones. He just broke the first tackle and he went. Maybe could have moved it on a two-on-one when Fred Horn made the tackle, but a brilliant hat tackle from Fred Horn. And 12-all with two to go and the kick to come. This is, this is proper knockout rugby. The pass from Fraser Jackson to Simeon Iwowu, his step off the left boot, we said earlier he may well have had a score, but that time he did the business and Langley Park have levelled the scoring, two minutes from time. Iwowu here getting his crowd going, bring the noisy shouts at them, this is a huge kick for young Ryan Jones. Well. Ryan Jones, number seven for Langley Park, is that uh, 
We've already got one conversion from one try in this game. He's kicked for touch beautifully. The ball wobbling just ever so slightly on that tee. Can he send Langley Park to Twickenham in the final? No. The game will continue. Oh, this is tense. This is tense, Scott. How are your nerves, gents? Langley Park, Torquay Boys Grammar, how are your nerves? This is, this is where it counts, rugby player. This is, you know, one piece of magic or unfortunately one error could win or cost you the game here. So, there'll be who holds their nerve and who blinks first. Whoa, the try scorer back with the ball in one hand. He would need something to go the length here. Back on the field, Connor Ryan wearing number three once again. Iwoa at scrum half now. Good hot stepping from Killian Tuki. The drama here at six ways. That's a brilliant carry. He needs to get to floor now though. Well done. It's the national schools under 15 Vars semi-final two. The winner of which will head to Twickenham in just a few weeks time. We are at the death. The clock on our screen is in the red. It is all level, 12 all. McCormack to Leon, Nelson, Martin out to Quashi, and Quashi has the wheels. Scorching down the right wing, off his left foot with the fan. Can he go the whole way? What an incredible tackle. My word. Torquay fighting at the death. They've got to be careful here, Torquay, because we've already seen um, Ryan Jones will back himself to kick a penalty. Through the middle, Fraser Jackson isolated a bit. Iwowu coming in, and I think Torquay have got it. Yes, they have. That is a huge turnover. But what about that tackle when Jaden Quashi went through? For all the world, I would have put my mortgage on that being a try. An unbelievable try saving tackle. The break from Quashi was unbelievable. There is nothing more he could have done. It was just a marvellous tackle to stop him dead. You've got to say, Leon Nelson Martin as well, when you've had a game like he has, you would have back, made back yourself to carry, but it was great timing on the pass. Huge unselfishness, the absolute right option, because of course, Fred Horn was there to tackle him. Of course he was. Um, and yeah, I, this is after, after 55 minutes of and not the most exciting game in the world, we have got five minutes of absolute blockbuster here. Off the top with Prince looking to move it out wide. Maybe it's on for Torquay here. That pass has gone forward. Fred Horn is going to pick up the loose ball. Well, I think the referee's saying play on. Horn is still with it. Now it's gone forward, and that is the full time whistle. And you will notice it has gone very very quiet because I don't think anybody quite has any idea what's going on next when I, I when I had my wheat this morning I didn't think to check what happened when it was a draw I won't lie I'll be honest I've never seen it happen I'm not sure the referees know either everyone's doing a bit of looking around here well you you just know that there was a deep bit of silence and they're just asking uh, Someone's coming on with the clipboard. Head of the rules. Someone's coming on with the clipboard. They'll know what's happening. Well, I think they're just trying to confirm what's going to happen. Well, hang on. Just a moment. And I think... So... It looks like Torquay are the winners. It's the away team goes through. Well, you could not split them, could you? That, that seems incredibly tough. Now, I'm not questioning the rules of anyone here today at all, but when the, it's being played at a neutral ground, 
for the away team to go through seems incredibly tough and that's, that is cruel for Langley Park. You've got to feel for them enormously. Let's, let's just uh, take a moment to appreciate the fact that you could not separate them. Two tries apiece, one conversion each. Both have scored marvellous tries in the game and the next simplest way to split the teams was due to Torquay being classed as the away team here. Well, this was Glyn Jones' marvellous kick. Almost worth winning the game just for that, purely for that. They scored a try off the back of this. Yeah, that is absolutely my moment of the day so far. Even more on the trick play in the first game that I was raving about because that led to this brilliant finish, brilliant pick and go, but it all came from that 50-22, that huge left boot with that tight spiral, winning that brilliant field position for Torquay. Well, it was from the Glyn Jones 22-22. They won a penalty off the resulting line -out. The ball came along from the scrum and then they got this try. Ocean Malone, wonderful. Their second try of the game to put them 12 points to seven in front. This though, three minutes from time, Simeon Owowo with the score into the corner. Little did they know that it would count for so very little in the end. It's a brilliant finish there from Awo, that little left foot step back inside, just uh, absolutely wrong foot defender. And I think we had such a cagey game because it was two brilliant sides cancelling each other out. Heartbreaking for Langley, exhilarating for Torquay, and what a final that Torquay Hitchin game will be. Well, it is going to be a belter at Twickenham in a few weeks' time. Final score here from the second RFU National Under-15 Vars semi-final. Langley Park 12, Torquay Boys Grammar School 12, but it is Torquay that progress through to the final on away team rules. A marvellous finish. And we'll be back with our third game of the day very shortly. Talk to you then.
Well, welcome back. Uh, first of two under 18 Vars semi finals, the first of which is up next, and it is Ipswich taking on Mount St. Mary's College. Well, the sun is shining down on six ways now. We've had two cracking games. One which was decided in a bit of a cruel fate, really, in the end, on the uh, sort of away team rules. If it was down to tries, then points, and all sorts of stuff, but it came down to the away team rules. So, an amazing win in the end. But this is the first of the uh, two under 18 semi finals we have today. Big games in prospect here, Charlie. Yeah, I think um, we'll see a step up potentially in the physicality of the uh, of the games here, with them being 18 years old and not 15. Just seeing Mount St Mary's there huddled under their post, their pre-game rituals. They come to the halfway and Ipswich go into their huddle just behind the 10 metre line. This is huge for these boys. This will be some of them the, the upper sick. This will be their last year playing for their school, so this will mean a lot to them getting to the final. Hopefully, um, yeah, there'll be a lot of passion, a lot of heart in this game as we approach kickoff, It looks like Mount St Mary's playing from right to left as you see the screen are going to be kicking us off here. Away they go. And Ipswich have done well from the kickoff to uh, give the ball back to St Mary's. Started off with the ref T not quite right in his whistle there. Let's hope he's using an Acme Thunderer because everyone knows any referee worth his salt will be using an Acme. The only, the only whistle in town. And that's my first uh, ever bit of whistle knowledge, to be honest with you. So I have very little going on in my life, as you can probably imagine, with me knowing about whistles like that. Mount on the edge of the 22. Breaking forward, it's picked up, but uh, the loose ball by Ipswich. Harrison K. And Ipswich get the ball back. As good as those first two games we saw were, and they were brilliant. I think even from the opening exchange here, you can see this three years of development from 15 to 18 in young men is huge, isn't it? The, the physicality, the speed of which this game is being played already is through the roof compared to our first two semi-finals. It's going to be a line-out to Ipswich just inside the Mount half. And the first chance to see uh, Harry Chapman. Good lift, but it's uh, gone back with Mount. A missed pick up, a hacked across the pitch, and we're going to come back for a scrum. Mount St. Mary's is my favourite kit of the day so far. It's I, like, I like a good hoop. Not just a two tone, but a tri tone. And they've gone for two different shades of blue. It's, it, it, it's a thing of beauty, that kit. It really is quite pleasing to the eye, isn't it? Well, first chance to really see these two teams in the scrum. It's a big contest, a bit of rotation in there. I think Matt are going to get this one back, though. Break through the middle. Charlish coming through. Well, it went forward, and we're going to have another scrum on halfway. Charlie Davis has run a brilliant line there, the 12, off the shoulder of Andrew Charlish's 10. Just a, just a good tackle, slowing Charlish has meant he just has missed time the run and is just forward. But it looks like a dangerous axis there at the 10-12 position for Mount St Mary's. And they took that ball on the front foot. There was no waiting to let anyone else put the impetus on it. The 10, Charlish took it on the front foot, took it to the line, and that could be dangerous throughout the rest of the game, that offloading game he's clearly got. Theo Huber, scrum half today for Ipswich, gets it away to Fell Clark and Noah Woodhouse has to bury his head deep and chuck it forward. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Hubert again gets it away and keeping the tempo high. They've got the penalty as well, Ipswich. Thinking about taking it quick, but surely they'll kick for the corner from here. I'll tell you one thing that is for certain. We will not see anyone with a kick as big as Glyn Jones is today. Absolutely not. I'll be speaking about that for you. If you didn't, if you didn't join us earlier on the stream of the 15s games, you missed two crackers, but you missed one of the finest kicks you'll ever see. And it's worth trying to find Glyn Jones' kick from earlier. A brilliant 50-22. But let's see what Ipswich have, the first real entry into any attacking threat of either side here. Let's see what they can mount in the Mount St. Mary's 22. Oh, not straight, says our referee in Mount St. Mary's College. Get the ball back. It's going to be a scrum to them just inside the 22. So you get a feeling there is a lot of tempo in this game, even though not much has happened in the opening five minutes. There's a... There's a good energy about it. The sun's out and it's semi-final day. Yeah, both teams clearly, it means a lot to us to say, and some of these boys that could be their last game for school if they lose today. So it's a huge moment for them and you can see there's that energy and tempo in the game. And I think once they've settled in, I think we're in for a pretty good game here. We're just, we're just feeling each other out in these opening stages. Craig Cameron. Out to Andrew Charlish, who kicks it away, the mount fly half, straight down the barrel of Kit Fell Clark and Theo Huber tries to go forward with this one. Finally Ipswich have some numbers behind the ball. Wilkinson. Ferocious tackle. Looping pass out wide to Caleb, uh, to Oliver King and King scorching forward, he was surely in touch the Assistant referees flag is up, but he looks like a bundle of joy when he gets going, doesn't he, Oliver King? He, on the build of him, he he reminds me a lot of a former teammate of mine, Paolo Dogwu, who plays 13 for uh, Watts. Not the tallest, but you look at the size of his legs and he's square in the shoulders. I think he'll be a hard man to stop and just from that break, you can see how quick he is. So I'd be looking to get the ball on the outside chance to him and one-on-one -on -one tackles, I think he's going to be a hard man to stop. Great line out steal for Ipswich. Charging forward. James Wilkinson. Harrison Kay now. Front row getting through quite a bit of work early on in this game. Now Woodhouse. Out wide Woodhouse still going. Does well to keep the ball in one arm as he goes to ground. Matt battling on the deck and Ipswich have got the ball back. Again, a great counter rook from Ipswich there, but just unfortunately a knock on as one of their players tried to pick the ball up. But the battle on the game line is ferocious. There's the, the intensity in the carries, the ferocity in the hits. We can, we, we're good five ten meters up here we can hear the physicality from the pitch there's going to be some sore bodies tomorrow already and we're only we're only six minutes in it was which have had a sustained bit of pressure here in the 40 and inwards of, uh, of Mount St Mary's they'll be looking to hopefully come away with some points uh, it's a big defensive effort needed from Mount St Mary's to keep them out though Huber gets it away Woodhouse fronts up the attack and here comes Cripps Cripps on the diagonal line well tackled Camillo coming in on the hit Ali Mehta forwards coming in for support for Ipswich great take by Harrison Kay marvellous hands going sideways now and Mount just on the counter they get the penalty though, Ipswich. Once again, they're going to keep marching forward. It's taken quickly. Theo Huber out wide into the hands of his number eight, Albert Seville. Chapman on the carry and Huber looking to get some support from his forward here. Bolton Smith coming through. Penalty to Mount. That's a huge turnover. Now the penalties for in the side, but he had to come in the side because of the jackal threat from Mount St Mary's and the way that attack was building, you, it, it seemed, it just seemed a foregone conclusion that Ipswich were going to score there. So that is a huge turnover. 
marvellous right on their line so far in this game it's been all about Ipswich but Man showing some good defensive effort in these early exchanges it was a beautiful start play from Ipswich with this scrum just down in front on the 10 metre line they very cleverly used the threat of Oliver King on the hard line we've seen what he could do he dragged two defenders in they played out the back and then they made a good 20 yards on the 3 on 2 on the edge maybe could have executed a little better and scored but if I was Ipswich College I'd be looking to take those uh, those start plays again and again because they're dangerous Now with the driving more big hits coming in. James Wilkinson on the hit. Craig Cameron with a, a box kick that pretty much landed on the same spot he took it from. Not too often you see that happen and Cameron back with the ball will be wanting a bit more success this time. Finds a forward and it's all of the Barker that carries on with. Now, not found any creaking holes in this Ipswich defence just yet. Harrison K boshing one off. Now Flynn Jones just finds another Harrison K tackle. Good patience at the moment. Teddy Gearing with a carry of tight. As you said earlier, the front rows of both teams incredibly busy so far. Good skipping from Chapman. Gets the ball away and it's still with Ipswich Wilkinson this time. Trying to mount an attack on the edge of the 22. K, what a player he, he looks to be. And we're going to come back from the advantage for the knock on. Again, another advantage that seemed to come for a while. I've forgotten we were playing advantage for a second. That's a long knock on advantage. You see, penalty advantage go along, but that is a long one for a knock on. Um, but as long as the ref consists with that through the game, there'll be no complaints. Um, and never mind referees playing long advantages or refing in a certain manner as long as they're consistent throughout the game. I think as a player, especially as a captain, I've really had to work on how I speak to referees at times because you've got to be respectful, of course. Um, it is frustrating when refs seem to change their interpretation of laws throughout a game. So as long as he's that consistent with the value throughout the game, there'll be no complaints, I'm sure, from any of the players. Theo Huber. Good ball. Looping out wide into the hands of Griffith. Griffith charging down the wing and surely Griffith will score. What a ball from Eduardo Tadero. And that is a lovely finish from Harry Griffith for Ipswich. And their attack in the first 11 minutes has been rewarded with a try. I'll be surprised if we see a better pass than that all day. The timing, the execution, look at this. Takes it and then loops over the top. Griffith doesn't have to break stride, runs onto it and then it's a brilliant finish, good dive. If he doesn't dive in there, he's going to get tackled into touch, but just one more time. Oh, that is beautiful. Well, Eduardo Tadero playing at fly half. It's just beautifully passed that ball. Big kick here. This is a tough kick from the touchline for the conversion. So let's see how he goes. We've seen some good kicks already today. I've been very impressed across the board with how the kicking has gone. That's a brilliant strike, but just, just snuck the wrong side of the post. But that was long sustained pressure from Ipswich College there, and it probably, Ipswich School, sorry, and it probably did deserve a try. But we'll see how Mount St. Mary's come back. Uh, it's been a Recurrent theme throughout the game, the teams have struggled to exit from the kickoff after scoring a try six. We'll see if that continues now with Ipswich School. Holcroft and it's out to Omofa Ousu who's just being called back it's good attack at the moment 
St Mary's College pinned back in their own half in this game through the middle what a line that is Charlie Davis on the hard line still going forward a good 15 metres from the mount inside centre to Upton and Upton has a little dart tries to find a hole around this Ipswich team Eaton Collins now it's Mayor what an offload into the hands of Nisbet Hadaway and Hadaway on the charge out wide into the hands of Zachary Matthews who's going to get his second score of this half and this is a fine start from Ipswich School here at Six Ways. Is there a finer sight in all of rugby than big men in space? Take a bow, Thomas White and Lucas, Lucas Nisbet Hasaway. What a brilliant, brilliant piece of play. Watch here. Look at this, the time of the pass again. Dummy inside, gives it outside. Now, us from five forwards, we don't get in space like that often. The easy thing for Lucas to do there would have been just to tuck it and carry, but he sees it's a two on one, he sees that his man outside is the one to give the ball to, and that's a brilliant bit of play. Lovely, lovely offload from Thomas White before. You love to see front rowers interlinking, intertwining like that, and a brilliant try for Ipswich School. Well, Nisbet Hadaway had options, didn't he? Looked left, looked right, drew the man. And sometimes that's harder. Sometimes having options is harder because when you've got more than one option, it can confuse you, you don't do and you choose the wrong one. But he's, he did a brilliant job and another tough conversion for the for the uh, for the two points here. Absolutely nails it this time, slots it over, a brilliant conversion there, and suddenly Ipswich have extended their lead to 12-0 and are very much in the ascendancy here after 16 minutes. Mount St Mary's had good pressure there, but one turnover, Ipswich moved the ball well, and it was a brilliant try. Ipswich seems full of confidence here, they look to run it out. Oh, another great offload in the wide channels, but it's fumbled, unfortunately. But Ipswich have really got their tails up here. They really feel full of confidence the way they've started this game. And can you blame them? Two brilliant tries. They're offloading the ball well. They're moving the ball well. And you look at it here. If this one goes to hand, I think they could be in again. So why would you not go for that offload? They're full of confidence. And look at the man again, Lucas Nisbet Hadaway in the five-meter channel. He has popped up all over the park in this opening quarter. Both teams' front rows have been so busy. It's, when I was growing up, front rows scrummed. That's what they did. Now you look at the influence of the Carl Sinclair's Ellis Genji of this world. They, the front rows do more than that now. They want the ball in hand. They, they yes, scrums their bread and butter, more lifting and lights, but they want that ball in hand. They want to run. They want to carry. And you're seeing that influence all the way down at schoolboy rugby. And this Ipswich front row can definitely scrum as well after that. A real, real dominant performance so far from the front row of Ipswich School. Does it get frustrating for you forwards reset scrums? Yes, probably not as frustrating as it does for backs, but yes, it does. The worst ones in training. 
on Tuesday units when the front rows are messing about with each other and having a bit of a contest and then you're in the second you're like lads I just want to tick a box here get the pushing done I want to go to line out some balls that I actually enjoy oh, good set through to Davies Charlish now it comes to Holcroft Holcroft with the grubber through and they are chasing hard backwards here Olafioye he's got a bit of space hasn't he and can he find a gap gets the offload away this time Briggs through the middle what a line that is Pat Patricka to Mount St Mary's College. You don't see fly offs getting jack of penalties all that often. Great turn of Manchester charge just right in front of us. Brilliant technique, nice and low, and Ipswich just could not move him. Well, he's straight with the kick into touch as well. It's a good meet again from Mount St Mary's. 35 each way, remember, in the under 18s. The winner of this game will head to Twickenham in a few weeks time for the National Schools Files final and it's a great take off the top as well great pace in that line out they came in even though it was marked because Mount St Mary's went so quick it was just couldn't get near it and then a great more and they have penalty advantage for being taken down illegally Briggs if I was Mount St Mary's here for this penalty I'd kick it to the corner and go same again there's a I talk a lot when I play about flow on effect up front, one penalty at Maul or Scrum to another penalty at set piece. You just get on top of that momentum, it's the flow on effect you can have. As the Ipswich, uh, the Ipswich School sorry, pack now will know the Mount are on top at Maul. If they go again now that's two in a row and it really does get you down. So this is a huge moment, just not now for the points potential but the rest of this game if Mount St Mary's can get on top at Maul. It's a great take, they're set good body height they just need to stay square at the front now stay square at the front and this should go over Manson Mary's driving on off the top we love a driving mall up here in the commentary box it's at the back Crape has got it charging forward have they got the moves I think Ipswich School have done really well to just stop that there really good mall defence still with Manson Mary's college pummeling on this Ipswich try line they've got to try and get around the fringes this time they have the referee's whistle blows his arms in the air and Mount St Mary's have got to try to get back in with a score they needed that Mount St Mary's that was their first meaningful attack and they needed to get some points from it well this the uh, final charge over the line plenty of bodies not quite sure who went over then we give that try to the pack that's one for everyone involved it went more more pick and go we'll share an eighth of that each they say well great from man St Mary's College to try and level the scores they need another conversion and a try we shall see we've just got a bit of an injury on the try line as you can see one of the uh, Mount St Mary's forwards I'm not quite sure who that is maybe uh, Oliver Barker just taking a bit of a hit we think uh, in the act of scoring or as part of that pack effort looked in a bit of discomfort just going through typical protocol and Charlie it's uh, Ipswich very strong opening to this game but Mount now they've managed to get some possession and keep within the game it's been quite controlled from them yeah absolutely and Ipswich kind of blew us away a little bit at the start the, those front row forwards with their ball carrying their offloading and a bit of dominance at scrum but huge huge few moments there for the Mount St Mary's pack as they've wrestled back a little bit of dominance at line out and mall and as you see it's good to see the uh, number eight for Mount St Mary's College that's Flynn, Flynn Jones back to his feet and all good after the try has been scored but I think 
for the neutral, for the good of the game, a Mount St. Mary's College try was huge there because it really brings them back into it now. They'll take huge confidence from that. And um, it was just college, it was just school, sorry, if they'd, um, if they'd scored the next try, could have maybe run away with it. But it's good to see Mount St. Mary's come back into the game. And I think we're 23 minutes in. I think we've got a real ding dong of a contest on our hands here. Great kick from Charles there, straight through the middle of the post and now at 12-7 for all the dominance Ipswich have had, it's a good score for Mount St Mary's, they've had one shot, scored one try, ruthless in that red zone, it's, it's finally poised this game as we are coming into the last 10-12 minutes of this first half. Great take there under the high ball and a good carry as Mount St Mary's College get back on the front foot. Good box kick turning the back three of Ipswich School and that's a great exit. You're happy with that outcome if you're Mount St Mary's as long as you make your tackle here. Well here they come that pass into the hands of Rayfield just too difficult for him to take and it's going to be Mount that get the ball back at the scrum and that is what you want as soon as you've scored to put the pressure back on the opposition and Mount now in a good place once more. If you've been with us throughout the day you'll have heard me say a few times that it's so important to get in a good exit after you've scored a try from that kickoff. and a lot of the time the team today haven't managed it but Mount St Mary's College there with a brilliant exit and a brilliant outcome as they've got the ball in a dangerous position here to mount, mount another attack. Cameron popping that ball into the hands of Davies and here they go Davies still storming for in Davies is in under the post and surely now Mount St Mary's College will take the lead for the first time in this contest what a brilliant brilliant offload on the game line there I said earlier we've seen Mount St Mary's try this they're backing themselves one on one to beat their defender get their hands through and get the offload away we see it here look at that hand around the back and then a missed tackle and a great finish but a brilliant offload it, it's definitely a tactic of Mount St Mary's College trying to get one on one tackles take the defender to an edge free the hands and flood the channel which is exactly what they do there and out of nowhere Mount St Mary's College have the lead Ipswich 12, Mount St Mary's College now up to 14, taking the lead for the first time in this game. It's really interesting as well with their backs play that uh, their number 13, Matt Gold, stepping in at first receiver so often, just trying to work that double access and it's certainly paying dividends for the Mount St Mary's at the moment. It seems that star play they have. As you say, Matt Gould, a first receiver, Charlie Davis comes hard. They've got the option to pull out the back, and then you've got your best ball player, and Andrew Charlish, out the back to pull the strings to your back three. So, as a starter player, that is multifaceted of why that's dangerous. Very good take the kickoff, and again, good leg drive post contact from Mount St. Mary's. Well, look at this here, Dave Amofo, Uisu just trying to get the steal on the counter, doesn't quite manage it. And this is a challenging take, and oh, Connor Holcroft, not quite this time. Huge momentum shift here. Twice, Mount St Mary's have scored, and then they've got the ball back within 60 seconds in the Ipswich half. This is massive. Ipswich just need to calm down, go back to what was working well from the first 20 minutes or so, here, big defensive set here, keep Mount St Mary's at bay, get the ball back and start marching their way down pitch. They just don't need to panic. Momentum swings are funny things in sport, especially in rugby, and it, when you lose it, when you're on the wrong side, it's hard to get it back. So deep breath for Ipswich School and just back to basics. Well, we're approaching uh, half-time. 
and Mount St. Mary's definitely have the edge right now. It's a strong start from Ipswich. We've not really seen them press into the half for the last uh, quarter of the game. But look at this for a nudge in the scrub. Gould out to Charlish. A lovely diagonal grubber once again, putting the pressure on. I think that may well have come off an Ipswich hand. I think, I think it hits it just as it went into touch. The, the touch has just given it to uh, two Ipswich in front. But as you say, that's the exact same starter, but pulled out the back this time. And Charlish, as you see, the kick goes through. He can pass, he can kick. It's multi multifunctional options out the back with your fly half who's got all the strings to his bow. Driving more from Ipswich. Tocker just being patient, but it was too much from Mount St Mary's, and they're going to have the ball back here. It's a good attacking position, just on the edge of the 22. You think they might just have one eye on getting an extra score ahead of half time, puts them in a promising position coming into the break and. Yeah, clever from Mount St Mary's, the mall defence there. They've not engaged the mall, which means that um, as soon as Ipswich move that ball to the back, as you will, they've got to use it straight away, otherwise it's an um, accidental offside and illegal. They don't use the ball, they carry on mauling. Ref has to give accidental offside, and now Mount St Mary's have a very, very dangerous threat. Again, we see Gould up first receiver, we see Davis off his shoulder, Charles out the back. There's just so many options to this start of play, we're going to see which one they take now. Away they go. Gould cutting in off his right. Didn't fancy getting the pass away. Now, Charlish again with a kick deep. It's into a bit of space. It might just bounce on the edge of the try line. Well, look at this for a run out from the in goal area. He's done. Oh, he has. I thought he managed to not be tackled in his own in, in, a, in goal area there, but he's been driven back and it's a five metre scrum now to Mount St Mary's. We're just playing a clever game here, just turn that Ipswich side, keep turning them, keep turning them and make them play out. Well, that's why that kick was such a challenge, just the way it bounced meant that the cover from Mahoney was going to have to run it back into the in goal area and the pressure so difficult. Well, this is where they want to be, Mount St Mary's, right? Yeah, On the cusp of half time. It's a huge blind side to be only defending with one man, which is what Ipswich uh, School are doing. If they can get a good scrum here, platform Mount St Mary's, I'd look at an eight pick right, fix the back rower, past your nine. It should be a two on one with your winger. You'd hope to score there. You'd see a lot of sides the, with a blind side this big put two across to defend. But I'm guessing Ipswich School are back in their back row, their six and their eight do a great job on that blind side, so only leaving the winger over there defending. Craig Cameron will look to release his backs. Opts to go blind into the hands of Olafioya. Can't control the ball and he's under some pressure from Matthews, who's got a brace so far in this game, sniffing out his hat trick for Ipswich, I'm sure, later on. And it is Ipswich that get the penalty. Well, that's an important moment at the end of this half. Huge moment. I think if that uh, that pass goes to hand for Olafeo, I think that's a try because it's a one on one with 10 metres width to go and score. You only have to make two metres to go and score the try. So, huge moment that that doesn't quite go to hand. Compound it with giving a penalty away. And now Ipswich School are up to the opposition 40 and come out on an attack again. Line out for Ipswich. Taken by Burke. Certainly a breakdown communications there. Receiver wasn't expecting the ball and they've lost 20 metres or so. And the ball. And Mount St Mary's have it back. They're a bit flat, so they're going to need to try and reshuffle here. Archie Upton 
on the charge gets him onto the front foot once again Cameron purveying his options looking for Barker and Barker is well tackled Cameron Charlish again another kick they've clearly spoken about this and what a take that is from Gold and Gold with the bend the inside ball maybe he didn't need to do it what a tackle that was from Tocca now comes Powell oh it's so close it's on the edge for Mount St Mary's surely they have another try in the bag this time Briggs Briggs shoving his way through Ipswich on the back foot charge round by the post has it gone over yes it has and that is a third try in this opening half for Mount St Mary's College well wow I think after 15 minutes you would not have expected this scoreline heading into half time first 15 20 minutes were all Ipswich school but Mount St Mary's College have come back and a brilliant finish here in tight but it all came from a great crossfield kick from Andrew Charlish and Matt Gould rose higher than anyone with a brilliant overhead take from the kick great offload and then just a bit of patience as we drop goal the conversion and he's missed it oh he's got it he's got it I thought he'd missed it interesting decision to drop kick that but uh, it takes the score to Mount St Mary's 19 Ipswich no 21 sorry it'll be and yeah Mount St Mary's 21 Ipswich College 12 well, it was a great finish, wasn't it? I just thought Matt Gould would be able to sneak in. He got the first bend and gave the offload maybe just an inch too soon because I thought he would have coasted under the corner, but they went under the post in the end. Yeah, it was a great try, and that's, that's a huge, huge momentum shift. Now be 21-12 to Mount St Mary's when they were 12-0 down after 15 minutes, and seem to not be dead and buried but seem to have nothing going for them but um, huge fair play to these young men they've wrestled it back and now we've got to see what Ipswich School have got can they somehow get themselves back in this game well still time on the clock in this half Ipswich 12 Mount St Mary's College 21 it is a battle of all battles the winner of which will head to the final in a few weeks at Twickenham Stadium HQ there's a lot on the line change for Ipswich as well left wing replacement Zach Matthews coming off the restart going a long way down the field and Charlish with the dot over the line play with fire there because on a 4G pitch that could have just stopped if that stops a metre out that is a uh, that's not a good position to be but it rolls over and that will be a 22 drop out looking to move this wide good pace on the ball good hands slick stuff from Ipswich back into the mount half for the first time in a while and this bit had away been influential in this first half hasn't he and they finally get the penalty Davies penalised this time Rayfield sends that to the 22 well there's not much life left in this first half huge moment heading to half time here if, uh, if Mount St Mary's can keep Ipswich School out there would be a huge win for them for half time and on the flip side if Ipswich can score a try here they'll feel a whole lot better about themselves going into half time after having been 12 mil up so now between 1 12 down they can wrestle this try back now that would be huge for them lovely link play into the hands of White and White rocketing forward Mount St Mary's get the penalty and just like that they can clear their lines they've ridden the pressure so well in this first half lovely little back peel getting the big man um, onto the front foot just didn't resource the breakdown well enough and that'll take us into half time well that is it 
for the first 35 minutes, Ipswich School 12, Mount St Mary's College 21 and it has been a real battle and we are in for an exciting final 35. Charlie, well we enjoyed that one didn't we? That was a brilliant half of rugby I think. We saw huge swings in, uh, in momentum and territory and ball etc, possession and I think after 15 minutes I think we all thought we were going to be counting how many tribes it's which school scored but Mount St Mary's College had other ideas as you'd expect and for them to be have scored 21 unanswered points in the second half of that first half is a huge statement. Well there were indeed five tries, a, a good feast for us up here. Well let's take a look at them. The first score, this wonderful pass, beautiful from Max Rayfield, straight into the gut of Zach Matthews, who scorched over down the left wing. That pass, you remember a couple of years ago everybody was uh, clipping up Cipriani pass highlights, that's that sort of pass isn't it? Absolute stunner, I had the pleasure of um, being at, uh, with Cipriani at Gloucester and it's a, it's a pass he would have been proud of, he threw him in training all the time but he would have been proud of that one. Well the uh, front row boys getting amongst the action, look at that, a little one-two back into the hands of Matthews and Scorch forward, it was great, White and uh, Nisbet Hadaway linking prop forwards looking very mobile in this game and Zach Matthews a real walk-in for him. It also shows the importance of ball in two hands because Nisbet Hadaway had that in two hands the fullback didn't know where he was going to go, didn't know his carry which way he passed and in the end he chose the right option. Brilliant bit of play from the looser prop. This try more one for the purists there Scott, a little less exciting but just as important that all, important all the same they all count for five points. This uh, Charlie Davies, the tackle not really completed, he just managed to spin out of it, a good step. This is the uh, original tackle and just managed to glide on the edge and away he went under the post, simple in the end. Very important score that for Mount St Mary's. They've been impressive that centre partnership, Golden Davies haven't they at 13 and 12 for uh, Mount St Mary's, a lot of the good stuff that has happened for Mount has come through their hands. And another pick and go. We get excited about them in the lower numbers. Still trying to work out who that actually was. As I said earlier, it's just a try for the pack. Try for the pack. I think it may well have been Flynn Jones again, so he might be on a brace, but that is it. In the first half, this uh, semi-final one of the under-18 Vars. We've got the second semi-final coming up after this. Kick-off for that in just under an hour at 3.40pm. Ipswich School 12, Mount St Mary's College, Spinkill, 21 at half-time here from Six Ways.
second 35 minutes then. Ipswich trailing. And uh, they play in the dark blue from right to left in this second half. Max Rayfield with the knock on. That's a tough one. That the ball bounces in funny ways, I know, but especially on these artificial pitches, it's just just to see them off that bounce and he struggled to field it. And that's a big start for Mount St. Mary's College who they won't have wanted half time. They were on top and momentum was with them. They've got to try and get themselves on the front foot again and what a great place to, to mount an attack from here. Cameron feeding the scrum for Mount St Mary's good contest that even battle now the nudge comes here they go Gould well Charlish with the grubber once again I'm really surprised that Ipswich haven't started to read that because they've literally done it 10 times in the first 35 minutes yeah I think what they did very cleverly Mount St Mary's was the first few times they played the front line either Gould carrying himself or we obviously saw the offload to Davis for the try so they can't go and get Charles up the back like they'd like to because of those threats in front and Charles is just sitting there with all the time in the world whatever he can want to do and he's obviously got a very lethal right foot on him and that's been given as a 50-22 I missed that they've given that as a 50-22 so it's still Mount St Mary's college ball well not the best 50-22 we've had today but a very good one all the same and it's at the back with Josh Briggs powering forward, pumping those legs. Here they come. The Mount Machine marching on. It's now gone to ground. Looking for a carrier off the base. They found one. Supported by Barker. Edging closer. Looking to pump around the fringes. Mount St Mary's edging their way to the line it's just been lost forward though I was about to say they're extra Chiefs-esque they go from the mall if the mall doesn't work the fours just say we're gonna pick and go pick and go until we score but they were making great ground there but unfortunately for Mount St Mary's the ref has spotted a little knock on on the floor but brilliant field position and this Mount St Mary's college pack is really taking this game by the scruff of the neck It's a brilliant feeling being part of a pack like that, when you know you're on top of the other pack, when you know set piece is going well and your pick and drive game is on top, it's a brilliant feeling. Easy ride for the backs as well, certainly gets their tail feathers up. And they're looking to clear Rayfield with the banana kick that's gone straight down the throat of his opposite number, teeing up the drop goal, it had the distance but not quite the angle. I love that though, to be fair. Great effort. I don't hate it as an option because you're going to get the ball back from this 22 anyway, most likely, and just build a lead. Build a lead. All I'd say is it was quite a dangerous position anyway. They had it just outside the 22. Maybe would have wanted to see what they do to the hands. But if that goes over, we're praising him as a hero. Lovely Fen coming in from Davies. And Davies still going. Davies might go all the way. The hitch kick. Over the line, and Mount St. Mary's with a fourth score in this contest. A little bit of individual brilliance there from Charlie Davis. Takes it, fends the first tackle, accelerates through the second, and the hitch kicks away from the third to power under the post for a huge score for Mount St. Mary's College. I believe the kids call that a goosey. And there's a goose step there to finish off. Well, Charlie Davies gets his second try of the game. Mount St Mary's fourth, and they have extended their lead to 26 to 12. Andrew Charlish just, I think, waiting for a tee or. Now he gets the drop kick through the uprights, that's the conversion. 26 goes to 28. And Ipswich trail 12 points to 26. 28 unanswered points, it's a long way back from Ipswich. For Ipswich now, 
by no means am I saying they can't do it, but it very much is an uphill struggle for the uh, the boys from Suffolk here. Well, Charlie Davies has had a wonderful game, punching a lot of holes from 12. They've got a really nicely balanced, people talk about balance all the time, don't they? It's just about having players with multiple qualities that reflect well on each other. And uh, Charlish, Davies and Gould certainly have that balance between them, don't they? Yeah, lovely midfield axis. There's good passing, kicking and running options. There's a you talk about triple threat in musical theatre, can they sing, dance and act? Well, this, this midfield is a triple threat. They can carry, kick and pass. It's a, it's a defender's nightmare to deal with them. Well, Dave Amofa Owusu has uh, come off. You would have seen him just chasing Charlie Davies to the line. I think he may well have uh, cramped up or pulled something. So he is off. Ipswich with a replacement on at 13. The score's on the board, Ipswich 12, Mount St Mary's 28. Another kick coming in into the backfield. Connor Holcroft chasing it and has a swerving run himself. He is so isolated, that kick chase from Mount St Mary's, wonderful really, the pressure they put on. There is so much pressure on Ipswich School right now. It's it's just building, they're in again, they're in a horrible position to exit from here, about seven metres out, almost under their stick. This is this is really, really clever rugby from Mount St Mary's College. That that box kick there, just keep turning them. You've got the big lead, say to them, can you come back from 90 metres out and score a try? Because you've got to play all the rugby now, we, we've got the lead. It's very, very mature rugby. I feel that Ipswich have gone into their showers just a bit in this game and they got that early score, they were so fruitful and looked like they were on cloud nine, but since then and conceding a few of their own, it just knocked them back a bit and anybody that's played sport, if you go into your shell, it's such a hard place to play. Now Manson there is with a penalty, they're trying to take it quickly. They're going to have to come back to the referee's mark. I'd take three points here. Just keep building that lead. More points is more pressure for Ipswich. Uh, I think the tee is on yet. We found the tee. We couldn't find it for the last two conversions, but we found it for this. Well, Andrew Charlish walked over pointing to the sticks, and I think now he's teeing up for the corner. <laughs> Primarily because they don't have a tee, I don't think. Why would somebody not just give them one? Surely there's one knocking around here. There has to be, doesn't it? That's brave. That's brave. I love the. I love the. Uh, Adventure and the want to play and score more tries, but this is this is cup rugby. This is so far. This is a trip to Twickenham, a trip to the final. I, I would have taken my three and just built my lead there. But watch them go score a try now and say, "What do you know, Charlie?" Here's one for you, Charlie. Driving more, get amongst it yourself. Keep those ears warm. Pack in, drive the thighs. Manson Marys on top of the hill at six ways today in this Spurs semi-final. Lovely dart. Big hit coming in once again, Nisbet Hadaway. A great game for Ipswich, been all over the park, defence and attack, but it's Mount that are piling on the pressure here. Again with another charge, are they going to get over? Inches away, the referee's got good vision. Looking closely, not quite. Another attempt from Mount. Defence so far, good from Ipswich. Oh, how close can they be? And it's agonising for Matt and their supporters in the stands here at Six Ways. Have they got it this time? Hammering on the door, knocking it off its hinges, surely. And that is another try. Well, which idiot said take three points? Who said that? Confidence, isn't it? They've got backs of it in this second half. Again, brilliant patience from the pack there. I said earlier it was extra Chiefs like they must have gone eight or ten pick and goes there and Ipswich School were brilliant in defence as well because it's so hard, it's so taxing physically and mentally to just keep keep repelling them there, battering at your door like that and just one pick and go too many for the Ipswich School defence there. It was really, really good defence, wasn't it? You couldn't fault it from Ipswich to be honest, but eventually the door starts creaking and it caves in. And at 33 points, we found the tee. Andrew Charles is off the tee now, finally. 
Do you reckon they do that on purpose, just to uh, challenge him, put him in circumstances? You won't get this at Twickenham sort of thing. Maybe he's been very impressive with everything he's done today, so it wouldn't surprise me. Try and challenge him somehow. He's better when he drop kicks it. Well, it was a, a nice strike. Didn't quite find the angle. And Mount St Mary's College, 10 or so minutes into this second half, have another score. feel like to get Ipswich school back in this game it's going to take some sort of magic from someone it's a long way back from here for them the try scorer for that last Manson Mary's college try Eddie Freer and the bumbling ball finally getting Ipswich great ball into the hands of Mahoney the pass just a bit too direct from Max Rayfield. When it rains, it pours, doesn't it? For poor Ipswich. That bounce of the ball was hideous for them. They did a brilliant job to field it, and the pass just not quite going to hand. It just seems everything, everything is going against them at the moment. Well, it's uh, a long second half, isn't it, for Ipswich? But you've seen it happen where teams have come back from this far down in this amount of time. It's definitely possible. And look at that for a scrum from them. They've got the ascendancy. They've got the penalty. That, that's a huge way back in the game. Got their voices back as well. Rayfield shipping it out wide. They do have the numbers. The pass just a little bit too late. And it's bundled into touch from Ed Banks. Because it's only 21 points, I know that's a lot, but you score one try, there's lots of time left. One try starts to make them nervous, two very much brings you back in the game. So this game, well, it's a long way a long way to come back, it's far from over. Well, the loose ball hacked on by Upton. Rayfield has it now. But boot to ball himself and... Well, here comes a break and it's through the middle, that's the darting line. Still going, this... The double try scorer, Charlie Davies. Stolen again. This time it's Mallet. Brilliant pass from the number eight. Mahoney can't find the shuffle on the outside shoulder down the five metre channel. Well, where's he going? Burke. Well, he knows best way forward is through traffic. Coming for the penalty, they have the advantage. And Rayfield surely will just send this one long. They need the territory, they've got a bit of possession now. They haven't got the field position. If you're Ipswich here, you're looking for your big players to do something for you. Nisbet Hadaway, he's a part of the Northampton Saints Academy. He was on the bench for their under 18s at Academy Finals Day last weekend. You're looking to him, you're looking to those players to give you something here, give you something special. Rally the troops and bring them back to this game because there is still time to go. This game is not lost, you just need someone to light that fire, lead them in that bit of a spark, something to get the boys going. Stolen then back with Ipswich out wide through the hands Matthews back on the field for the boys in blue it's a turnover though and here comes Manson Marys do they have the numbers back inside lovely short ball how about that for the depth of hands from the forwards lovely little tip it's hard with that much pressure one of my favourite things in rugby, a little tip pass. Look at this for a line coming through. Louis Platt, scorching. Gets the ball away, but they're in touch. Charlie Dave is struggling with cramp in the backfield here for Mount St Mary's. He's been a huge part of everything that's been good for them, so they will be hoping he can carry on. 
this was a nice break wasn't it very good very good offload and just just he had to just lean for it a little bit by the time the defence got to him he couldn't step off that outside foot to get back in field and it was a rather easy tackle to put him to touch but shows how dangerous Mount St Mary's are on the break they've had a controlled game haven't they really a lot of kicking just nudging those corners and perhaps in the early parts of the game weren't quite sure what their objective was but it's worked out so well hasn't it they've just worn it switched down and it's tactically a great great performance from them yeah I think that ridiculously fast start from Ipswich School maybe took Mount St Mary's College by surprise it took them another 10 minutes to really find their feet but since they scored that first try on about the 20 minute mark we've seen 33 unanswered points from them so they've certainly found their feet found their footing in this game and um, they've, they've dominated really since that 20 minute mark but as we saw there with that little break a few minutes ago Ipswich School are very dangerous so they're very much still in this game they just need a little bit of consistent possession a little bit of consistent territory you, you're going to struggle to score from your own 22 well physios on players just getting some water as well no uh, bags for life this time we've got some actual water carriers I think we might be about to lose Charlie Davis from the game here which is a huge blow for Mount St Mary's College but also for all of us watching because it's been a pleasure to watch him looks like as he's carried off in front of us he's struggling with um, looks like an ankle as he's not weight bearing at all for that left foot so we certainly hope that's nothing too serious for the young man because he's been extremely impressive so far today well he's hobbling off I'm sure it's uh, just a bit of cramp a bit of a strain he's done so much running I'm not surprised it switch with the ball at the line out then great tackle well he lined him up from a mile away didn't he Archie Upton flying off the line the pressure from this mountain defence even when they're on the Ipswich 5 metre line but Ipswich get the penalty well finally maybe they can clear their lines they need to get into the mountain half don't they yeah, they really need to work their way up the pitch here. They need to uh, they need to mount some sort of attack. Oh, ball coming towards us again. Not in the com box like it did earlier. Um, but they just need to keep working their way up here because if they can score a try and a bit of doubt starts creeping into these Mount St Mary's boys' heads, then they might have a chance. But at the moment, they're 21 points off and they'll be pretty confident they can see it out from here. Lovely line-out ball. Here comes the charge, Tom White. Brilliant, brilliant chop tackle from Felix Crapper there. Yes! Oh, he's come away with the ball as well, hasn't he? And... Oof. Bit of a bosh from Ronan Burke on Andrew Charlish. Still going forward this time, Upton. Gets it away to Barker and Barker has some support this time. Powell cries from the touchline to move the ball. Backline staggered. Upton goes on his own, gets the ball away, and it's a good offload. Brilliant offload twice in a row there from Upton. He's dangerous that ball in hand off nine. Charging through the middle, Josh Briggs. Can Josh Briggs go all the way? Yes, he can. Mount St Mary's with another try in this fast semi-final here at six ways. I think that might be might be the nail in the coffin now. I think well it's three scores you've got a chance. I think four is going to be too many for this uh, this valiant Ipswich school side to come back from. But brilliant patience from Mount St Mary's to launch their attack there. It was good play, wasn't it? It was dynamic. This the charge, the final effort from Josh Briggs the outstretched right arm doing a great job to get the ball over you see the value in winning collisions there it seemed every time they carried Mount St Mary's they were winning the collision and the man who had the ball he had an option to tip so he couldn't be double teamed in defence and then one on one tackles they were winning those collisions over the game line over the game line and in the end it was uh, the game line became the trial line and they powered over Charlish with another conversion attempt. Well, 
beautiful strike, wasn't it? Glorious, even with the wind causing havoc. Ipswich 12, Mount St Mary's 40 here at six ways into the final 15 minutes. Yeah, and this is this is an enjoyable last 15 minutes now for uh, for Mount St Mary's. You were. Uh, you, uh, you expect them to play some rugby now and you just want Ipswich to, to hold on really. You don't want it to get ugly, you don't want them to drop their heads because they've had a brilliant season and played brilliantly in this game so far. So you hope they keep their chins up and keep playing hard here. Well, Mount St Mary's have had some big wins en route to this semi-final. 52 nil in round two, 48-18 in round three. A big round four win against Trent College, 43-7. 38-17 in round five, the quarter-final 36-10, they are well worthy winners today, but I'm sure Ipswich will try and close that gap in these uh, final minutes. Here they go, first time, Victor Rocker in this second half, not even seen them get into the 22, they've been starved of possession really. Malik on the charge. Just big hit after big hit from this Mount St Mary's defence. It's amazing what one big tackle will do, it riles everyone up to make another one. It's a confidence thing again isn't it, it just gives you a little lease of life, a bit of extra energy. Around the fringes, Tocca. Rayfield with half a dart. Captain for Ipswich has been influential today but hasn't managed to turn the tide and Tom White again another forward for Ipswich who's uh, got amongst it in the loose today as well. The handling of this Ipswich front row throughout the game has been outstanding. Mayo to Nisbet Hadaway. White again and just look Ipswich going backwards this hard defence from Mount St Mary's causing all sorts of problems for the Ipswich attack Saddleton gets what an offload to Mahoney Mahoney back inside oh no it couldn't quite get the hand almost beautiful play Mahoney stepping in at scrum half Rayfield to White White needs to give it they've got numbers over he takes it on his own Matthews, how many phases are Ipswich going through here? They're being so patient. It's great recycling of the ball. It's brilliant from Ipswich. It's just outstanding play. Mahoney down the right wing, gets it inside. What a lovely one-handed take. Holcroft, oh, he was in touch. How about that take from Holcroft? The whole attack was brilliant. They moved the ball, the offloading. I'm gutted he stepped in touch there because it deserved a try just for how long they played there. It's a great period of play to show to teams that you don't have to just kick it away. Keep moving the ball, keep being dynamic, put the pace on it and move it wide and good things will come. Absolutely, it's just the, the patience and sticking in, in your attacking shape and doing your job well, which is what they all did there. Um, I'm not sure how we've gone hour through this broadcast and we have not mentioned the glory that is Ipswich School's tight head, white hair. I don't think it's a mullet, I just think it's just huge flowing locks. What a man. And I'm saying this is a bald man who is not follically blessed. He's got a lovely mane, hasn't he? <laughs> Slick back. I don't know if you uh, know Blades of Glory when he's got Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, great film. He's, <laughs> what is it, a hundred strokes a day or something? Yes, he's, he, looks like, he looks like Will Ferrell in Blades of Glory. Outstanding. And it, it looks its best when he's in full flow carrying the ball as he has throughout the game today. Well, this is a lovely drive, isn't it? Matt St Mary's driving more Hall of Fame. Here we go, then. It's like they're trying to flirt with me now, Mount St Mary, show me what they can do in the mall. It's nice, isn't it? In the sun. Glorious. Oh, great charge down. Nisbet Hadaway. Oh, can he get there? No, he can't. Oh, Char Charlie's just <laughs> slipping and the pressure back on from Ipswich. How about that? Lucas Nisbet Hadaway, hey? Just talking about his uh, prop forward friend and he's also had a great game. 
60 minutes in they're still two of the busiest players on the pitch it's very impressive Oof. fitness from the big men well the pass is just going awry and Manson Marys will get the ball at the line out in a very promising position inside the Ipswich oh, sorry Ipswich will get the ball inside the Mount St Marys College 22 it's their game of the day one more to come after this it's the uh, second semi-final kicking off in around about half an hour's time three games tomorrow as well two in the under 15s cup semi-finals and one of the under 18 cup semi-finals this is the charge though from Tom White they've got the numbers out wide Rayfield oof show and go did well to hold on to the ball there he looked as if he was going to release the pass it's with Matthews on a brace charging through well held by Louis Platt charging Louis Mile. penalty Ipswich taking quickly Tocker well he needs some support and so do the forwards Tocker wants more then this bit had away great footwork he's very nifty isn't he still in this late stage of the game they've got the numbers over can they get it through the hands it's an intercept and Matt St Mary's College do they have the wheels it's going to be so close Hold tackle from nowhere out of a black hole in the pitch Zach Matthews has made a tackle and that is a 110 meter run for him Joe Tadpatrica somehow over the line losing the ball he comes from absolutely nowhere here he comes he's chased him as you said Scott 110 meters from the far corner that's when you're when you are 40 points to 12 down, to still have that desire, that sort of effort to get back and save the try, you've got to take your hat off to the man. Well, I think we need to see that again because uh, that was some commitment from Zach Matthews. Tad Patrika was... Uh, he was swimming in that final 35 metres and at the lactic this late stage of the game. Running in treacle, poor bless him. And it's a break from Saddleton. <laughs> Penalty to Mount St Mary's College. In front of the sticks. It was even cruel that because it was a four on one in the far corner of Ipswich School and if he hadn't intercepted it was a guaranteed try. And now they're going to kick their three. I mean, it was some run, wasn't it? Joe Tad Patrick, who started the game, went off as part of the sort of replacements and came back on the field. It was a, it's a long way to run at this late stage of the game. And he was had about 10 shirts chasing him back. This is going to be quite a niche reference, and you'll need to be an NFL fan to get it, but it was reminiscent of uh, this season when DK Metcalf for the Seattle. Uh, Seattle Seahawks came from about 80 metres back and saved a touchdown on an interception. It was just outstanding. It was like the Terminator coming from behind, like the, T, the T2000 to track him down. It was just brilliant, brilliant desire. I think I'm exposing myself as a bit of a nerd here as well with my references. DK Metcalf, very, very fast. And uh, that's another good conversion from Andrew Charlish. I'm not sure the score here, obviously now a uh, over 30 point lead, fully reflects how even this game has been at times. Ipswich have played very, very well, just Mount St Mary's have taken their chances better. Charlish off his left boot this time. It's a right footed kicker off the tee so that was very nifty Victor Tocker with a kick to, to nothing really five hoop shirts 
on the chase. Jones had a try earlier on, this time with a carry. The crowd enjoyed that Liam Powell rumble, the big number four for Mount St. Mary's. What an offload that is into the hands of Upton. Had a great game, hasn't he? Still going. And of course he's got the offload away, of course he has. Penalty, Ipswich. We just seem to be permanently camped in this uh, Ipswich 22, don't we? Yeah, then we have a crick in my neck from looking to the right. Well, let's take a look. This was the uh, run from Joe Tad Patrickart and the charge from Zach Matthews scorching down on it. How did he not get this ball down? It just imagine if that was a foot later, 30 centimetres, 20 centimetres later. That's a try. Genuinely, if he makes one ounce less effort, a single shred less effort, that's a try. That is a maximum effort for the whole time chasing him back, and that. That's maybe the most impressive scene I've seen, thing I've seen all day, including the kick from Glyn Jones earlier. Great effort, isn't it? Ipswich still digging deep, even at this late stage in the semi-final. Great commitment. I think that epitomises their performance today, doesn't it, really? Does Archie Upton have a magnet for this ball? He seems to be on it all the time, picking up the back of that line out now. He's had a great game, hasn't he? Just enigmatic in attack and defence, destructive when running at open space and Mount St Mary's coming back for the penalty. It's been a very professional performance for Mount St Mary's hasn't it, they've been clinical, they're clearly a very well drilled, well coached side and it's been uh, the antithesis of maybe the more fast and loose style of Ipswich school and it's just, just paid dividends and as I say that, they make a very uncharacteristic mistake and kick it dead from the penalty. We're going to have some great highlights from today's four games, aren't we? Particularly non-scoring highlights. The Glyn Jones 2022-22. Uh, <laughs> a triple 22-22-22, was it there? Well, I think so. i have getting a little bit too many twos in my mind there. But, um, yeah, that will be up there. The chase back and tackle from Zach Matthews in this game. Just some great stuff. Also, a crazy tackle we saw in the warm-up earlier on as well, before the first game. Oh, this is a lovely break. Josh Briggs darting through. Look at the wheels on him. Curving, arcing, diving, and he's going to score another try for Mount St Mary's College. And he deserves that. The legs on the mat. The speed. He's been very impressive all day, Briggs. Good at set piece, good in the loose. Tidy little player and a well-deserved breakaway try from there. The show and go. Well, what I want to say, Lucas Nisbet Hadaway chasing back rapidly the whole way. They just couldn't get to him, could they? Nah, great finish, a brilliant finish there. Just going back to that uh, tackle you were talking about in the warm-up earlier, it was the first under-15s game we had, and one of the travelling reserves in the warm-up just completely steer-tackled one of the stars. I thought, we're, we're only laughing because he's OK, but it was a red card anywhere in the world, and the man who got tackled just got up, laughed and gave him a hug. It was unbelievable friendship and camaraderie. It was just one of those where the uh, attacker sat on the defender's shoulder, didn't he? And he just went straight into the ground. It was a beautiful connection, but uh, yeah, wonderful. Louis Pack with the conversion. Up to 48-12 now for Mount St Mary's College. We'll take a look at it again because it was glorious stuff. Josh Briggs, you talk about dynamic hookers. He dug really deep, didn't he, in those last 15 metres. Oh, the lactic acid will have been present in his legs there. Plenty of that, didn't he? Good hands. Looking to move it through the hands again. Platt. What a ball that is. Wow, Briggsy. Beautiful ball. Fortune on a Fioye. Is that a 
drop goal or dropped onto his toe for a nudge because because why not why not yeah exactly kicking it in to touch and that is full time here at six ways in the first RFU national schools under 18 bar semi-final Ipswich 12 Mount St Mary's College being killed 50 and they continue their excellent run of form in this competition and we will see them at Twickenham for finals day yeah very very impressive performance from Mount St Mary's Ipswich started fast they took a 12-0 lead in the first 10 minutes, but then 50 unanswered points from Mount St. Mary's. A very professional, very clinical performance. And um, it'll take a good side to beat them. As you said, their route to the finals has been pretty dominant. They've been dominant in the semi. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant win. Huge, huge great hits, which didn't quit all game. Started incredibly fast. But uh, Mount St. Mary's, just the better team on the day, and just a little bit too strong for their Ipswich school counterparts. Well, this was a, a wonderful break, a wonderful drive from Charlie Davies. Had a great game, went off with a bit of a knock, I don't know, hamstring, calf or cramp. A mixture of all three, but a swerving run. He had a great game from 12, didn't he? Yeah, he was, he was stand out for me. They'll be hoping whatever it is isn't too serious and he's fixed up in time for the final. A brace from him today, that was in the second half. This, uh, another good score, charging through Eddie Freer placement in the row that big right mitt just reaching out brilliant brilliant finish from the big man hey, it's a sporting event now we've got sweet caroline on now it's a british sporting event well briggs got a brace that was his first try in close quarters a big bulldozing run his second which we'll see in a moment even more impressive than this one to like that try didn't he this was the uh, intercept that was on his own five metre line Joe Tadpatrika charging forward you can see here he's starting to struggle as he gets to halfway tired legs at this late stage over rotates when he's running diving towards the line but what about that charge back from Zach Matthews I think everybody else had given up hope and the tackle causing him to knock it on and lose control Matthews came from the opposite wing there to make that tackle. He's made up about 30 metres over that 100 metres. Absolutely incredible effort from the man from Ipswich. This, Josh Briggs' second try. The show and go and the 40 metre dash. The awareness to uh, curve and break his run as well, just to see off the defenders. Oosh, love that. Zigzags well here, doesn't he? Like what you're meant to do if a crocodile's chasing you is they can't run fast when zigzagging. There's a bit of life advice for all of you. Never run straight away from a crocodile or alligator. You best zigzag like the man there over the try line. Well, zigzagging their way to the final at Twickenham. It is Mount St. Mary's College. The final score here from the uh, first semi-final in the under-18 bars. Ipswich School 12. Mount St. Mary's College Spin Kill 50 and we'll be back in around about 15 minutes time with the second semi-final.
Well, we are about to get underway for our fourth and final game of the day. It's our second under 18 Vars semi final. Well, we are underway. Sutton Valens playing from uh, right to left. Reading Bluecoat from left to right. Our fourth and final game of the day. Good kickoff there from Reading Bluecoat, putting Sutton Valens under pressure straight away. It's a tough place to throw and a big loss for Sutton Valens. Number eight, Nathan Michelo, away with England under 18s this weekend. So, big loss for them and a big step up for Barnaby Merritt stepping into those shoes. On the charge, Holly Langton. The winner of this will get Man Mount St Mary's College in the final at Twickenham. Here on the charge, Monty Heath scorching through. Just brought down six or seven metres short. Now, Lewis. Looking to move it out wide, Dexter. Oh, great read, great read out the back. Well, that was a huge hit. Dink into the corner, not quite sure what that was all about. Sutton Valence, a huge feeder to the Saracens under 18 programme. It would be interesting to see if they play in any sort of way uh, resembling, obviously, the multi time European champions and uh, their style of play today. Lovely take off the top from Sutton Valence. Great line-out move, dummy to the back, come to the front, sold it well. Nice easy ball at the front for the hooker to throw to. Charging run that from Jasper Benson. Sutton Valence still trying to clear this ball and it's gonna head to Harry Martin, gets it inside to Heath. Heath, we've already seen his wheels. What about that from Benson? Didn't manage to fully wrap Heath, but uh, Benson putting in some big hits in these opening exchanges. Here comes Weeks. Ferocious opening exchanges, Charlie. Some big shots from those Sutton Valence backline, isn't there? They, um, they're very physical, accelerate into the contact, but uh, Red and Blue Coat giving as good as they get in the carry. Um, some big collisions and a very fast paced start here um, in our second semi final today. Tell you what's been great all day here across the under 15s and 18s games. How much support both teams have had. They're all below us and you can really hear them in the stand below us. Particularly on a, a cold, late winter's morning as well. But we've got some nice sunshine. It, it's certainly cold in the stands, but the atmosphere keeping people warm, I'm sure. Charge through the middle, what a dart. Crook couldn't quite hold on to it. Beautiful line from the inside centre. Just forgot to take the ball with him. A brilliant, brilliant line though from Matt Crook. And He'll be looking to pick lines like that all day. If he'd taken the ball there, I think he was in under the sticks. I'm not sure anyone was going to stop him. Well, periods of high energy followed by some calm. And this one of those calm moments just before 
the force of nature comes at the scrum. Well, it's Tyler Weeks at scrum half for Sutton Valance in the white strip. Now they move. Jasper Benson. A bit of niggle from the scrum halves there. I think a penalty's gone against Harry West for a little bit of off the ball stuff with his opposite number Tyler Weeks there. Well, silly stuff. Everybody likes the handbags, don't they? Not me when I play Scott. I don't know what you're talking about. You'll never find me in anything like that. Bit of sledging, no, doesn't, doesn't. Just don't ask anyone around the championship because they'll all have a horrible, horrible opinion of me, I imagine. Well, you're just doing your job, that's what you're there for, right? That's what I try and tell them, but uh, no one seems to listen. Let's see if Sutton Valance can launch their first attack. This is their first foray into the Reading Blue Coat half. Shipping it to Jarrett and Jarrett tackled by Dexter. Valance trying to put some pace on this at the moment. Beaumont over the top to his opposite man Dexter and Dexter has an equal reply. Ping pong at the moment. Tyler Weeks. Low grubber. Straight to Thomas David and can Reading Bluecoat go anywhere with this one? They can't. So it's going to be a line out inside their own half to Sutton Valance. Very similar to we saw in our first under 18 semi final. Just taking a little bit of time for both sides to find their foot and find exactly their rhythm, exactly what they want out of this game, how they want to play. Um, a little bit fractured here in the early goings. Huge nudge by Dexter, straight down the barrel of Pip Hodson and we're going to come back for the knock-on, he couldn't control it, such a close call and difficult in these wins when you've got cold fingers as well. Again there, I think you're seeing the effect of the 50-22 rule because they're definitely eyeing up the 50-22 there, maybe in years gone by. Pip Hodson would have let that bounce see what happened because the worst case scenario is it goes out and it's his ball but he knows if that bounces on, if that kicks on that becomes red and blue coat ball in the perfect attacking position so he had to go for it uh, when he wasn't quite set and therefore has knocked it on Show go to David. And he's under a bit of pressure here from Sutton Valance. Now they move it out wide. Have they got the space into the hands of Vass? Oscar Vass scorching down the left wing. Again, just brought short, but they've found some spare change down that left wing so far in this game, Reading Bluecoat. Crossfield kick to Martin, back inside to Monty Heath. Moving the ball very well, Red in Blue Coat. Very impressed with the handling skills of these boys. Well, it's looking promising at the moment for Red in Blue Coat, isn't it? Had a good route to this semi final. Big win in the quarters 32 24 against. Wellington County Grammar School. Well, it's a line out. Come Five on, meters. the driving mall. We haven't seen a mall try yet today. We've seen a we've seen a peel trick play. I'm ready for one for the purist. 
Yeah, not quite that driving more, which would be a strange one, to be honest, wouldn't it? Over four games, you wouldn't get one. Give the fans what they want. Perkins takes it. They get it set. They get it moving, inching forward. Sutton Valance trying to slow this one down. There's a bit of space on the far wing. It's still marching on, maybe the first time in four games today. Can Reading Bluecoat march this one over? It looks as if it's going to be short. The numbers are sucked in and it's going to be Sutton Valance's ball. Very good defence on Sutton Valance there, I think. They, Reading Bluecoat started going square. They were going square, that right-hand side, as they, as they saw it, started to open up. And they took it, but they just let themselves get turned. You've got to, as you take that, really fire your inside leg through and really square up and go hard through that hole. They didn't, they got twisted and then some did a good job to finish it off, wrap them up and uh, stop them going over. I promise I'll try and not get too boring about malls next time. I've got to be excited there. Well, that technical knowledge for the people watching at home will be absolutely invaluable because next time they'll be able to look out for it. The, they'll be going to the parents. The parents will be going, oh, I didn't use your inside leg on that mall quite. No, sorry, Dad. We saw Sonny Bill Williams three metres off our own line there, by the way. Outstanding stuff. Remarkable. They play with no fear, these lads. We've seen it all day and I absolutely love it. Well, here comes Monty Heath, lateral at the moment, and another huge tackle coming in from Jasper Benson. That guy's an animal, he's everywhere at the moment. And Martin bundled into touch by Oscar Vass. Monty Heath's doing a brilliant job in backfield for Red and Blue Coat, but I just can't help but feel that he should be an opening act for Morecambe and Wise or something. Monty Heath, yeah. I feel that's his beckoning with a name like that, but no. The, um, that's a big win for Sutton Valance to have been two phase go, it was a scrum on their own five metre line, they've now got the ball in the opposition half and looking to launch another attack on a red and blue coat here. It's been a, an opening 11 minutes full of heat, hasn't it? It really has. It's interesting that Red and Blue Coat have brought Harry Martin across from the blindside wing here to defend in the centres. They're leaving the blindside for just their nine and blindside flank to defend. It's a, oh, it's popped out and they've taken it. That all happened very quickly. Well, it's a Sutton Valance ball at the lineup. Chance to see Josh Faulkner, that hooker, for the first time. All under a bit of pressure, but they've just managed to retain it. <laughs> Penalty to Sutton Valance. Tyler Weeks looking to take it quickly but they're going to have a nudge downfield and we've seen a fair bit of Reading Bluecoat in the opposition half time for certain balance to have some of that themselves certainly cagey opening period to this game Some Valence fans below us, I think, are in very good voice. They've, they've obviously written their chance for the day. Well taken off the top. Here comes another driving more. Weeks gets it to Benson, who just about holds on to it. He had one eye on the defenders, didn't he? Always catches you short. Here comes Beaumont, carving through. Gets the offload to... M McInulty and McInulty still going they find themselves on the edge of the 22 can they muster something extra here trying to punch a couple of holes Jarrett this time Beaumont to his number eight Merritt unfortunate for Merritt there he's been tackled feels he's been released but the referee says the tackle was complete so he can't get back to his feet I've been, I've been impressed with Merritt I said at the start big shoes to fill with Michelo away with England this weekend in France but um, I've been impressed with him round the pitch but especially the line out he's taken three or four um, 
line outs under huge pressure, which I know from my experience is a very hard aerial skill. Um, so he's been brilliant there. And uh, yeah, he's stepping up when his side needs him massively here, the number eight. These types of games, you need your big players to have the biggest games, don't you? Leave from the front, start to take control of it and actually have an impact, make those meters and find the space. Yeah, you hear it a lot, especially in American sport. Big players make big plays in big games and it doesn't come much bigger than this for, uh, for these younger men. Take on the line-out. Perkins plucks it out the air and I think over the top to Weeks has got it back and there might be some space in the middle here and they've got some space on the far touchline. Jasper Benson hacks it on. It might bounce awkwardly but it's well taken in the end from Thomas David. Great bit of play from Tyler Weeks there. He's read the chips coming, got in the chip space, caught it on the full and moved the ball. Brilliant, brilliant scrum half play. Valance still pressurising Reading in defence and there's a bit of a loose ball, might be picked up, they're going to go in here and that is the first try of the game for Barnaby Merritt and Sutton Valance are in front. Well we said he needs to step up and my word is he, Barnaby Merritt, the line speed from him and both men are inside and outside him here. You see him here on the replay, get off the line, all of them force the error and they keep going, that's not enough forced the ball into his hands and there was two or three of them lined up to score that. That's brilliant line speed from Sutton Valance. And we said earlier they're a huge feeder to the Saracens Academy. Well, I've played against Saracens. So that's Saracens-esque line speed there, that Wolfpack mentality. You're seeing it here with Sutton Valance. And it's, it's gone on five and potentially seven points to open the scoring in this game. Well, it was a great, great bit of pressure. And it's the Sutton Valance, number eight, that comes away with the opening score. Chance then for Luke Beaumont to capitalise here. And the kick's certainly important in a game like this. Into the wind. Well, he's pulled it to the near upright. Good distance, nice strike, not enough accuracy for Luke Beaumont. But it was good, wasn't it? Bunched around the ball carrier were Reading and the pressure coming in from Merritt. Nice way to get the scoreboard ticking over. Yeah, brilliant first try and fill that Sutton Valance defence with a lot of, a lot of confidence. And here he is, one good thing with the try and one great take in his own 22. Strikes is the sort of man who wants to be involved, he wants the ball, he wants to be doing things Barnaby Merritt. They get the penalty, Weeks uh, dummies the quick tap penalty and I think he knows they're probably going to have to try and clear their lines. That's a good kick. They just feel like getting a little bit on top here, Sutton Valance. Just a few things going their way. Obviously the try then. Nice clean exit. Good ball here. They're just starting to build a little bit of momentum in this game. Weeks away to Merritt once again. Good pressure in defence from Reading. Some pent-up players down on that pitch, isn't there? Tyler Weeks seems a feisty little fella at nine, doesn't he? I think he went looking for contact there. Oh, charged down on Benson. Well chased back by Tom Barton, just Clearing up the mess and there the charge down. This time Joe Smart getting his palms in front of it. It's not often you have two charge downs in a row and get the ball back both times. They've been very lucky there, Sutton Valance. Finally Weeks gets it away. It's not a great kick though, it's into a lot of space. And Heath is tackled well. David 
gets it to West and his Grover into the backfield. Out of the 22 comes Hodson. That's finally in touch, but a frantic period of play. Yeah, it was all going on there, wasn't it? To go charge down, charge down, poor kick, bit of a fumble, kick, kick. It was, it was, it was all over the place. It's actually a brilliant final kick. He's got him over halfway with very little angle to work with. It's a great kick, wasn't it? It's a feisty little game, this one. There's a little bit of niggle out there. There's nothing, nothing too untoward at all. Just a little bit of niggle, a little bit of afters, a few words, a little bit of pushing. Shows how much it means to these boys. Some edgy players out there, isn't there? You feel like they've been boxed in for three weeks and this is the first time they've been let out. It's also a lot later in the day than these boys are used to be playing at, not kicking off to 24, so nerves have been building up all day, they'd be desperate to get out there. It's a difficult thing to manage, isn't it, as a, as a player when you've got a later kick-off, and you'll see it as you get older or more at the professional ranks, it could be later than this as well, so it's a real challenge. And how do players prep when they've maybe got a 6pm kick-off, what do they do in the day? It's something I massively struggle with until probably I was about 23, 24, only a few years ago. You've got to try and keep yourself busy doing other things. I know the worst ones are when you're away and you're in hotels, when you can't get out. Like when you're at home, you can go and do what you normally do, whether that's go for coffee, go for lunch, go and visit some friends or family. When you're away, especially abroad and you're just in the hotel. So a lot of cards get played, a lot of board games, uh, people take their Xboxes, Playstations away with them. I always try and find, when I was with Jersey especially, we'd always be obviously away from the island, I'd always try and find a coffee shop to go and walk to, a good like 20-30 minute walk to get out and about, but um, everyone does it differently, some people don't struggle, but um, it's something that I've really had to learn to, because obviously as you say, as you move up professional and start having 3 o'clock being your normal kickoff time, and then you get 7, 8 o'clock, you go to France sometimes, they don't kick off till 9, so it can, uh, it can be a tough one, but it's something these boys have, uh, seem to be dealing with so well so far today. Lovely take from Ollie Deacon. straight off the top and they're trying to get this more moving not quite flourishing yet now they come to release Harry West out the back crook out wide the pass just a bit too flat it definitely went forward although we're coming back for the penalty advantage I've been very very impressed with Joe Smart's um, line up throwing Everything has been double tops. Everything. It's been very impressed from the young man. Makes such a difference, doesn't it? The backs, especially, I know they get great enjoyment from seeing a line out go to its mark. It's such a demoralising thing every time if you've got a line out that isn't functioning and you just can't get any front football. It also, from a defensive line out point of view, if you know even if you do get up in front or next to it, that actually you're going to struggle to get it because they're hitting double tops every time. You start thinking twice about where they're competing, so then if one does drop a foot or so, you're not up competing, so they get away with it. So very, very good work from Smart and his forward pack. Good calling, good jumping, great throwing. They've had a good line-out so far. Well, Tom Dexter is lining up the tee to head for the posts. And first penalty of the game we are 22 minutes into this opening half and at the moment still only the one score that try from Barnaby Merritt separating the two sides absolutely great shot good option that I think uh, I think it's going to be a cagey affair. This might not be the highest scoring we've seen today, so those three points could be invaluable and just keep them within touching distance of this Sutton Valence side, keep the pressure on. It's a funny thing, scoreboard pressure. It can do funny things to people, and the fact they're now not nil will be a huge weight off their shoulders as well. You don't like to be on nil. Psychologically, that can really affect players, so big penalty kick that. Good competition on the uh, kickoff there, but it's just been a knock on from Sutton Valence, so it'll be a scrum to Reading Blue Coat just inside their own 10 metre line. Well, the scoreboard on our screen not quite accurate. It's Sutton Valence 5, Reading Blue Coat 3. Only two points separating the two sides. 23 minutes. Wind certainly picking up in the last few minutes as well, which might affect uh, the players down there. It seems to be going on, as you look on your screen, 
from left to right. So Red and Blue Coat playing with the wind, it seems, this half. It's bluster, isn't it? You just see some of the uh, hair fluttering in the wind. It's difficult, isn't it? You get that bit of wind chill factor cools your body down as well. Like the surface temperature of your skin, very, very cold, and it affects your muscles and your performance as well. It's my least favourite thing to play in strong wind. I think rain is the same for both teams, but wind can ruin a game more than anything. So I just go up and down a pitch, and one team just cannot kick into it. I, uh, I don't enjoy uh, playing in a uh, strong wind. <laughs> West just about gets it away. Tom David hacks it on, and it's uh, to Pip Hodson in some space. Cuts inside twice. Now looks for the pass out wide. It's back to Barton though, and Barton's on the charge. If only that would stay in. It's in touch, and Matt Crook with the break couldn't quite stay in field. It's a great little kick through there from uh, from Crook, and just if that had stayed in, I think he's he's got a chance to go and score there. But as ever, I've said it a few times today, the bounce from rugby ball, it's a cruel mistress, and just bounces out for him. Skipping forward. Monty Heath and it's going to be Dexter that hacks on good boot get some distance on that that's a brilliant kick the kick in this game has been very impressive actually across the board it was a good box kick from weeks before fielded by Heath and then a great kick there good field position uh, putting some balance under pressure and making them exit it's been a very very mature performance from both sides so far forward meeting just to try and work out where this line out ball is going to go Joe Smart your man at hooker for them accurate once more top of his jump again carving through the middle Tom Dexter oh just loses possession Seems to be the story of the game at the moment of Red and Blue Coat. A piece of brilliance, a half break, and then just a funny little mistake there. The ball's just eludes him out of nowhere, no pressure. Ball's just popped out of his hands. But they're really, really pressuring Sutton Valance, and there's only so many times where they can make those half breaks and not deliver. I feel like the score is coming if they just stay down here, keep the pressure on Sutton Valance. Interesting formation just off the scrum here for Sutton Valance with 10, 12, 13, very, very tight in an arrowhead formation. Change of direction. Eight to Benson. Merritt and Benson linking up. Jasper Benson's a real dynamo in the midfield. Packs a big punch and... This time it's with McInulty. Well, where is he going? penalty we're coming back for the advantage that late move there from um, from Jasper Benson from that arrowhead formation to the blind side created that three on two overlap and unfortunately the pass was just back shoulder I think if the pass had been in front of him they could have gone down that wing on the three on two Proper game of rugby, this Scott. Really, really fierce, is, isn't it? Very fierce. We're coming towards the back end of this first half. Only two points in it, and that's probably a fair, fair result so far. Faulkner does well. Oof. Bit of a collapse, and Merritt just falling out of the air. Yeah, definitely a penalty there. Pressure from Red and Blue Coat have um, hit the jumper in the air, and it's. It's dangerous that because you can land on your head, you can land on your shoulders, land on your neck. So right from the referee to get a penalty. And I've been in that situation happened to me last week. Actually, you go up, and you get contact there, you lose complete control. You're in a very vulnerable position there. So good to see that stamped out. There was no malice in it, complete accident. But it has to be, has to be a penalty. It's dangerous play. 
And it's a good nudge once again and Sutton Valance just marching onto the Reading 22. Well, they've got good line-out accuracy. Have they got a driving more? We've yet to really see their backs off a set-piece move. Well, lovely from Weeks, hacking it on to Benson. Benson carving through. He's got the wheels, he's got the power. Can he go all the way? Meters short, what an offload on the deck. And Sutton Valance are over for their second try of the game. Well, that's outstanding from Jasper Benson. Lovely bit of skill from Tyler Weeks first. Ball's bobbled on the floor rather than pass. He's just side-footed it like prime Xabi Alonso for Liverpool in 2005 into his back's hands and then Benson does the rest. Well, the Benson play was superb. It looked as if he might just scorch over. But he got a beautiful offload off the deck straight into the palms of... Jacob Ray and Jacob Ray with the support lines almost had to clamber over three players to get there there's but just what a finish sorry there's just some brilliant play around there the the break from Benson the tackle from Monty Heath try saving tackle on the on his own line great offload from Benson and then Ray there as all good sevens are on the shoulder ready for the offload proper seven try there conversion is good and that is a huge score for some balance a huge score because they just strung a few positives together a bit of pressure and that results in a big big seven points for uh, for the men from just outside London well this that offload one-handed off the floor offload out of the wrist beautiful brilliant bit of skill that unless you've ever tried that you don't quite understand how hard that is It's almost as hard as commentating whilst dodging a flying ball in the commentary box. I don't know anyone who's ever managed that, Scott. It's so yeah. hard. It's just very difficult, isn't it? For those of you who haven't been with us all day, Scott was almost decapitated by a ball earlier. But the model professionally is, kept mic in hand and kept chatting while dodging, with his spider senses tingling. It was very like Tyson Fury, sort of, you know, bombing and weaving. There's only one of us up here who looks like Tyson Fury, and it's the <laughs> ball man sat to your right. That's true, yeah. Well, on halfway then, Sutton Valance with a good position. Tyler Weeks will have the put in at the scrum. Poor error at the kickoff from a red and blue coat to kick it out on the full. They needed a good kickoff there, try and get themselves some uh, momentum back in the game. But now Sutton Valance got a good place to attack from midfield scrum mid the pitch. Hard to defend both sides here if you're red and blue coat. They're opting to go down the far touchline. Pip Hodson with a kick oof thought that might just bounce a different way then it might still fall well collected by Monty Heath under a lot of pressure there was a lot of white shirts but it's back with Sutton Valance they're on a bit of a rampage ball just not quite finding its mark and maybe they're going to be away here the referee's blown his whistle Harry Martin thought he may find himself all the way up the pitch Well, it was a good bit of play, wasn't it? They had some space. Tackle off the ball. Yeah, that's what the penalty's for. Bit excited in uh, in defence there, in blue coat. Jensen McNulty getting a big tackle off the ball. That's what the penalty's for. And um, some fans opted to go for the points here, trying to take three points to extend their lead. And we're going to get another shot at the post for Luke Beaumont. Missed his first one, got that second conversion attempt. This uh, just a bit further out, 25 metres or so from the uprights. And he's kicking into the wind. You can just perhaps see that subtle sway of the post. nailed it the lead keeps ticking over it's a brilliant strike brilliant strike. there's no easy kicks in the semi-final pressure's on he'd expect to get that in front of the post but pressure does funny things there are big three points there well it does mean that uh, 
Reading blue coat would need two tries and a conversion to get back in contention here. Brilliant take, Harry Martin on the uh, on the kick off there from Reading blue coat. And suddenly got the ball in a very good attacking position. Perkins with a nice charge. What can they do with it here? Oh, I don't think Langton was expecting that. He dipped out the way. Benson again. The terrier for Sutton Valance. Very dogged runner. Challenges the defences. Here's Barton. Finds some space. Makes five metres in the end, really. Ray. Gets the offload away. The ball's still alive. Fizzing through the hands of Sutton Valance. Six ways. Starting to heat up in this semi final. The offload went forward in the end. And that is the half time whistle here in our second under 18 Vars semi final. Sutton Valance leading 15 points to Reading Bluecoats. Three at half time. The second 35 coming up very shortly. But Charlie, we've had a great opening 35 here. Yeah, fascinating first 35 minutes in this our final game of the day there. Cagey start, uh, but Sutton Valance just getting a bit more of a foot in the game, and uh, their defence probably dominating the game at the moment, as you see this first try was bred all through defence. Big pressure, wasn't it? It's four on four, but Merritt just capitalising on the unforced error. And bagging that opening five-pointer for Sutton Valance. He's looked really positive in this first half. A lot of positive interactions. A lot of momentum from Barnaby Merritt. The second try here, the best, wasn't it? Definitely. The great break from Jasper Benson. How about this? Oosh. Straight into the hands of Jacob Ray. Brilliant, brilliant offload. He's been he's been dangerous all half, Jasper Benson. That that midfield three of Bowman, Barton and Benson, they may sound like a dodgy law firm you'd go to somewhere, but actually they have a brilliant midfield three in this under-18 semi-final and everything good that's happening is coming through them and number eight merit at the moment. So they'll be looking to capitalise on that in the second half. And I think it's an old cliche, but first score of this second half will be huge because if it's so balanced, it'll take them really into the distance away from Red and Blue Coat. Whereas if Red and Blue Coat get the first score, they're straight back in the game. Well, Sutton Valance 15, Reading Bluecoat 3 at half time in the under 18 Vars semi final 2. We'll be back with the second half in just a few moments' time.
Final half of the day, fourth game. We've been showing you here live from uh, Worcester Warriors ground, Six Ways Stadium. This, the second under 18 National Schools Vars semi final, the winner of which will play Mount St Mary's College at Twickenham in just a few weeks' time. Sutton Valence leading 15 points to three against Reading Bluecoat. Good start to the half, Reading Bluecoat, though, won the penalty, get themselves in field position probably around halfway now. And they can uh, they can start trying to get themselves back into this game. As I said just before we left you for the half-time break, first score in this half is huge. Beaumont. Oof. What happened there? Just a banana skin or something like that on the pitch. Good offload. Oh, another spillage in the contact hacking it on Lindsay it's still with Heath I think down there in the corner well maybe a game of rugby will break out and his madness in the second half that was all a bit uh, a bit what happened next wasn't it it was a bit like free for all interesting start to the second half well you know both of these two teams are going fully at it there is only 12 points between them and that is really nothing in rugby terms when you've got 35 minutes coming at you good field position here for Sutton Valance to uh, to launch some sort of attack off the, they're playing a five man line out so shortened line out two forwards out probably looking for them to make a big carry in the midfield an overthrow Back with Reading. Oh, it's a spillage. Tom Dexter coming back for the first knock on, though. Feisty. Yeah, I think the refs can have a word here. We was a bit, little bit of handbag throughout the first half, and I think he just doesn't want it to escalate anymore. It's a good refereeing. Just have a chat with the two nines. Always the instigator of scrum half. And that scrum house and then play oh, me, sir. But butter, butter wouldn't melt, sir. Always nine's fault. They've just uh, got a little bit of an edge. They want to be big and tough like the forwards, but you know want to have chat like the backs. So it's a bit of both, isn't it? I got absolutely rinsed by a nine today. I said something mean to him. And he turned around to me. He went, "At least you know who I am. I haven't got a clue who you are." <laughs> and I just stood there. And I looked and I went, "No, no, that's fair, fair play. I, I've got nothing to say to that." It, it, it pretty much works no matter what, doesn't it? So it's a really good one to have in your locker. Problem was I addressed him by name as well at the start and he just looked at me and was like, I've got no idea who you are. We've got a winger on the flank, Scott. That's the first one for the day. That's what, you learn that at Johnny May's school of wingers. If you go to his summer camp, that's what he teaches it. I was at Gloucester when Johnny did that, and the WhatsApp group was on fire. I didn't say anything, obviously, because I was scared of them all. I was in the academy, but it was hilarious. Oh, what a take weeks. Fractious again. There's so many fine margins in this game, and Sutton Valence will come back to the scrum. This time, though, they'll be defending. Knackering as a front five forward to go scrum, get up, and it's a scrum straight away again. You can't, front row especially, even in the second row, you can't understand the lactic acid that builds up in your legs when you're scrummaging. It is grueling, it's energy sapping, and the last thing you want to see when you get up from one scrum is that you're straight to another one. You know what I sometimes joke? After three reset scrums, you just take a, well, two, you just take a quick tap. Just let it get on. I think everyone would thank you for that. Dexter, oh, and maybe a knock on from Oscar Vass here. Doesn't quite know where he's going now, puts the wheels on it. Seatbelt tackle perhaps as he went into the corner. He's gonna have a line out to Reading Bluecoat and uh, the Reading boys can't quite get outside of their 22 really, can they? No, we've seen this a few times in our uh, in our games today. Um, I know Torquay in our under 15s Vars game earlier struggled with it, especially going into the wind. They just cannot get out of this uh, this far 22 on the right hand side of the pitch as we look at it it's a tough place to exit bit uh, exit from sun's in your eyes as well now when it comes out from the clouds it's a uh, it's a tough place to get out of as red and blue coat are discovering at the moment J 
Joe Smart with another line out ball picks out Perkins great take from Perkins and lean across there to pluck it out of the air it's not not an easy skill at all and great lift lift has given him great support oh show and go oh big hit coming in though cruncher on Harry West still trying to work that blind side well Reading are just clutching a bit at straws here because they're under a lot of pressure from certain valence and how on earth are they going to get out of this they don't seem to be able to kick into this strong wind it's really tough and a spill ball well ripped from Tom Barton Sutton Valance back with it coal mining for the ball down there it's loose it's on the floor it's with Reading still the Reading boys piling in and finally the box comes in from Harry West almost a wonderful take from Tom Dexter brilliant contest in there I always think back three are so brave when they go for that because they're just up in the air they've got no control it's it's a brave brave skill when back threes do that I have a lot of respect for all of them and particularly now as well you highly likely to get a card if not a red card when you contest in the air it's a very difficult skill to get right but got his reward there great contest in the air didn't quite get the ball in the full but forced the knock on from Sutton Valance gets the ball back for his side and that's what it's all about from Harry West like a bullet to the bonds of Tom Dexter that's gonna hurt on numerous levels on a cold day like this the ball hitting you in the face like that is gonna hurt but it's gonna hurt your ego as well because that's a it's a great pass from West it's just the sort you take 999 times out of a thousand there that's your bread and butter as a 10 it's a cold slap isn't it not nice on a day like today we have got some blue skies here in Worcester but it is uh, cool for certain bustery as well free kick a little bit eager there the red and blue coat from five going a little bit early pushing early it's a free kick they're pointing to the corner well they're going to go quick great carry here the big number eight again barnstorming through the Reading blue coat defense great play oh just one eye on the tackler Jack Leftley just drawing the attack and the ball spilled by certain Valance again pretty much a scrum back where we just were very important tackle there those numbers over if he doesn't make that and force the knock on it's probably a try so huge huge tackle there and Red and blue coat holding on a little bit here, but they are holding on, and that's the important thing. As long as they're still in this, as long as they don't concede, they'll very much fancy themselves to come out of this period of pressure and start throwing their metaphorical punches back. So, this is huge this moment for uh, in the game, I think, because if they can keep holding this certain balance pressure out, they'll take huge confidence from it. Pressure from Weeks in the scrum. Oh, a lovely chip over the top from Dexter. Weeks back covering nicely big fen sunny bill into the hands of lindsay trying to drag him into touch well it's a penalty to certain balance max lindsay was certainly a bit isolated on this right wing then well it's some uh, big choice big selection keep the scoreboard ticking over perhaps the right thing to do we are 15 minutes into this uh, 10 minutes sorry into this second half it's a great option if he gets this it will mean they need two converted tries um, sorry more than two converted tries to uh, get themselves back in the lead here uh, red and blue it's just a very tough kick 
but he's got the wind behind him so I don't think distance will be a, uh, an issue it's just it's out wide on the five metre line it's a it's a tough kick for goal and he's got the wind on his sails Luke Bowman to extend the lead Well, he struck it well, but perhaps just misjudged the wind. And Redding trying to run this hard from deep, bulldozing forward. Great charge. Not quite out of that 22 yet. It's been elusive for them in this second half. Lewis uh, down the five metre channel. Now the Vox comes in. Down the throat of McInulty. Merrick with the Bosch scored that opening try of the game. Almost didn't recognise him without his blue scrum out on. He's lost that at some point. Finn Page on for Sutton Valence, number 21. Merrick again with the Bosch and finally trucks over Lucas Dance. Well, the pass from uh, Weeks to no one, but it's fallen to Barton to try and clear that one up. And the pressure from Reading still sending Sutton Valance backwards. They've now got the ball. It's a good turnover. In comes Perkins. Well, what are they going to do with it here? Down this near touchline through the hands of Neil, who flops onto the deck. And it is a penalty to Sutton Valance. Yeah, crossing, unfortunately, there. He has to give that or carry straight. You can't let a man run in front of you and carry behind them, as you'll see here. Um, the tacklers who would have tackled the ball carrier tackle the dummy runner. Yeah, definite crossing there. I don't think there's any way, really, to, uh, to defend that. Pinged into the corner. That is a great nudge, isn't it? Some of the kicking today across all the ages has been absolutely unbelievable. Especially take this wind into account. It's been uh, it's been marshalled well by the kickers. It's been impressive throughout the day, as you said, Scott. Fullbacks and uh, wingers as well did a good job to clear up the mess. It's always a challenge. Confusion from Sutton Valence here that it's a four or five man line out, I think. Changing numbers late, I think there's been a few subs made, they're not sure who's going where. So refs just stopping the game, letting these lads sort themselves out. Good refereeing. Yeah, right thing to do because I don't think anybody had a clue what was going on today. Off the top, weeks to Benson, still going forward, does well to stay on his feet, change of direction through the hands, Barton cuts inside, Barton gets the offload away, back to McInulty, can they go in the corner, Barton over this time, and that is a try, how on earth have they got that in? Harlem Globetrotter stuff from Sutton Valence for their third try of the game. What an offload in the corner. What an offload. Brilliant, brilliant finish there. Great start play. We call that the call the 11 play. You'll see here they come back down the short side. And look at this offload. Oh my word. It literally slipped through the hands of Henry Neal. It was like a magnet or a drawstring on great the ball. angle here. Oh, that's he almost lost stuff. it as well, didn't he? It's a brilliant offload, brilliant finish. As I say, you'll hear that called an 11 play off the line out. You go one phase one way on the open side, and then the next phase, so one phase down the blind side, defended over folded. They found that space on the edge. Lovely play 
from Sutton Valence on that 11 play and uh, they get rewarded with a great offload for the five points, potentially seven, but a very tough conversion to come here. Well, it's a great score. I think Barton wasn't quite expecting to get that ball back on the offload, was he? He caught it on his hip and just managed to get the Velcro gloves on it. Luke Beaumont with a huge, huge nudge. What an outstanding kick that is. That might be the best kick of goal we've seen all day. Massive, absolutely massive kick. The initial break from Barton, the sunny bill. This from McInulty and the hip dot down from Barton again. A lot of work to do now for red and blue coat. Three tries in 20 minutes is a big ask, but it's definitely in their arsenal. They just need to get the ball, get in that opposition 22 and start scoring some points. Covered through from Tom David. Bit of space in the 22. Well marshaled. Finn Page cleaning that one up. Well, it's a huge kick and it's still bouncing and finally into touch. I think that has snow on it. I think that's come down with snow on it. What a monster, monster of a boot. Brilliant kick. There was no way that Tom Dexter was going to be able to pluck that out of the air with the sun in his eyes and the bounce always going to go somewhere different. Yeah, that was a hideous, hideous one from try and take. It's fine, a sensible decision. Just let it go into touch. You're going to get the line out anyway. Yeah, exactly that. He uh, probably made a wise call there. Lucid prop jumping at the lineup. Don't see that often. Got a lot of time for it. Unusual, but amazing. Oh no, the pass just not quite going to hand. It's been grubbed through. Maybe, just maybe, was Lindsay tackled off the ball. If anything, certainly held back. Well, Bluco back behind the ball, trying to clear their lines again, just pinned back. The box kick down the throat of Lindsay. The referee spotting the injured Reading player on the field and finally blowing the whistle. Nothing going red and blue coats way at the moment, is it? They run a lovely move there, off the line out, got a two on one down the edge, and ball just doesn't go to hand. Just it, they just cannot get out of this half at the moment. It's really, really tough for them. It's frustrating, isn't it? They they haven't got frustrated though, have they? They've 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 kept at it so far. No, massive fair play to them. They're just sticking to what they're doing well. They just need that last pass to stick few times there, that last pass sticks, they're off to the races and it just hasn't quite gone to hand. This the big crunching hit. It was a well-timed hit really. Yeah, I'd say it's a little bit late but I'd say he's committed while he's still got the ball. I don't think, it's, I don't think that's foul play at all. Uh, but um, it's one of those tough ones. After you pass, you do relax a little bit as a player because you're not braced for contest so it hurts that little bit more. Harry West is very vocal at the scrum. They've got nothing, boys, they've got nothing. He's shouting, Geeing up his forwards. That's what you want from a nine. And <laughs> it's a big scrum, wasn't it? Wow. Reading. Full of energy, full of commitment, full of the words. Harry West has just shot up them. They're going to need something soon to get themselves back in this game, Reading Blue Coat. A moment of magic from Sorn. They've got to turn this momentum tide in their favour somehow. Well, we're waiting for the reset scrum. Weeks gets the ball in a bit better this time, and Merritt dink over the top. 
on the charge. This could be special into the hands of Beaumont and Beaumont with the try. What a brilliant try. Oh, I don't know if that calls come from on the pitch or from the coach's office, but someone has spotted that that bit of space is there when Sutton Valentine have an attacking scrub. Now, like I said earlier about crossfield kicks, spotting it is one thing, executing is another. And look at this chip. Benson with the dink. Luke Beaumont was at full power and nobody was within five metres of him. Love this. Look at the block from Weeks. Merritt with the pass, Benson with the boot, and Bowman with the points. Just some really, really good rugby union there. Really good, well spotted, well executed. Little details like the block from Weeks while, uh, while the eight passes the ball. Yeah, really, really good try there. Just smart play. Really intelligent, smart play. And most importantly, well executed. And that's the thing about this game, it's what I love about rugby, as much as it's brutal, it's barbaric on the game line, the collisions are huge. Smart play will win the day, use your brain. Beaumont to convert his own try, he struck it lovely once again. That's up for another brilliant kick. And that makes such a difference, especially in knockout when you've got a gun kicker like that, someone who you are backing to put the ball through the post 90% plus of the time, it makes such a difference. Lovely, isn't it? Sutton Valance now up 29 points to three. That's a poor error though, offside from the knock-on. So the ball's knocked on, if you pick that ball up or you touch it, if you're in front of the player when he knocks it on, that's a penalty to the other side. You'd imagine Reading Blue Cup put this in the corner and try and strike back straight away. Well, they'll want to score, won't they? There's less than 15 minutes to play, but there's still a lot of time on the clock. Brilliant touch finder. There's nothing better as a pack when your kicker puts you exactly five metres out. It's demoralising when you expect to be five and you end up 10, 11, 12. But he's put him five metres out here and really giving his pack a chance. Tom David with the nudge. Well, we're having to uh, peer over our perch at six ways to get an eye in on this corner. Putting the bodies in. Keeping the momentum. Crook just peels out, still with the forwards. Penalty I'm advantage here for any blue coats. I'm sure West is singing sweet words into their ear as they start to march this on. They're coming to the 15 for the penalty. David looking to take it quickly but just draws breath and they're going to go for the line out no surprise set this up once again yeah absolutely and when it's a five meter line out if the penalty happens at the line out you can just choose to take the line out again rather than kick it to touch which is what red and blue coat have done here and yet it'd be same again for me here just a little bit more leg drive when they get on the floor and they're waiting a little bit as soon as on the floor you want to start running forward in that mall leg drive leg drive leg drive Well, it's gone to ground. There's no movement. Is it still going? I think it is. And Reading somehow have the momentum. They're peeling through, pushing forward. Well, where's this going to go? Because they are inching towards the touchline. Sutton Valance crushing it to ground. Now they release through the hands. Crook out wide into the hands of Monty Heath, cutting inside. What a big tackle! Crook might have to go on his own here, he finally gets over. And that is a worthy score, great finish. Yeah, great finish from Crook, you saw. While the Mall didn't get over itself, there was so much pressure there, it drew more Sutton Valance players in to defend it, which meant there was an overlap for the backs. They made a little bit of a meal of it, and maybe the missed pass wasn't needed, could have gone through the hands, but a great finish in the end by Crook. Well, I thought Monty Heath was going to coast over, but it was a massive tackle. It wasn't just a low tackle, but they completely wrapped him up, didn't they? And uh, Matt Crook, with so much work to do, finally getting over with the try. One, one player passed, two players, three players, four players, and eventually barged his way over. There was no stopping him. No, and a very, very well-deserved try there for Red and Blue Coat. They've actually been brilliant in this game, and um, the score may be flat as Sutton Valance a little at the moment. Well, the conversion not quite through the uprights. Tom Dexter couldn't get there. 
score now 29 points to eight. Sutton Valence leading and surely we're going to see them in the final at Twickenham against Mount St Mary's College. The tackle, wow, massive that was. And finally, Crook crashing over. Straight to David, who uh, punts that back upfield into a bit of space. What a step. <laughs> Jensen McInulty. Dexter pins his ears back himself, swerves infield. Good tackle. Great tackle from Ray there. And again. Two tackles in 30 seconds there from the other side flanker. Brilliant work. Knocked on. Feels like this game has been played for a, a long time. So much has happened, but still 10 minutes left on the clock as well. Doesn't feel too long that it was only 5 3 to certain balance. They've really, when they've had their chances, taken them and really accelerated into this lead. Look at that. Sutton Valence walking it forward. Perkins comes away with it and makes 10 metres. West, how's he going to get the forwards on the front foot here? Charged up. Powered on. Oh, looping pass, lovely ball. To Leftley on that right wing. Still with Reading, the spill ball hacked on. Might be an option here. Monty Heath down this left wing, just about gets the ball away. It's come off Neil and it's into touch. They're really? trying, aren't they? Yeah, they are. It's a brilliant cover tackle, though. And it's that man again, number eight for Sutton Valance. Barnaby, he's everywhere. He's everywhere today. He's been brilliant. It was a good effort from. Monty Heath. <laughs> it's a huge tackle, isn't it? Yeah, Barnaby Merritt, it's brilliant. The work rate is huge. I don't think it's spoken about enough from rugby. I'm just watching the two nines here. It's how fast Scrum Arts have to run. I don't when I play, thankfully, and I'm tired enough. They just don't stop. And then they have they have the energy after all that running to be yappy at each other and get into the face. I love it. I love it just continuous running for them isn't it really no real time to pause I love it they've gone when we've designed rugby we've gone well we've got 15 players on the pitch who can pass the ball but we're going to make it the job of one man to pass it from every breakdown if he's not there everyone will look at him and go where are you come on amazing isn't it Not sure what happened there, but the Sutton Valence second row ended up flat on their faces, which is not a good place to be at the scrum. So, good call from the ref to blow that off. It was just a big slip because uh, we don't want anyone hurt or any any danger at the scrum. But that's not where you want to be as a second row, believe me. To be fair, where you're meant to be as a second row isn't really where you want to be at a scrum, with your head in between two massive people's thighs as they push really hard and are sweaty and muddy. It's not. I don't play rugby for the glory in that position. Guts and glory. Just guts, really. <laughs> There's been plenty of guts between all teams today, and Valence get this one away. Oh, the pass just uh, a bit too fast, and a bit of descent there from Oscar Vass. Just a bit of frustration, I think, because that pass goes to Hamper McAnulty, who's moved to the backs, I see, from the back row. That pass, I think he's a fullback. If that pass goes to hand for the young man, I think he's putting Vass away down the wing for a try. So a little bit of frustration. Harry West still 
chirping on at the scrum even at this late stage running blue cart I'm sure looking for an additional scrum or additional set of points but a uh, free kick they're going to have to take the tap going forward oof looked a touch high but now Dexter oh, on the switch that was lovely lovely little circle ball there long looping pass it goes into the hands of Lindsay it is definitely high seatbelt tackle nothing really malicious just a bit sloppy it's the danger of those miss passes miss passes with miss passes ball in air time you're asking for the intercept and uh, that's what happened there another long range penalty effort Luke Beaumont 14 points in this game looking to add to that it's been very good hasn't he it's controlled things nicely certainly been helped with the players around him Barton and Benson in the midfield as well Tyler Weeks snapping at the forwards all game as well the Sutton Valence law firm in midfield I'm going to push that hard I do like maybe that. get some merch for the final that they're probably going to Beaumont Barton Benson here to serve you justice exactly that no win no fee <laughs> Oof. Nice strike, just didn't have the accuracy. Yeah, it's a great strike, had the legs, just slipped to the right of the right hand upright. There, he's, uh, he strikes the ball well, he's, he's good off the tee. Back with Valance still somehow in the Reading half Benson oh a lovely deft offload another one handed offload into the hands of McInulty just brushed into touch some silky skills for G in style offloading two outstanding one handed off at one handed offloads there that is a very hard skill and this is a full size rugby ball these lads are playing with to have hands even big enough at this age to be able to grip the ball one hand like that it's very very impressive stuff excellent grip strength it's been a very good game this I've enjoyed this one a lot I've enjoyed all the games today but this one this one's been brilliant been a nice contest hasn't it great way to round off the day it hasn't fizzled out sometimes you get on these sort of all day occasions the games can just uh, drift into the day but it's been fierce all the way through some great rugby and great skills all the way through yeah, well, you and I have been in this com box for six hours now Scott and it's absolutely flown by brilliant yeah. rugby all day absolutely and you know that's a, a sign of great quality games don't you actually a word for how good I think the referees have been today as well actually they've let the games flow well they've not been too hard on their whistle that, that's important with schoolboy rugby I think they're not perfect it's, you could give a penalty every breakdown probably if you wanted but they've had good sympathy for the game and we haven't really spoken about them which I think is the sign of a good referee the players have had intent to play and the referees have had the intent to let them play as well haven't they it's been great to watch and all merit carving through again bundling over Meteoric through the midfield, now they go wide, Benson might find his way through, held up by Heath, sent backwards in the tackle, good defence from Reading. Brilliant defence, they've turned it over in that bottom corner. How have they come away with that? Textbook defence in this second half from Reading Bluecoat, pinned back in their 22 for, I don't know, 30 of the last 35 minutes. Maybe there might be a chance for Valence to get a final try. Away with the loose ball. Weeks. Out to Barton. To Benson. Keeps it on his own and the tackle spills the ball. Into the hands of Lindsay. Around the outside. Cuts back in. Half a metre short. 
It's been knocked on and that pressure in defence once again from Reading paying off. Yeah, and again, like we saw in the last game with Ipswich, just not giving up. Like there's a minute on the clock. They're not going to win this game. They know that. But the pride, the personal pride, the pride in their school, not letting them give up. They're a metre out here. The easy thing to do would be to roll over and let Sutton Valence score another try. But instead, they're keeping on working for their teammates, for their school, and they stop the try. Brilliant work from Reading Blue Coat. It's a tough place to have a scrum at the end of the game, isn't it? Five and five. Coffin Corner, I believe it's described as. Sutton Valence, look at that. Walking it on. Jeez, great pickup from Perkins inches away well that is it the whistle is blown the crowd cheers the players all hugging each other Sutton Valence score have made it to Twickenham the final score from here at six ways Sutton Valence 29 Reading Bluecoat score 8 in this RFU National Schools under 18 Vars semi-final and Sutton Valence well worthy winners in the end and an absolutely belter of a contest Charlie. Yeah two very good sides and they went at they absolutely went at it for 70 minutes did they no no quarter asked no quarter given but um, I think the better team on the day did win that there'll be no complaints from Reading Bluecoat I don't think they were beaten by a better side but a brilliant game and that sets up a very tasty final in a few weeks Mount St Mary's versus Sutton Valence that will be a brilliant game it means so much to the players, doesn't it? The family, the friends, and Reading Bluecoat were really worth their weight in gold today. Worthy challenges. Yeah, and they, there's no shame in losing this Sutton Valence side. They're a good side. Like, there was no shame for uh, Ipswich losing to Mount St Mary's. But just all day, been so impressed with the stand of rubber we've seen and the smiles on these boys' faces as they walk past us, the Sutton Valence winners. It means so much, and I've been there playing first-team schoolboy rugby. It really, really does mean a lot, so you've got to be so happy for these lads. These are the guys you've grown up with throughout your days as a youngster, and to share the pitch with them in a momentous occasion like this, it does mean a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's the thing. You, it, you create memories for life here. I know I, I moved away since I only had one first-team season at school, but the lads I played in, we won our county cup at, um, at first-team level. It was the first time our school had done it, and... Still now, when we go to school, you and stuff, there's lads I haven't seen for three, four years. You see each other, there's a knowing smile, and you, this bonds you for life. You bond you for life, they're, hu they're huge memories, and these things they're doing together are very, very special for these lads. Well, let's take a look at the highlights from our final game of the day, then. There's some lovely handling and uh, Tom Barton with the offload to McInulty and look at that for an offload back at him beautiful wasn't it just incredible quality of rugby there that was you won't see a more worthy try all day really look at this from the from the reverse angle this offloads good but this offload this offloads exceptional <laughs> almost ends up in the stand McNulty making that offload unbelievable isn't it how on earth did he get that away just their day, wasn't it, Sutton Valence? This, the set play from Mars, out of this world. The bounce on that ball couldn't have been any more perfection. And very clever play. Luke, my favourite try of the day, that just because the brain power involved. 14 points for Luke Beaumont, converted this try as well. Excellent. And this Reading's try, their consolation try really, the last one of the game. Very well deserved though and a great finish, look at that, two, three tacklers, would-be tacklers, didn't quite get him down. A very, very well deserved consolation try but the game was pretty much won by Sutton Valence at that point. Well, final score from a final game of the day here at Six Ways.
Sutton Valent School 29, Reading Bluecoat School 8. Tomorrow it's uh, Cup semi finals, two in the under 15s and one in the under 18s. It's been a belter here at Six Race. Charlie Beckett, thank you very much for joining us on commentary. You've been an absolute delight. Thank you for having me, Scott. I'm just absolutely gutted I can't be here tomorrow. If it's even half as good as the rugby has been today, you are in for a treat. So thank you very much for having me. A brilliant day of rugby. And yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, watching the bits I can tomorrow while I'm not busy. Well, thanks for joining us here. I've been Scott Even. Until tomorrow, from all of us at Six Ways, good night.